Hey, hey, what is happening? Welcome, 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 welcome to Gas Mass and Hand Grenades. I'm your host, Jeff. And tonight, we're back with the Catacombs of Depravity. Episode Trace. Oh, wait, that's, that's six. But anyways, who's counting? So we uh, we meant to do this like uh, regularly, right, Dennis? The the deal was we were going to do this like once every couple of weeks, and yeah, didn't quite happen that way, right? But um, we are back with the summer edition, and uh, we are we are here with some old and new guests, and we've got a bunch of people popping in uh, as we go along to kind of kind of head through uh, the night and where it'll end. Who knows? It could be a late one. It could be an early one. <laughs> Bill, are you going to get wasted and uh, cut yourself? That is the question everyone wants to know. No, I gave up drinking, actually. Okay, good. <laughs> hey. That I do not believe. No, not even no don't believe that. Uh, I just gave up drinking that fast. Oh, that, that fast. Time. Uh, I do have a souvenir for us. Oh, is that <laughs> it? This is, is the, the infamous shard. How do you fall shard. on a glass beer bottle and break it? Like, I crushed many bottles yeah. i've crushed a lot of things falling down being stupid yeah. but i've never cracked a bottle and you want to see the skirt it's actually amazing it's Dude, like a, look at I've that been, shit i've been branded by cl who is this that you have I I, it's just like dominatrix like colleen lynch <laughs> she branded me <laughs> i have one decree you're not to injure yourself in this making of this stream so i can't promise anything man like, real just... quick here let me introduce my cast uh to start out tonight uh, i got my intrepid co-host here mr dennis og press from analog archives is here tonight <clears throat> below me the one the only chromie chromie d from chromium dioxide radio hello darlings hello darlings hello <laughs> And then over, I can't, I can never. Yeah, you got it. it. That way. I messed it up too. We got a new beam here. We've got Tom from Cinna (laughs) Arcadia Productions. What is up, gentlemen? I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight on Catacombs of Depravity. Phil, it's great to have you back. Always lovely to be in your presence. You are. I should dare say so. Yes. (laughs) It's good to be here. Thanks for for having me back. I thought I. uh... I thought it terrified some of your audience last time. Oh, you did. Oh. Yeah, you did. No <laughs> doubt about it. I'm on the Tenafly tonight, so it's going to be good. I'm going to melt at around uh, 1130. Uh-oh. Um, so we got a little bit early of an early start here because um, I, I peeked in to check my audio levels and video stuff, and there's Phil's face staring at me. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing here? It's <laughs> 10 minutes of nine. <laughs> I don't like He's to be like, late. He's like, you said 10 o'clock. I'm like, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. And I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot you're an hour actually ahead of us. So so we just decided to get rolling early. There are going to be other people. I think Eli from Dark Hymns of the Cold North is coming. Nick from Thralls and Metals probably going to pop in. I think Rick from the Dreadful Minutes may pop in. Not sure. <coughs> and um, who else? Eric Bauer might pop in. And we'll see where it goes from there and see how uh, depraved things get. But um Great to see you guys again. And and what do we do here, Dennis? What do we talk about? Uh, I think we talk about mainly horror movies, sometimes porno movies. <laughs> In yeah, somebody days. mentioned Spermula just a moment ago, I believe. And I have I've yet to see that one. I, well, the night is young. It is. Uh, Udo Kier, right? I do believe. Um, I, I, I've never really, when I saw that, I was too young to actually care about those things i focused on other you were just a, sw- a wee little spermy then back then eh? <laughs> i was more into set design back then you, you weren't like <laughs> you weren't like paying attention to the, the credits like who who the best boy was <laughs> the font selection was right on i'll tell you that, <laughs> that oh i know that grip <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> i uh, actually i actually yanked 
Oh, speaking of, of <laughs> grips and yanks, here we go. Grips and yanks, yeah. I I I yanked a couple of classic sci-fi flicks too for tonight, just because. Why not? It's my show. I'll do what I want. Anyone's got a problem with it, take it up with management. That's what I say. So. I'll fight their face. But anyway, um, so Tom, you are the new guy here, and um, I guess you know we had actually talked about doing this. You know, we talked about doing this regularly and you were actually on our short list to get in here about two months ago. And then it just kind of, I had a lot going on medically and all kind of weird shit like that. And then I, as usual, I tend to take, you know, I'm one of those guys that tries to fit 25 pounds of bag of shit into a five pound bag. And I just keep loading myself up with things to keep my head. Occupied. So you have, you walk around with 20, ba- 20 pounds of shit in your hands. I do. If I'm I doing, do. Is this, is this a, a word problem a test it's uh it's you're... a it's a yes it's a word so i think that's problem. the correct answer 20 pounds of shit 20 pounds, 20 left pounds over. Of shit. exactly 25 minus five i can do the maths i can do the maths Don't um but it. anyway yeah so you were going to be on with us back then and then it kind of it kind of faded out a little bit and i know you had some health things you doing okay man everything cool yeah i'm slowly improving i had a oh i got feedback now I had, I had a I had a heart problem, so it's. I think I should be okay in a month or two. Yeah, basically, um, uh, it's a long story, but it's because it's kind of evolved over the past like four months. But basically, I'm kind of on the mend. Yeah, a procedure down there, right? On medic, uh, yeah, on on medication. Um, so. Hopefully in a month or two, I'll be fine. Cool, from, man. Well, I hope, uh, hope all goes well needs, there. So. You know, um, it's a bummer getting old, dude. It's I love that old. we're all at the age that we can all discuss our ailments. We should. Do I was like just going to say, yeah. You don't, don't want to get me show. started. Yeah. You don't want to get me started. I've got some gout, and I don't think that that's fair. Gout? Because I, yeah, you ever hear gout? Yeah. I, I fucking... thought only uncles got gout. Yeah. And, like, that I shit's up... painful, man. I had it in my toe last year that fucking shit hurt man yeah i know but it's it's my cross to beer <laughs> those are the real horrors the cholesterol numbers yeah like <clears throat> that's what they we should be discussing a good time you know that's what it's all about right yeah. so while we're at it before we get started is everybody drinking other i know dennis is drinking because you know and i know chromie is drinking so <laughs> what's everybody got tonight What's got there? An orange Julius? What is that? Coffee? No, just Starbucks <laughs> iced coffee. Starbucks iced coffee. How about you, Phil? What are you drinking? Uh, I'm having a mint julep. Oh. Mint julep. <laughs> oh, I do declare. Oh, you you are so high society. No, I'm drinking J and B, cheating bitch. Oh fuck! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so the stream is going to be over in like 45 minutes. I guess. All right. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Dennis? What you got? I am drinking. I don't remember what these things are called, but it's like vodka <laughs> and uh, fucking ginger beer and uh, lime. Ginger beer and lime. And uh, yeah, and vodka. Oh, and vodka. Know. Okay. Oh, what yeah. What is that? Called? What is mule. that? The mule. Mule. The mules. Yeah. Moscow mule. Right. There you go. Yeah. I've never had a Moscow mule, man. If I was oh. there, I would definitely. Sounds pretty yummy. It's good. Definitely. I got to tell you my vodka story quick. So I do not drink vodka now, even mixed, because I'm convinced that my one traumatic story with vodka will end always the same. Many, many years ago, 20, 21 in that range. I think I wasn't legal quite, maybe 19, 20 or something like that. Uh, some buddies and I, we worked second shift at a factory and uh, we were tow motor operators. We, we got off. We went to my buddy's house. His parents kind of let us drink underage and, um, we uh well kind of they didn't really know that we were invading their liquor cabinet and filling it with water or you know the old the old uh the old uh fill it with water trick with the clear liquids right <laughs> i thought so, i invented that okay but good cool. <laughs> you never did that you have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> but we um we had he, he the one dude in our party had his brother's id so he could get beers right so he'd go to the local tavern that was near the place when we got off at midnight i think we worked four to three to eleven i can't remember anyway we get off he runs down and of course we are we are frugal drinkers man we need the most bang for the buck so we're drinking old mud pounders we 
you just why wouldn't you more beer right sure and being the littlest guy because i'm only five eight i'm not a big dude and I, all my buddies are six one six two and they're all you know they can pound these fucking beers and i gotta keep up with them because i gotta show that i'm <laughs> i'm a macho dude right <laughs> and so i would get way more fucked up than everybody <laughs> way quicker of course and we're drinking these old mud pounders and we get back to the house and I'm fucking hammered. We go down to the basement with my one buddy. We're watching, we're watching the classic three stooges, man. And we're fucking hammered and laughing our asses off. And my buddy comes down with a big bottle of Seagram's man. Or no, mm. is that Seagram's vodka? Yeah. Seagram's. Yep. Yeah. And we Love start it. passing it around and I'm like, give me that fucking thing. Chug one down and it goes down and all of a sudden I start that. I feel that feeling. Mm. 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 Not feeling too good. Not feeling good at all. Bottle comes back around to me, but man, hey, I am I'm I'm a man. I can handle this. I get I get the chug in my mouth and go to swallow, and all of it comes up. All the beer, all the burritos, everything, man. All the burritos. And I'm trying to I'm trying to spit, yeah, burritos oh, chunks. I'm trying to spit this shit into a mouth of a Seagram's bottle. Je <laughs> Jeff, you buried the lead that you ate multiple burritos. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, think, I think, I only I ate think that was more I said of the Dorito issue. Plural. We were all eating them, but um, I, I think I think that yeah, that might yeah. have been. So I don't. The, the moral of that story is, I do not do vodka mm. ever since then. I've never had a vodka drink since that night. That's it. That's yeah, cool. that's it. I just couldn't <laughs> fucking deal. Dude, I Man was learned. sick for like a fucking month after that. Every time I smelled vodka, I wanted to fucking throw up. I'm See, my, convinced. My my yeah. parents were like kind of teetotalers, which is yeah. bizarre. They they think that I'm adopted. There was a, some sort of mix up <laughs> at the hospital. You probably well, are. It, probably, but anyways, they uh, they all, their liquor cabinet was always with bullshit you know my mother would make desserts or like baked alaska 70s desserts you know what i mean and she would like have th those kinds of liqueur so i was the most yeah. unpopular guy at the party because i didn't know what liquors to get so when you make your jungle juice or your you know your shit mix i would show up with like creme de menthe mixed with like cognac <laughs> mixed with and everyone's like, what is he bringing? And I'm like, <laughs> speaking of high society. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, wow. I've got Tia Maria cream. Let's get let's get wasted, dudes. Oh, that's like <laughs> drinking those little bottles of Kahlua that you, you'd find yeah. in your parents. Like in the liquor cabinet, they got off the back in the old days on the planes. They give oh, yeah. you a little bottle. I don't know if they still do. I haven't drank on a plane in a long time, but they probably do. But you get the little mini, you know, the little yeah. bar size ones. And then you you know, you chug one of those and you think oh that's pretty good and then you get like then you had to real then you realize fuck I got to drink like six of these to get hammered you know but anyway I'm doing this tonight and I only have one so I'm probably gonna be fucking hammered tropical double broken what's this heels heels IPA from New Trail Brewing and it is a hazy IPA. Nine percent, and it is a nine point two. Oh shit! You're gonna I, get pregnant tonight. I might. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> it's okay, Phil. I have a good lawyer. Don't worry about it. That's all right. You're gonna need him. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go back to the big view for a minute, and we'll do this. and And let's um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Tom. Let me pull up these questions so I remember what they are because I'm. Too fucking oh, old to remember. Shit, Tom, get ready, buddy. I'm so nervous for you right now. I got the first one right about the bag of shit. Yeah, man. Right. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back to this one. All right, Tom. So, how did you become aware of horror? What was your first exposure to horror movies, to horror genre? You know, what, what do you remember? And then we'll kind of run down ours quick. Uh, really just watching them on television. And I, I remember, like, I was already, like, at probably saw Halloween when I was five years old on TV. Um, and it was uh, largely a lot of slasher movies on, on TV, you know, when I was five and six years old. Um, I probably saw The Shining around the same six or seven. So what are you? You're late 40s, mid 40s? I'm late 43. 40s? You're 43. Okay. So um, um, 
so but it, in turn it was a lot of like friday the 13th nightmare on elm street right and a lot of the slasher movies on tv is really like what started me in horror five five six uh -oh. five, five six seven years old it was that iced coffee i don't know what that was i love that book ah um because i actually when i was six years old i snuck in to a drive-in to see Friday the 13th part six by yourself uh well it's sort of a long story like I like I went um with the hooker my, date he had Come yeah on. <laughs> my, <laughs> Dennis my family took us to see the fly and then I, I uh which is already r-rated you know but um I lied to my mom there was a playground next to the drive-in theater <laughs> Um, and I told my mom, I don't like this. I lied to her and said, I don't like this movie. I'm going to go to the playground and just hang you out snuck there. snuck out and, and snuck into the other one. Yeah. Nice. And then I, I just sat there, I like right in front of a car, just breathing in the exhaust, just watching Friday the 13th part six. <laughs> I hear uh, that. Until, I hear until that somebody kicked me out. So I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. You get back into the fly right now, mister. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, talking about that, did you guys, this just brought something up. So where I live, pretty red, pretty conservative, very, you know, very, um, very bedroom community, farming area and all that kind of shit like that. And, um, okay. Yeah. Nick said he's going to join shortly. Um, so we have a mall here it's a pretty big mall and actually at one point in time it was the biggest mall in the country called park city mall i don't this would have been in the 70s it was a big and they had a movie theater built into it right i think there was four movie theaters and get this shit. when i was in high school which would have been you know since i'm the old bastard here 80 through 84 82 when i first started driving we had an x-rated theater in the mall did you guys oh. ever have that did like, no. No? no. Uh there was so, one there was one um, there was one in an outdoor strip mall. Oh, okay. I, I've seen I've seen those in yeah. Northern Virginia. Like like a drive in or was it not a, a drive in, but just okay. in, in a in a in a strip mall. I'd be I've at that drive in those. every day. <laughs> Did you really? No, he would be. So would I. Oh I said I would be at that oh, drive. Would be. All right, okay. <laughs> That'd be me and Dennis's first date. <laughs> hey, you see what's playing at the drive-in tonight? Oh. Hey, uh, hey, Dennis, would you like to go see Ass Blasters 3 with me? <laughs> Let me ask you, did it have, like, one cheats up next to, like, you know, it's like E.T. is coming to town? Yeah, yeah. No lie, man. It absolutely did. And here's the reason I brought it up was because of what Tom said was we went to see, what year was Alien? 83? Alien was, was 79. 79, okay. Originally. All right, when was Aliens 2? 86. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Well, it could have been it could have been re-released. Well, a lot of times uh drive well, maybe they re-released Aliens. Dri uh, drive-ins would get movies later. Yeah. Like, I think it was 83. See. I'm almost sure I was a junior. We went to see that and we're like, "Hey, you know, should we? Should we?" And we all fucking snuck in. There was nobody watching. We just fucking walked into the X-rated there and it was you know, here's a bunch of horned up fucking eleventh grade dudes. No girls that were coming out. We're not with girlfriends. We got, you know, it's like we're all sort of sitting around looking at each other, like, yeah, man, this is fucking weird. Like, maybe <laughs> we should just go back to Alien or something, you know? So it, it didn't last long. It was just, could we do it? Could we get in there and could we get out? And that was, you know, that was great. That was that was a good time and almost almost as good, better than, but not quite as good as. My senior trip to New York City, we went to Mama Leone's, which at that time was right off 42nd Street, which was in 1984, still the 42nd Street oh, that you, yeah. Yeah. you hear about back then, right? We get done dinner, and this boggles my mind. You would never, ever, ever, ever have this now. No kids would be allowed to leave that restaurant if they weren't getting right back on the bus. We fucking get done eating early, and we're all like, hey, let's go, let's go walk out front, you know, we walk upstairs and we know that 42nd Street is literally like a block down the street to the left. We walk out, titty bars everywhere, man. They're like, come on in, kids. Come on in, guys. 
no, no way we look like we were fucking 20. I think it was, I don't remember what the drinking age, whether it was 18 or 21, but it might probably 21 walked in there. You know, there we see him up there. You know, it's like, ah, like we're just looking at each other. Like, this is so awesome. It's the Titties. Minnesota strip recruitment center. <laughs> and then, and there's all these fucking hard looking Guido, you know, looking Italian dudes that are like ready to kill somebody. If you step out of line. And that, but the reality check came when we ordered, we all ordered beers and they gave us Rolling Rock or Schlitz pony bottles, you know, the seven ounce deals. And they were fucking like $10 back in 1984. We're like, yeah, we ain't sticking around here long because none of us had any fucking money. You know, it was fucking hilarious. But um, anyway, all right. So that was you. How about you, Phil? You want to reiterate where you came in on? I think I, I, yeah, I definitely said this before. We had HBO and Scrambler Boxes in Labrador. We were a mining town, much like Cloud City, but on Earth. <laughs> and, yeah, we had these illegal Scrambler Boxes, and we had access to um, HBO. And during that time, like I wasn't in school, so it'd be around 81, 82, uh, I didn't know. Remember, I, I called this movie, this horror movie called Sally's Birthday Surprise. And yeah. for years I was searching for this movie, and I didn't know what it was, but it turned out to be like a exploitation slasher, Happy Birthday to Me. And I think I also confused that because I kept telling my mother, my mother saw me like on the couch sweating when she found me because I used to get up early and watch, you know, whatever. But I kept saying there was a head in the uh, head in the fish tank or a head in the toilet. I think I was mixing my movies up around. Uh, I think it might have been House on Sorority Row as well that I had seen the two of these films. As yeah, well, he, Saturday- knows, he, he knows you're alone has head in the fish tank. Head in the toilet is House on Sorority Row. Yeah, House on Sorority Row, and I and also the another movie that I crammed into my memory was uh, Saturday the Fourteenth, where she's in the bathtub and that guy in the rubber suit comes out. All these like solidified me down a very, very hilariously dark path, and I became obsessed. You know, and just like all of us, you start to conquer your fear and then you find the, you know, famous monsters, represses that were reprints yeah. that were around and then early Fangoria. So, Tom, when you were starting to say uh, when you talked about 86 and the fly, that just kind of like I think that was a huge era for me as well, like for movies. That's when I became a movie fan because Star Wars and Raiders and Temple of Doom, your parents took you to those movies by 86 i was buying starlog and i remember seeing the fly i went every every week we saw the fly one crazy summer the we gold saw bloom, gold bloom or the yeah gold bloom okay, yeah yeah right. and then big trouble in little china which is the movie that just oh, yeah. changed my life completely mm-hmm. uh we, we saw that so 86 was huge for me as well but hbo fucked that was me up. that was the gateway yeah the, 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 like the slasher films and to this day I care more about slasher, and I think that that's something that's like all of us. Like, mm-hmm. there's something about slasher movies. Uh, and like, Tom, Tom, is that a Chinatown poster? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, I, you you are you're a man of impeccable taste. You I, I have you can't see it, but I have my trick or treat poster. Oh no, uh, that's. See, you're 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 so mm-hmm. well grounded. It's the yin, yin and the yang. Yeah, I'm pro- I'm probably the the outlier here because i'm not the biggest slasher guy i'm more the monster guy and the psychological horror stuff but doesn't mean i don't like them i do i love you know i got a few in here too but do i do i hunt down a lot of the b level stuff or that kind of stuff no and you know it's weird because i'm older than all you guys but some of the movies you're talking about in the 80s i i miss them completely because i'm already 20 21 22 i'm going to bars drinking getting you know, yeah your get formative years of the 70s and the 70s had a yeah. hard on for a universal month yeah yeah yep. yeah hey and... look at this guy look at this guy look who's yeah. here <laughs> eli what is up man, dude man. not much hey, dude what's up you guys everybody here uh, yeah i mean not on a uh not everyone is on a super close level sure, like right. I've, not in I've the watched, biblical uh, sense. <laughs> <laughs> not not yet. I'm just I've warning watched. you, you don't really want to, but Phil will try to give you a reach around later tonight. So Oh, we've already discussed that. It's happening. 
<laughs> oh, you've worked out an arrangement? Okay, cool. cool. Dennis is going to watch. It's, it's, yeah. it's okay. Oh, man. <laughs> we're spares. That's what we're in here. It's Yikes. <laughs> hey, uh, since I'm putting you on the spot, um, yeah. oh. we're, talking about, we're talking about our entree into horror. What's your yeah. kind of your first exposure, your first... How you how hard it came to you and you're how old are you again? You're early forties, right? Forty one, yeah. Forty one. So you guys yeah. are all kind of in that. Well, Dennis and I are the old men, but I'm really the old. <laughs> men. But um, yeah, tell me about uh, where you kind of came in. Dennis, it was funny. Dennis is like he looks ten years younger than he is, though. So that's <laughs> yeah. It turns my stomach. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That like, guy does not yield ten years younger than he you looks, think he is. Come he on. Looks my, he looks. He looks. He looks younger than you. <laughs> What's that? Everybody looks younger than me. They are. Not you, you don't look old. You're damn near eight years younger than me, homie. Come on now. Right. I'm 46 and a half, and people think I'm in my mid 50s. But I party. I love to party. Wait, you're in your mid. You, they think you're in your mid 50s. I was oh, thinking yeah. more like 68. But that. But anyway. Thank you. <laughs> darling, I'm face. just kidding, darling. All right, go ahead, Eli. What's the, what's the story, man? I definitely have a, a different story than all you guys because I'm always kind of like a, a late bloomer. So, like, uh, my introduction to horror was, you know, like video stores in, like, the late 80s. But I never watched any of the movies because I was too scared. So, I, mean, I just like picking them up and looking at them like, ooh, ghoulies and stuff like that. Um, right. But then I didn't watch any horror until I was, like, I think my gateway was probably X-Files you know right and that that was like okay i guess i'm not too much of a wimp i can handle this stuff and then like i waited a bunch more years and i uh i think the first horror movie i saw in the theater was the blair witch project so that was like 98. are you serious um, wow yeah and i i still like that movie to be honest then i watched the exorcist and it scared the shit out of me even though i was already like 17 or 18. <laughs> i was like it just scared the that living shit out of me. still gets me. That's one of the few horror movies that still gets me, man. I, I Do you ever get annoyed when you bring that movie up and people are like, oh, I think it's hilarious. Like, yeah, that... Fuck no, you. no, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get annoyed. I just don't get it because... That's because yeah. it's a victim of its own reputation. You know what yeah. I mean? It was a rite well, of passage and then, like, everyone starts, oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's got to be so cool. But, I mean, if you were a Catholic <laughs> like I was raised... Yeah. yeah, exactly. Although we weren't churchy Catholics... Exactly. You still have that fear of maybe fuck, I don't believe in God, but God damn it. What if it's true? And that really yeah. can happen. That scares the shit out of me. You know? Yeah. 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 I saw, I saw Exorcist three in the theater. So I think it was 10, uh, nine, 10. And that scared the living dog shit out of me. I like that. Movie. I always, I always liked it better than I the first it. one, just because I didn't see the the first one until it got re-released. Yeah. In the late 90s or whatever. It's I, one, the first and the third are the best in that series by far. No oh, doubt. yeah. Second I one doesn't even count. Right. I remember Second one like, doesn't count. No, I, listen, no. Speaking of the side, I will defend it as a... As a no, are you really? Porn, well, no, for the wrong reasons. <laughs> oh, okay. I was such a pervert. I was like, man, I love Linda Blair's bangs in this movie. Oh, that's fair. That's like, fair. She, <laughs> like, she just looked delicious to me at the time. We were like probably the same age. And I was like, and yeah. then the whole... Thank God. Thank God you threw that caveat in there. <laughs> yeah, the same Here I was watching iCarly masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I had okay a real... because they're fictional characters. Yeah, yeah, I had a, I had a real crush on Linda Blair, and I just, I just, yeah, it was something about her hairstyle. Just real. I think I have a type. I love that hairstyle. Like, even yeah, Jeff I do Young too. That bangy, that bangy yeah. hairstyle. Yep. Jeff Young from Megadeth. I always the thought wings. he was the handsomest. Yeah, and oh, like he, Joe, yeah, what a... Joe from Facts of Life. The flowing, yeah, you, the flowing uh, what do they call them? The flowing wing the haircut. Right? Just, I, I love a good Farrah Fawcett wind, windswept creation. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So, Exorcist 2, I'm not ruling it out just but for you, You've seen purpose. Savage Savage Streets, right? I've lived Savage Streets. When she's. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, she's a 28 she's, year old naked high school student. <clears throat> I know, but you know what, Tom? The problem with Savage Streets is she's got a perm, it's curly and shit. Yep. I wanted the wings back, you know? Yeah, the wings, the wing hairdo, Phil. Man, I gotta find it. I don't know if I have any pictures of it, dude. I had you gotta bring up pornography collection. Bro, no, 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 no. I had the fucking killer winged hairstyle back in the in the 19. 78 77 i believe the, it the, the dude hair you know my hair wasn't Feathers. this long but it was probably <laughs> about here and i had the fucking wings on both sides man i was you know yeah appropriately you 
probably couldn't tell if I was a girl or a guy at that point in time. I'm I had like, a nice head of hair can. at one point too. I had a nice head of hair until like yeah, I don't believe it. No, I, I, I don't. I, well, I only rented here for about five years. I leased it, <laughs> but it was gorgeous when it lasted, man. And then the Ewok genocide in the shower happened. I see the picture. I think you showed us a picture one time when you had hair. On, yeah, on I had, and it was yeah, yeah. very, it was almost reddish, like it was like reddish yeah. brown, but handsome, handsome. Yeah. I couldn't keep it dry, my sons. Couldn't keep. I bet, it dry. I bet it was felt like velvet when you touched it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was more, more like straw. <laughs> we all knew that it wasn't destined for great things. All right, Rapunzel, I'm going to move over to this guy here, and uh... <laughs> Rapunzel. No, nah, fuck. There we go. <laughs> Dennis is going to steal my thunder, but we can run through ours quick. Yeah, quick, quick. I mean, for me, it's, you know, TV back in the shit when I was like five years old. Like, Your grandma's moo moo. Yeah, my grandma watching Chiller Theater, Creature Features, Night Stalker, that shit. Um, really into the, and then like the Universal Monsters for me, like mm. Frankenstein, Wolfman, all that stuff. I really got into that stuff. And then I think like early. 80s like 82 83 that's when i started seeing like carrie and exorcist on tv um even though i was young they, they would always they had it on tv yeah it was cut but that shit was scary as shit uh, but i mean that that's what they played on tv back then uh that was just i mean that's what got me into it night of the living dead uh, especially when i was like i think like six or seven seeing that on Creature features like a late midnight show. That really got me into. Did they cut of... anything out back then? Do you recall? I have no idea. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember him. No, I just remember it scared me, and my mom was like, "All right, you can stay up and watch it. I'm going to bed." It was like a midnight <laughs> showing of Night of the Living Dead on Halloween, and I was like, "Okay, I'm staying up." And she's like, "Okay, I'm going to bed." And like halfway through, I'm like, "This is kind of scary." Such a better time, man. Such a better time. I, like, I yeah, it really like, was. You know, I, sh I show my son Halloween, and you know, speaking of victim of its own like reputation, you know, I'm like, man, get ready, man. The shape, the shape yep. is going to freak you out. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you know, I'm a, a you know horror snob. I don't call him Michael Myers. I call him the shape. Right. So you know, he watches it. and He's like, that's not scary. I'm like. You yeah, I know. Your room. You go I in know. your room, God damn it! Don't come out. <laughs> God, I'll throw mine up quick here. So, and... so, son, if you don't act scared, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to have like. I'll show you something parenting. to make you scared, kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, this definitely was my entree into it, yeah, and I was watching God. it at the time it was going on. Like you know, um, I forget. I always what... wanted to see that movie. I still haven't ever seen it. Oh, dude, you got to get the set. Which okay. one? The, the one you I've just held the, up. The Night yeah. Stalker and the Night Strangler? Both. Yeah, I've All always wanted it. to see them. Oh, yeah. I got them both. Yeah, the series, man. The series is great. Is there just the two? No, it's just the yeah, TV series. There's a TV series. series. There's, a there's series. two movies, and then there's the DVD series. Oh, shit. Um, I just thought there were movies. I didn't know it was a show. No, <laughs> oh, dude, it's the great. show was the first thing. I okay. Wait. No, I guess the Night movie Stalker. was... The, the movie. Night Stalker was the first thing, right? Yeah. It was, it was like uh, that was a that was a vampire one, right? Yeah, that was like um, the ABC movie of the night or something. That's like that. it. <laughs> and I have. Are, are those worth buying? Those those two movies? Oh fuck hell yeah! Oh, okay, I, I've always wanted to see them. Yeah, oh, man, they're so good. Cool. And if you were right here right now, I would give you a wedgie for that fucking. <laughs> I know, I do, I do. It would get me some shit. <laughs> but I'm honest. Oh wow, and, that's oh, a really nice set. Wow, yeah, those are nice. Yeah, that's the stuff. um. So let's see. Uh, this was 72, which was the Night Stalker. Yeah. That's the uh, the vampire one. And then the Night Strangler was 73. And that is the... I forget which one this is. Do you guys remember? No. Like what the, the plot of it is. I haven't watched I this in a couple of years. I thought they were both vampires. I could be wrong. No, Night Strangler is no. like a serial killer. No, the, one, the one's like a serial killer and yeah. he ends up burning the house down, I believe. is that Isn't that the one? Hold on, guys. I got to go freshen my uh, mint julep. Yeah, it's, it's a nice book right here. Um, I mean, the, the Night Stalker is the better of the two, but they're both good. Yeah. There it is. That's what, remember, the, the drawing of the, the, the ghoul guy. And then the, then he goes to the house. And, yeah, that, that's that one. And then the um, the series is a is, – um, 
how many let me see here how many episodes it was eight so there was there, there's a five disc dvd set it's actually out on blu-ray now too but it was kind of a little pricey i didn't really want it that bad so there's 20 looks like 20 episodes uh i can't remember what that was that was just one season right dennis yeah just one and that was what year was this i want to say like 74 75 somewhere around there 74 75 yep so definitely worth getting and and eli these were the impetus for the x-files right here i mean this is that's what i always kind of thought yeah chris carter took he openly says this was oh, okay none yeah. of these there's no x-files it's the yeah. especially the the creature feature stuff was predominantly influenced by that, that makes sense yeah the, there's there's even an, a vampire x-files episode that was probably directly taken it's directly a ripoff of it exactly yeah, yep yeah. yep um so that was my entree and then of course the exorcist which i didn't yank but i i think i showed that the last two uh the exorcist i saw at nine years old such a great movie so i would have been let's see what year would that have been i would have been four fuck can't do math right now i had uh oh 75 so 75 i'd have been about nine and that was on tv and it was shit scary and oh, yeah. still really is the only scary movie that kind of still gets me um I think it's and, and, I, and i agree uh tom part three is very creepy as fuck that hospital scene man it's a yeah and the shit crawling across the ceiling yeah but i love george c scott anything he's in i gotta oh, yeah. i gotta see it so. and brad duroff too bad duroff yep yep yeah those two guys um, yeah so they, they, they that that dude gets every drop of blood emptied into little cups there's not a single drop of blood left in his body yeah it's a creepy yeah. idea it's sanguinated it is tom what um why do we watch horror movies why do you think we watch horror movies why do we get into this stuff what's wrong with us um the uh, i i mean i guess there's a the classic answer is that you know um the way to kind of deal with your own fears and, and and anxieties and that's and that's sort of that's sort of the classic reason that people give and i think there's a makes a lot of sense um you know but i you know i, I was probably unusually attracted to it from a really young age and there was a part of like i don't know if i should be watching this like i would cover my face uh, just that it seemed like especially like the friday the 13th or the halloween halloween 2 um like it just seemed so extreme so there is that kind of roller coaster ride of thing of like this is something crazy i don't know if i should be watching it at least when i was that young um and I think there's there's a lot of reasons because there's like you know infinite types of horror movies that cover all sorts of topics. You know, I think it depends on the movie too. Yeah, I mean, there's you know there are people though, a, a pretty good percentage I would say of the. Uh oh, what is going on there? We got major slapback. Yeah, there are people that kind of don't get that don't like horror movies like yeah, why, there's a lot of people why, why would i like, want to feel anxious and scared, scared yeah. yeah yeah it doesn't make any sense yeah and i know yeah. people like that like my ex my ex-wife was like oh god no i just don't want to i don't want to see it you know and it may my my daughter she's like yeah why would i want to watch <laughs> my little daughter my youngest daughter loved like i would put Jew on on you know we watched the grudge the japanese version you know mm. which is really creepy and you know because it's just yeah. like alien and bizarre and she love it but my older daughter would be like i'm going to bed I, i'm not i'm not watching i don't know why you guys like this stuff it's awful yeah some <laughs> people it's just like alien to them they just do they're like i don't get it i think so, there's something so tangible about it as well i and i don't know if, for me besides I, like it wasn't like an uh, like to be like a rebel or i wasn't even in for the roller coaster ride i was obsessed with the tangibility of it i loved 
like heavy metal and horror have something strongly in common it, it, besides like the graphic visceral but it's the the artistry like the logos the friday the 13th logo the nightmare on elm street early logo and the one that they used afterwards the slayer iron maiden we're obsessed with those things yeah we love tangible culture and there was just it, it, it was you know i guess it's outsider culture too because it was ours but we had it in our magazines and you know what i mean there was just like heavy metal and horror are so linked together yeah. i mean just That's the graphics point. the yeah. art and the graphics so it, i mean you didn't have to see cannibal holocaust uh, you know as a kid i remember being because we're on the quebec border and we saw the european versions of the guy like you know eating the intestines like the original <laughs> versions and that like stuck with me as well as seeing megadeth posters like, in head shops you know what i mean next to samantha fox like i was so my my i was so stimulated by it like by samantha fox on those you know you know those door posters you're yeah. going through it and you're in these places and like this is like you, you're into like maybe get a comic book or something and then you see oh jesus christ look at this woman her tits are out and then you see eddie <laughs> And then you see Blackie Lawless' saw blade. And then you ah. see, you know what I mean? And then, like, you see all this sort of, like, you know, beautiful artistic things. It's the beauty and the beast mixed together. And, and you just crave it. You just crave it and you want more of it and you want to own it. Yeah. it. He's right. It is escapism for sure. Escapism, yep. Mm -hmm. right? Like, I wasn't an art, I wasn't a, an athletic kid, but I, I knew, like, because you, like, you were drawn. You're I, was, drawn yeah, stuff. I was I was drawn to it and I was bought and sold like well when it came to that and I think we're all like that here yeah and you brought up a good point I mean we as collectors and accumulators which you know is a, maybe a better word we're particularly when it comes to like music and that crossover with the artwork I've bought so many albums just based almost solely on the artwork yeah. and absolutely and usually the crazier not the crazier but the more intricate and dark the better so if it was something you know goblins and dragony i was in if it was something eddy and and metal looking and fierce and all that kind of stuff i was in if it was proggy like marillion i was in you know that kind of stuff but i think for me while i'm not you know I'm not one of these dudes that ever has like homicidal thoughts. You know what I mean? Like I never have ever thought of harming anyone unless it's a political figure. Then I've <laughs> actually thought of it. But anyways, I digress. Um, but what I'm getting at there is that I, I don't really think even if I hate someone, like literally vilely hate them, I'm not thinking, oh, I want to slice their throat or I want to you know, kill them. That's just not not in me. Right. But I, I enjoy the escapism of watching something like that on screen, usually in a little more subtle way. I don't need to see the fucking, you know, head sheared off and the fucking blood flying everywhere. I like something a little more subtle. But, you know, just the, well, for example, you know, you guys mentioned one of my favorites man bella is like my my dude i fucking love that guy because he was not the greatest actor but it was something he just had so much character when he did you know whether it was dracula or the guy um the guy in white zombie i forget his name the the, the, Rob you know, the zombie? oh no <laughs> what did you say movie white, white. <laughs> oh, movie white. <laughs> um or when he was like in um uh when he played uh um which i'm gonna Oh, no, I don't have that one. The Black Cat. You guys know the Black Cat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just a fucking purely dark, evil movie, man. I mean, and it's a role reversal because usually Karloff is kind of the the gooder guy and Bella's the badder guy. But in that movie, they're both bad, but but Bella's the good guy kind of, and Karloff is the evil one. And, you know, I forget his name in that now off the top of my head. But, you know, that that's one of my favorite one of my ab absolute favorite movies and the only way you can get it is in a box set that I don't own yet. But, um, but yeah, I, I think that, you know, for me, escape, escapism is a huge part of it. And just the fact that a lot of times with horror movies, there's just not a lot of good time feelings. It's like, 
oh, I love you, Henry. I love you. No. You know that that kind of stuff, like like chick flick type shit. I don't, I don't, I don't get into that stuff. It doesn't do anything for me. And I, while I like some comedies, Boy. I'm not a huge comedy guy either. I just like that darker edge to things for me. You know what I mean? How about you, Dennis? Yeah, for me, it's uh, it was monsters. Like growing up as a kid, like dinosaurs, especially when I was really oh, young, yeah. they just fascinated me. And then when I saw like King Kong. Not, I don't think I saw the original. I think I saw the seventies version first, but that thing like blew my mind. Oh, the so, Jeff Bridges. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, I still love that movie. It's cool. Give a shit what anyone says, that no, I do too, man. <laughs> um, and then like the Godzilla stuff, Ultraman, that kind of the Japanese stuff. Just, I loved all that stuff, and I was drawing all the time because I was watching that stuff. Because I would go to elementary school and I'd come home, and there's there was a show called Captain Cosmic. And they played all the Godzilla, Ultraman, Spectre Man, and all those Japanese shows with monsters in them. And I was drawing all that stuff. And, like, I got really into that stuff. And I was then I was already into, like, Frankenstein and that stuff. So it just kind of grew from there. And then especially during, like, after I saw The Exorcist um, and The Fog and those movies. I think mm. The Fog I saw, I might have saw before Halloween, actually. Um, but I, I think I saw Halloween like on TV or something. But those, especially like the atmosphere, like the fog, like not the fog, but like the fog and the atmosphere of those movies, yeah, yeah. mixed with like a creature or like a like a, a villain that was like just coming around, just killing people for no reason. It just kind of fascinated me. Um, especially, I mean, I, I guess Michael Myers has a reason, right? I mean, the shape. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, and then, like, seeing Friday the 13th, where you don't, it's kind of like those, you know, it's like the, those old movies where you don't know who the killer is, like the Giallos and stuff like that, where Friday the 13th takes those, that inspiration. But um, I had never seen those movies, but it's like a murder mystery type of thing. It just got me really interested in it, like zombies and just the creature aspect. And yeah, Ray Harryhausen, good point. Yeah, Harry Harry Harry. Yeah. yeah, seeing all those movies, especially like uh, Jason and the Argonauts and uh, Island of Lost Souls. Oh, Sinbad, yeah. oh, I love that. Yeah. Jay yeah, man, so good. Clash yeah. of the Titans. Well, was, uh, that's that was a big inspiration. Uh, I didn't even think of that, but yeah, yeah, you the, remember in the what was that? The, was that the Late fifties, right? Um, like Jason the Argonauts. Seventh Voyage. Seventh, Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. And I think I Seventh saw Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. I I think it was what was Is that? Is that the one with the fighting Island skeletons, Island, right? Is that Sinbad the one with the fighting Island skeletons, Island. Dennis? Yeah, that was uh Ah incredible. Yeah, just badass twenty thousand fathoms. Those movies just those things really inspired me to like keep getting into more and more of that stuff and then with the slashers and that stuff coming on. I just, I spent Alien too. Alien was a huge influence on me because it was like that. It was like a taboo movie for me. I think I saw nice. like saw like uh, famous monsters and they had like Alien in it. But my mom wouldn't let me see it, and I really wanted to see the movie. But she bought me like a Walt Simonson comic at like some used bookstore somewhere. And it was the whole comic of the movie. So I knew the whole movie, and it was way more graphic than the movie was. Um, <laughs> that's like the alien's teeth going into people's heads, and they're exploding and stuff. Uh, so I knew what the movie was about before I saw it. But when I saw the movie, it it, it was it was like it, it matched the comic. It was it just those kind of things. And then going in, obviously going into like, you know, the giallos and the Italian films through the 80s that's what really got me into like horror from the beginning all the way up until now and i mean i don't know there's some all right movies coming out now but i feel myself always going back to those kinds of classic Same movies. Here. yeah i mean but we're, we're old dudes and i feel like we always go back even in metal we do like, even oh, with our music came out, time, and they're right? good. Eh, i'm just gonna listen to like the band they sound like instead yeah because Bad Bad good, good call, Michael. Good call. Yeah, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's, um, just I, I kind of feel like that's a lot of us, you know. Once yep. you get to a certain period of time, you kind of are like, 
yeah, this is okay, but man, like for me, you know, I, I see some of these newer horror movies and there's so much fucking green screen and yeah. you know nothing the CGI tangible, shit. Nothing tangible. No. Right. And you, Phil, I'm sure being a set designer and being in that stuff, love the thing where you had to create something. I mean, a good example of that is is um Savini, man. I mean the dude just is a magician of gore mm -hmm. and coolness and all that stuff is very real animatronics and you know syringes squirting blood out of eye sockets and you know the the, the fucking uh controllers move animatronics and shit like that like the the thing in the thing you know the creature in the thing is one of the most amazing fucking creations ever right sure. you know it, it just doesn't get better than that Harry Housen, Ray, you know, like uh, Rob Bottin, all this sort of thing, and I think it goes back to uh, why we're obsessed with it too. Like it's it's the, it's that kind of like punk DIY thing. We all, I'm sure, at one point made our own horror film. You know what I mean? We've all made our backyard. Ab Can you please tell that truck to fuck off? I'm Seriously, <laughs> sounds like all of sounds like all of my neighbors. <laughs> yeah, where the, who's it? Who's is that? Yours? I'm, I'm, was it mine? Am I, oh, I, don't, I don't know who it was, Tom, but it's upsetting me. Yeah. <laughs> really upset. I, don't even wanna, I have to go, guys. <laughs> the unmitigated gall of that fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was told there'd be no trucks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this it's, show it's, specifically it's, said guys, no trucks. <laughs> maximum overdrive. It's happening right oh, now. Oh, shit. Now ah, that's ah, okay. Touche. Touche. Does anyone have any Rhea M? I, I didn't bring any no. Rhea M, the Comet, to uh, take over. But, yeah, I think we've all made Backyard. We we watched those, and they were our rock stars. You know, we, we looked at, you know, we saw Savini. We saw, you know, a lot of those early, like, makeup effects guys. And we're like, yeah, we can do that. And then you went out with ketchup and sausages, and you realized, wow, it's a little bit harder than what it looks. <laughs> right but it was it was fun we could we could partake in that we we created our own horror films and we created our own slashers and yeah i, I think that's that's part of its charm i used to write horror movies when i was oh, a yeah? kid. yeah <laughs> i'd write scripts and stuff that's just that, see, that's cool man you know it, here's it just, one it got us into film yeah well here's one did any of you guys do the haunted house thing in either your house or in a neighbor's house or in a locale a barn did you ever work in one of those because true story here i want to say 75 because i think my parents were still married might have been might have been 73 72 i remember i was i was very young probably six or seven and uh we did a haunted house in the basement of my my parents house it was pretty elaborate man we actually believe it or not we actually did a thing where I can't remember exactly how we did it, but we had an open rafter basement and we actually took, I think I wore like, um, uh, shoulder pads, like football, peewee football shoulder pads. And my dad hooked two belts under my arms <laughs> and hung me from the rafters and then put, and then put like a fake rope around my neck. Now I don't think the rope was attached, but to my knowledge, I maybe it was. <laughs> maybe it was attached and they were just hoping that the belts would rip i don't remember but um but yeah we did that whole thing and and like you know that was that was a, a good fucking time and then in as i got older i worked in a really killer old victorian bar up around here and we would at halloween we'd do a three-day weekend friday saturday sunday where we turned it was it was an old brewery and that the catacombs they called it had the old oaken cast like the big you know brewing cast down there i think it was like turn of the century I, it's somewhere in that range and we would literally do some of the most fucking obscene shit i don't know if i told this story last time but i worked i was about 25 and a lot of the kids that worked in the kitchen were younger they were 18 19 20 21 and a lot of these dudes were like tripping balls on acid all the time and doing mushrooms <laughs> while they're at work and smoking a lot of weed. And so they came up with all these ideas and I will never fucking forget this, man. I was like an MC. I had the fucking vampire Gene Simmons black makeup on and the white face paint. And then I had this big cape and I would usher people through the, uh, through the, the haunted house. And I didn't really know exactly what they were setting up in the, the big, waiting room area that we had like drapes across and i was outside of that so my first experience of walking in there i'm hearing this fucking 
creepy, horrible music, man. Turns out it was the first uh, typo negative album, and it was like <laughs> slow, deep, and hard. And they're playing fucking, um, oh, God, what's that one song on there? The real creepy one, The Glass Walls of Limbo or something like that. Anyway, just this horrible, fucking scary, eerie shit. And here they had one of the girls that was a, a like a bus girl. She's laying on a table, and just from her waist up, She's kind of under the table, right? But her this part of her's, you know, this part of her's up above. And then they went and got fucking pig's heads, real pig's heads, <laughs> and fucking pig's guts. And they had the entrails all over her body here. And these fucking pig heads hanging everywhere with like those um outdoor like things you would light up for mosquitoes, you know, that you have on your lanterns or patio type things. I walk back there. I'm like, what in the fucking shit is going on? That's it. I'm going to hell right here and right now. It was just the coolest thing though, you know, but that shit was great. I, I don't know if any of you guys ever did that at all. I ruined Christmas for, for my uncle one time. I, I don't know if I told you this. I don't think. Uh, I was, it was Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> now, my uncle has a very weak stomach, and I was heavily into Texas Chainsaw too. I mean, heavily. heavily. It was my world, and uh, <laughs> I saw the Christmas turkey there, and I saw the skin on the turkey, and I thought, well, hey, because it was a time when you couldn't get all these like props, so I I took the skin off the turkey meticulously and stapled it down in the basement and made a leather face mask out of it and came it because i i had a, a, an old chainsaw that my dad bought me that didn't really work and he bought it on like a like a some ad and i painted it like the the orange one and it had the spikes like from part two yeah. and i came out with the mask on and uncle mike uh, he started urging because he could see it was it was actually like skin stapled together and it, it ruined Christmas. <laughs> I remember I got a swat in the ass. I was too old too for a swat in the ass. So yeah, my mother was like smack me and she was like, you go to your room right now. You're sick. <laughs> That's great though, man. Well, That's good yeah. stuff. I mean, man, you know, I was just emulating my heroes, right? I wasn't trying to like be murderous or scary. I was like, hey man, this is Savini, dude. Like <laughs> Oh yeah, and you used to do that shit like if you played um if you played tag in the neighborhood, like when you were a, a kid, you know, you you'd always want to go scare the hottest girl in your your neighborhood. You know, you, you want to sneak up on her and blah, you know, do something fucking, you know, scary and yeah. eerie. Cuz you thought that was going to endear you to her and yeah, you thought it was cool. I remember inviting a girl over to my house, even when I was old enough to know better. <laughs> and she was very, because I, like I said, I had the bangs. I was, oh my God, I was a handsome kid. Oh, look at this now. And then imagine young, girl. I was handsome. And this poor girl, bangs. yeah, this girl, yeah, <laughs> this girl thought she could probably change me. Uh, and I invited her over to my bedroom, like to my house. And I was like, hey, you want to watch Friday the 13th part five? And I shit you not, man. Like she started talking about how stupid the movie was, and yeah, like I hate I, that. I wanted to watch the movie with her. I wanted to share it with her. Yeah. And she was like trying to kiss me and shit. And I'm like, but no, hold on. Now Miguel's gonna eat the the. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna get diarrhea here right now. You're gonna love it. And trying she to did, watch the movie. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> and uh, no, I'm not joking, man. And like. And nope. she just she didn't get Friday the genius of what do you think Friday. I brought you here for? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> you, you're the movie. You're, yeah, like you're being sleazy and shit. I just try to start a relationship here on Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. Imagine trying to start a relationship based on Friday the Thirteenth. Friday the Thirteenth, yeah, right. But that's where my mind was, and she was a beautiful woman. And was, if if I could do things differently, I probably would. But I did not like the disrespect that she showed. Di Danny Steinman's direction. <laughs> it just ended right there. I like it either. That's also, the second I, time he's made two movies and both of them have come up tonight. Yeah. Seven Street. <laughs> Danny Stein uh, and you, and some porn though. Yeah. Did you ever see his porn <laughs> movies? Because I've been trying to track it down and I can't. That guy seems like a real mean spirited scumbag. That is, I, I would, I would love to meet him. <laughs> Even though that that ship has sailed. It's probably the type of dude that wears a, a robe around and stuff. And 
Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I bet you his fingers smell like tobacco all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Stained yellow fingers. From oh, hey, Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions for the panel? I'm going to. No, but I do have a similar story to oh, Phil. Boy. When I was on a date and she was like, let's watch some movies at my house. And I was like, all right. So my dumbass decides we're going to watch Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, I did that once too. Oh, nice. Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's two. One was Cannibal Holocaust. The other one was Gummo. But uh, <laughs> bathwater alone, bath water alone is grosser than anything in Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, Cannibal right. Holocaust one, I was really young and we were yeah. in blankets together and stuff and things were getting i'm like wait whoa we got a, the movies on over here what are you, yeah, what are you yeah. doing <laughs> but uh and then Gummo, like, he's like you better turn this shit off this is sick and i'm like you can leave <laughs> uh, but, uh, i knew i loved you man i knew i loved you dude and then as a kid when we were talking about like scaring people like i had oh this, yeah uh, yeah when i was a kid this is the dick smith makeup set and i decided i was gonna do this at school when i was like 10 years old and put all this shit on my face for the halloween party. and go to school with it no like i had to put it on during like the 15 minutes where you got to get into your costume and i'm trying to put on all oh, these oh okay and i'm trying to put on all this shit and like we're doing a parade and i'm like i think it was like Five minutes after the parade started, I'm running down the street with like a ripped shirt with like a bullet hole with like fake blood and all this <laughs> like blood and shit all over my face. It was fucking hilarious, but <laughs> but it, we we cared about it. Like we want yeah. like, like from and I know I I feel I can speak for you. Like <laughs> that those formative years, like your hormones are out of control, and yes, girls are important. But like I was genuinely a nice guy. I. I, I, I didn't want it to be like you know a hand job in the corner. I, I was like, let's let's have a meeting of minds. Let's I, like this is what I'm into, and do you accept this? And no, she didn't, and I did. I had no fucking candy for her at all, and I regret that. I regret that a lot. Yeah, but I never, same- I never tried to make it with a chick relative to a horror movie that I recall, but. It's usually a bad idea. Telling you about that that horror house that we did um, the second year. I was the MC the first year because I kind of fell into it. Like, hey, Jeff, we need somebody to do this. I'm like, uh, okay. So I just ended up doing getting fucking ripped the whole time. You know, drinking the whole time that I'm doing it. And so by the end of the night, I had no I clue what the fuck I was. I was just like, come on, everybody, let's go. Yeah. yeah. But the second time, I thought, well, I'm going to be in it this time. I want to be in the actual wrong of the you know the people that are scaring people so in the one with this one long hallway that you had to walk down you'd walk into this ante room you'd walk down into where they the cooper shed where they had all the the big giant beer vats and then you'd walk along this long hallway to the stairwell that would go down about 45 feet down under underneath and they called that the catacombs which was actually a dining room during dining hours but then it was where they would actually store the beer to keep it really cool during the, the summertime and once it was brewed upstairs, it would be piped down there. And long, long story short, it's deep down there. And it's pretty dank and pretty musty and creepy looking. And so I decided that what we what we did was we put all these sheets with all kind of weird, like, fucking, like, mossy-like shit hanging down and along this long hallway. And I want to say that hallway was probably, I don't know, 30 feet long, 35 feet long, something like that. I dressed then in all white. And I put on this fucking creepy mask that I found with, you know, like a shock of crazy gray hair, you know, like Christopher Lloyd, uh, doc gray hair. That's the psycho. And the face is all skeletalized. And I mean, it's a pretty nice, pretty nice mask. Then I took fucking fake blood and put it all over, like coming out of the, you know, the orifices, the eyes, the nose, everything. And then what I would do is there was one area of the, of the, the hallway that had like a little, like a, an alcove that I could kind of, back when i was a skinny young lad in my 20s i could kind of sidle up and then and then i jump out and scare people and if i said this before i apologize but two of you guys haven't heard it and uh, as i would hear them coming through the hallway i would then jump out and blah, you know scare the shit out of people well towards the end of the night everybody's drinking and my probably my reaction time wasn't quite as good and we're walking you know they're walking a, a two couples down And I jump out, and this fucking chick just, boom, socks me right in the fucking face. (laughs) 
Ah! I mean, she just, you know, boom, just reacted, right? And I mean, when she hit me, she fucking hit me hard, like connected right here. I'm like, no joke, man. I'm like, you fucking bitch. I shoved her <laughs> And her boyfriend was there. And he's like, yo, yo, man. I'm like, fuck you, man. She knew coming in here, this is on and out. You don't touch people that are in the fucking on and house, man. Get her the fuck out of here. It's a goddamn catacombs. Jesus. Yeah, in the catacombs, man. You know the rules. So, but that was the only time that ever happened. But it was pretty funny, man. But good stuff. We had a lot of fun and a lot of drunken, drunken, uh, some stuff that are a little X rated that I can't get into on, on here. But some oh, wild that's and that's crazy. That's our other podcast. That's our other podcast later. That's correct. Yanks and Tugs. It's called the Spermula <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> All right, guys, do we want to start show, showing some shit here and uh, kind of dig in? Or do, do we have any other uh, any other questions we didn't want to throw around the panel from even some of the guests here? No, I, I'm re- I'm ready to whip it out. Oh, thank God. Oh, that's what we're showing? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's real horror. I'll go last. Yeah. That's real horror. <laughs> All right, how about we let Tom go first since he's – Tom and Eli, you guys – Show us anything. By the way, Tom, how long did it take you to grow that beard? I feel like I haven't seen your channel in like a month and a half. <laughs> and like, you yeah, know, it grows fast. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I was like, is that even the couple, same couple, guy? couple months, probably. Jesus. Um, it looks good. I dig it. Don't be a pervert. <laughs> Just address him as Galileo hey, from hey, henceforth. It's good. It's a nice beard. Well, I don't. I was. I was wa- watching. I just picked this up because I have this. I've had this on DVD forever since it came out. Uh, so we're talking about London Blair and slasher movies. Um, mm. And I was watching this before the stream, um, so I'll have to actually finish it tomorrow. Um, and I've seen this many times. This is, I think, 1981 or two. I'd say 81. 81. I don't even think I've seen that. Believe it or not. Is yeah, that like, this is a horror comedy, right? She doesn't. No. Have- she doesn't oh, okay. have the feathered bangs, but she does have bangs. I'll give it that. Yeah. Yeah, her her hair is not it's like this like perny garbage. Ooh. Um not the same. I can't but, have private time to that. No. But but this is the one I saw on TV as oh, it's you know, all about think, roller boogie. Yeah, that's true. You saw this on TV? Yeah, as a kid and it, and it just scared the shit out of me. Um, I think this movie is really cool because it basically the setup is like it's a, um, a college hazing where all these students have to stay in this creepy house where these murders happened um, and they're wearing pe- like period costumes because that's part of it. So it's kind of like a House on Haunted Hill gothic horror thing forced into a slasher movie so it becomes a slasher movie um so it's kind of a clever way to combine those two genres and i just i've always loved how the the killer guy he has all these secret passageways in the house that that he uses to sneak up on people and that just always that particular just creeped me out so much that you know you, you think you're safe in your room and there's like a trap door you didn't know about when this mutant dude comes out so but this this is probably one of my favorite 80s slashers who's in that anybody of note uh the dude from friday 13th part four and young of the restless uh, yeah but i don't i don't watch soap <laughs> operas oh i do um, <laughs> let me tell you victor newman has <laughs> my jam um, victor newman yeah there you go yeah, that's pretty much there's an australian actress He's in a couple of horror movies. Nice. There's no gimmick no. to him, though. That's what always bothered me about him. He didn't have like a a mat. I know he's a freak and he's a murderer and shit, but he didn't have a gimmick. Well, they call they call him a gork, which okay. is like they're. I think they want to actually call him like a. Uh, you can say it here. The R well, the R word. We're amongst but friends, they, but, they, but they don't they don't want to do that, so they came up with a new term. But basically it's you know he's uh, he's got issues right but they invented this like disease or something i just i i wish they went 
the extra mile like house on sorority row where they had that like that that gesture doll sort of they, they needed something yeah 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 it's just I, I that's the one thing about that movie that always like turned me off that they didn't have a gimmick yeah and that house on sorority row is absolutely one of my favorite 80s slasher oh my movies god speaking of uh young and the restless eileen davidson all right, wait, you're talking Young and the Restless. The, o- the only two I remember, Jennifer Aniston's dad. What was his name? Oh, that's on, that's on, that dude, that's Days of Our Lives. That's what Days of Our up? Lives. What are you, a soap opera poser? All right, so here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. You know what I remember? That's the false soap opera. <laughs> Hold on. Here's what I remember from Days of Our Lives. That was the one my, my grandmother watched. Bo and Hope. Bo and Hope, yeah. Bo and Hope. Peter, what was Bo's name? Peter some Hope. No, I don't know. I don't know if that was her name. Hope. But I'll tell you, on Days of Our Lives, there was a slasher killer named... Uh, That's Bo, right. Uh, no, what was his name? Bo Baker. He was burned. And this is pre-Elm Street. And wow. he was haunting Patch and Kayla and all that. But that's for a different podcast. Yeah, it's a different podcast. Uh, Eli, what you got to show us on your first uh, thing? I wonder if... Um... Uh, what's his name was watching that, you know, to create Freddy. Uh, uh, Wes Craven, yeah. Maybe. England. Robert England? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or both, yeah. Or you mean, oh, you mean the guy, uh, yeah, who did that movie? Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Yeah. Wes Craven, yeah. Yeah. Wes Craven. I wonder. I wonder, you know. Maybe. Um, so I'm a, I'm a pretty big, uh, I know every time you throw this out there, you're going to get some people like, come on. But uh, H.P. Lovecraft fan. I know he was an asshole. I get it. You, know, you can tell me it again if you want. I haven't heard it. Well, see, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know H.P. Lovecraft. No, I didn't know him. Really? Oh, that guy oh, was man. a fucking dick. I hated that dude. <laughs> he was a piece of shit. Yeah, definitely a piece of shit. <laughs> like, did he slap his, uh... ice cream out of your hand, Dennis? <laughs> Soft serve. His <laughs> writing, though. Do you, do you know what the? He, you know what he named his cat, for example? Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. Well, no, please tell me. Please tell me. Please say if you say retarded. I'm oh God, no. It's worse than. It's worse than that. Yeah, we're not we're not saying that for sure. But you can look it up and you'll be like, wow, that's that's so fucking dumb. <laughs> but what, anyways, uh Dennis, I bet you like this one. I think we talked about it. Done with four. Wow, look at that. Oh, yeah, I just I just got this new uh uh arrow arrow video. Um don't know that one. It's it's I love it. It's a cool movie. It does not touch the story. The story is is just pretty amazing. The movie's cool. Uh it's uh, so you got what Dean Stockwell, right? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Dean Stockwell plays this guy named Wilbert Waitley, who he's like this uh, he has this lineage of like he's not 100% human, is like his ancestors. He, he uh, at least in the story, he's like part goat, he's like a goat man, basically. They didn't really add that to the movie like they should have, but anyways, he's like this, he has lineage to like cosmic gods, basically. So he is basically trying to get to a uh, Miskatonic university because it has a copy of the Necronomicon in the college, <laughs> <laughs> all glassed up and stuff like steel proof and all that. <laughs> That's why I went to Memorial university it's, of it's, Newfoundland. They made yeah. the same claim. on the <laughs> It's so the incel horror fan doesn't steal it. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. it on eBay. So he needs, he needs to steal the Necronomicon to complete his, his, what he was basically born to, to do, which was unleash the old ones. Uh, but he can't do it without the spell book, of course. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool movie. The, I think the, the story is just a thousand times better, but the movie's cool. It's very, very dated. It's very 70s looking, oh, yeah. uh, but it's still pretty fun. You know, it's a pretty when fun. What year is that from? Closet. When he opens up that closet, uh, I remember being like kind of spooked out. It's ridiculous. And the VHS, I guess? Dennis, you have the VHS of this? It's like yeah. really unassuming. It's really stupid looking. Yeah, it has that like seventies, but it's lady on the cover. It's like, what is this? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. What year is that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, I, I thought it was seventies, but it says sixty nine. Oh wow! So I guess. (laughs) (laughs) How do I miss that one? How do I miss that one? Well, that's probably why it looks dated. Then I thought it was like mid seventies. My bad. Yeah, I'm yeah. a fan of the 69. How did I miss that one? I'm not sure. <laughs> you guys ever done, Dennis, what you got, dude? You guys ever done the 37er? It hurt. Oh, what do I got? <laughs> the 30s. All right. This is going to be a good one. And uh, I've just been mm. watching this, and it's such a fucking horrible, great movie. Uh, Despise it. Oh, my oh, God. I've never heard cool. of this, Dennis. I've never awesome. heard of it. What, what? in the fuck? Okay, I haven't either. 
<laughs> oh my god you guys got to see this movie it's probably on youtube but it looks uh, good <laughs> that just inspired a metal band i want to start called unpleasanter it's a <laughs> mix between real uh action and a, like a samuel jackson character and uh they're sam trying jackson to get out. Is it? no it's oh, a okay. fake sam jackson but he acts exactly oh, okay. the same oh okay. and then it, i think he's called quinn or something like that but uh he talks exactly the same and you have to think that this is mixed with cgi so it's one of those movies that has real life and then all of a sudden it switches to cgi like <laughs> 90s cgi oh it's no. so bad oh, but it's fucking worse amazing. <laughs> it, it's it's one of those you can even see on the back it looks like a fucking sega game or something on the back yeah it does <laughs> holy shit i i have to see this i must see this you need to see this i'm telling you if you don't see one movie tonight besides this one you see despiser uh but man this is good it's bad it's got monsters it's got what are they worms or what it looks awesome yeah they're like i don't know what those are they're they're fucking (laughs) tremor worms the tremor worms yeah look at those teeth is that monster at least practical in the movie or is he a cgi i hope not I hope no, not. Pra- that's a practical monster. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's gotta have a practical monster. Got to. Okay. I want it. But yeah, check it out. Despiser, man. And what year is that again? I don't know. Let me. <laughs> Who hold cares? On. Definitely nineties. Definitely, definitely late nineties. Yeah. Oh look, there's all. Old man Dennis putting on his bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Langoliers. It's I good. Uh, Langoliers is a good book. 2006. 2000, really? Man, it looks hey, like it. Looks why like is it. that motherfucker Rick not on here right. now? He's just talking? I don't Get know, man. Where here. are you at, Rick? Get Where his ass on here. Man? 2003. So, 2003, 2003 animation on this. 2003 okay. was you no know better what, than the 90s. <laughs> so pretty bad. Dennis, doesn't that look straight out of 1987 right there, man? What? That's a, that's a good thing, though. The front, that cover, man, looks like it's yeah. straight out of 1987. Well, just because I'm saying it's from 2003, this, I mean, you have to think the budget's still like maybe like $60,000, if that. <laughs> that's probably true. Right, right. So it's, I mean, it's not like 2003 Jurassic Park. It's 2003. Yeah, right. And maybe they were going for throwback, too, even at that time. Maybe they wanted a little bit of a throwback monster film, you know? Philip, you are up, sir. Uh, I brought all DVDs tonight except for one because right. it's a fluke because I was watching it the other night as I was feeling amorous. <laughs> and it's The Sinful Dwarf. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> wow, is, I, the lenticular. I, I feel that this is uh, one of those something strange uh, bootlegs. This is a very hard film to get a hold of, but it is my kind of film. And I just adore it. Uh, so they capture women and, uh, well, just, I mean, <laughs> let me read this. There's more. <laughs> a young bride, let alone to the lewd passions of an evil dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And if you like the beast Uh-oh. in heat, this is your jam. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but this is, uh, de- I feel this is definitely a bootleg. Is that a, a lenticular cover on that? No, it's not. That's just no, dude. Oh. That's that's something weird. <laughs> it looks lenticular. Oh, yeah. Is, is that yours too? Yours is like that as well. Yeah, that's the that's original press. Oh, really? I didn't know. I, I felt that it was like fake. I, I... No, something weird was a real company. They put oh, I know out... something weird. Frank Henlotter and stuff like that. But I just felt that because I got it for so cheap back in like the late nineties on eBay. I felt like. I, I scored. I mean, I didn't. I probably paid like twenty bucks for it, but yeah, I you know, and Canadian that was probably forty. But like you well, know, yeah. I, it, but I love this film. I I it makes me laugh, and I've watched it in a room full of people at a party, and everyone was like really not comfortable with what was going no. on. <laughs> Jesus. Right, but it was just so cool. And what was awesome about it that the dwarf uh, he actually looked like my cousin. <laughs> so uh it, um, yeah is that is that let me see that again the sinful dwarf man oh, I, I, so i'm gonna good. have to look that up 
it that's is, one of those it's so bad it's good things. Well, no, it's actually like executed pretty well. It's not like hammy at all. Like it's okay, very okay. perverse. If like I said, if you like the beast and heat and a lot of Nazi exploitation, and I really will not apologize for my love of Nazi exploitation. I'm sorry. No need. Uh, <laughs> Right, <laughs> but yeah, black, they, black looking midget, amazing film. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, it's 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 really good, and it's uh, it's cruel and it's vicious, and it has a heart. <laughs> it has a heart. <laughs> All right, so, I don't remember if I showed these last time or not, but even I have, a, I, did, I have a quick sinful dwarf thing time. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> if you watch the DVD, there's a featurette on there that's filmed at a video store. I worked at that video store. I was work at that video store the day they filmed that no way i think they gave Are you the serious? guy john yeah so it's video vault so i remember they i because i closed that night it's the guy uh guy's name is john uh that's in the video uh, i forget the name of it on the dvd but if you watch that and you can like see i think you can i have to re-watch it because i have the uh the dvd um i think you can see like the the Jess Franco section behind him, which is <laughs> which I which I I made and curated to have the, no com way. the complete Jess Franco section. Like we had every VHS and DVD that ever came out for Jess Franco. Wow. Where, where Dennis, I think at? we're gonna have another another lover to add to our so. <laughs> where, Tom, where is this at? What city? Do you mind saying? Uh it was in Alexandria. It, it moved around. There were okay. several, there was one in Georgetown. Oh, but that Virginia. that location was in Alexandria, Virginia, so right okay, outside wow, of DC, right crazy. right out a couple miles outside of DC. And uh, Rick, uh, Rick, telling us all about his uh, search browser <laughs> history. <laughs> uh, why is Rick not on the show? He's Let coming on. He's, he's putting Grandma to bed. I don't give a shit. What? You put your makeup on, change your panty liner, and get your fucking ass <laughs> on here. This is just the beginning. All right, I may have, I may have showed this. I don't recall. I probably did. Um, cause I know I pulled some new stuff tonight, but I did probably pull some old stuff and, um, I wasn't drunk that last time, but I'm getting drunk already off of the quarter. Damn of it. Okay. From shout factory, scream factory, excuse me. It is the Vincent price two collection. Which, excellent. Which has, yes, excellent. Has a nice little book, nice little write up in it here. Uh, lots of good photos and all kind of cool shit for there. And this includes the following films The Raven. Not Ooh, bad. I like I don't love that one. It's okay. Comedy of Tears. Eh, not bad. Tomb of Lygia. I like that one quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Dr. Phoebes Rises Again. It's pretty Great. good one. That the I think is a, a Lovecraft sky. story as well. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah, let me let me finish these up and then we'll comment. Uh, the Return of the Fly. The Fly I have is on the other one. Um, eh, it's okay. It's not great. Uh, House on a Haunted Hill, a classic, fucking great film. And then my favorite, possibly my probably my favorite, uh, Vincent Price film, The Last Man on Earth, which was essentially the, the take on um, what's it called the. Omega Man. Omega, Omega Man. Man. Well, yeah. Omega Man, right. Omega Man was a take on it, actually. Yeah. After, yeah. yeah. And then I guess Will Will uh, Smith did the, what was that called? Oh, I Am Legend, yeah. I Am Legend, which was another take. And I believe that's a, um, the guy wrote for uh, Twilight Zone, right? What was his name? Robert Lockwood? Richard, no? Richard, Math Richard, Richard Matheson. Richard Matheson, yeah. So the, yeah, the novel was I Am Legend. And oh, okay. Well, Last Man on right. Earth was the first adaptation, then Omega Man, then I. I tell you, it's an Italian film. It was done in Italy. It is. I don't know about you guys, but has everyone seen it? I'd imagine you have, right? Yeah, it's good. I love this flick. It's so desolate and dark and it is dreary and fucking creepy and not scary, but just creepy. Yeah. And I think it's kind of cool because it's a, you know, until the very last part of the movie, it's just Vincent Price and he. He sells it very, very well. I love that flick. Um, yeah. I didn't show part one because I don't own part one because when I learned of part one, it was going for about $300 on eBay. I'm like, yeah, no, not happening. Now, they've reissued uh, series one uh, since then. I forget what films are on it, but I do know 
I believe Mask of the Red Death's on there. I believe The Pit and the Pendulum's on there, which are all, like the really good ones. I think Dr. Thieves is on that one too. But they reissued it with some slight changes so that the original uh, Series 1 retained most of its value or some of, the, of its value. But I didn't really care about like the Poe readings. I, I would just like to have the film. So I need to get the uh, part one. But You guys are all it. Americans, right? You guys are all Yankee blue jeans? Oh, you yeah, guys yeah. Are all Yankee blue jeans? Yeah. Fuck sakes. Jesus or at least Christ. I know I'm free. We are. So speaking of Vincent Price. We're so free here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the House of Fright and Sigh. This was a children's show. And they, they hired Vincent Price to be on this. And I really can't emphasize this enough. This it's so you can see Vincent on the back there, and cool. he is. It's my favorite Vincent Price, that and Egghead. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever, ever seen that roller coaster documentary he hosts that he, when he was like 90? No, <laughs> I love, I'd love he's, to. He's, seen the documentary where Matt Dillon hosts roller coaster rides. Matt, Matt Dillon, I would love to see uh, oh, a mashup, a mashup between Matt Dillon and Vincent Price <laughs> commenting on roller coasters. Steel cage mash. It was amazing and scary. But, it's like ed- edited so that it makes it look like they're arguing with each other. Like, <laughs> no, Vincent. Like, heated arguments, too. All right, Tom, what you got for your next uh, trip? Um... I just wanted to add. Uh, oh shit! I saw some ball action. That <laughs> no, time, you didn't. No, I saw some didn't. chewing gum hang down. <laughs> um, as a weird aside to the H.P. Lovecraft um, Vincent Price thing, there was the 1963 Edgar Allan Poe adaptation of The Haunted Palace, starring mm-hmm. Vincent Price. That's a good one. Yeah, I love which it. Which is not an adaptation of Haunted Palace or have anything to do with Edgar Allan Poe. Poe, it's the case of Charles Dexter Ward. Yeah. The adaptation the HP Lovecraft, but he yeah. he it's because of the the Roger Corman, the Poe series was uh you know big box office and they were, he wanted to do an HP Lovecraft adaptation but the studio well, wouldn't let him that he was working with. So he just lied and said that it was a Poe adaptation. I always thought that was funny. Um, uh, you were talking about uh, Return of the Fly, and I let me just say that that is my favorite, like on the nose misfit song. Is it really? Well, it just makes me laugh so much because it's like Return of the Fly with Vincent Price, and then it's like it pretty much goes into running time nine, 95 minutes. <laughs> and they just go into the details of the song. <laughs> okay, that's. That's a true fan. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find. I'm going to pull something else out here. I forgot what I wanted to get. Return of the fly. (laughs) I didn't know that's the lyrics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure these get talked about a lot, but since we were talking about HP Lovecraft, like Reanimator, I saw the uncut version on TV when I was. Again, really young. It had to have been like seven or eight, and it just absolutely. So it's such a bummer. You're such a full-fledged pervert guys. now, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> that I mean, is a pervert film. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, once you get over the the pervert, the you know the naked dead bodies and stuff, I, it's such a great movie and, and so funny, but but so well done, so well written, acted. Um, Barbara Crampton. <laughs> Barbara Crampton. Jeffrey Combs. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I've seen this many times. Yeah. And it just never gets old. It's just, just perfect to me. Oh, yeah. And, and there's not. I thought it was a rated R version. So it, it I didn't give a shit about it at all. I, I, I was like, why is everyone talking about this piece of shit? I, I had no candy <laughs> for it at all. But it was the rated R version. And Uh-oh. then when I saw it afterwards and I got to see some. Uh, See the real version. <laughs> Some downtown Hanoi Barbara Crampton action. I was like, right on. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, and that's... the um, the dominatrix Barbara Crampton that's in this when she gets kind of <laughs> possessed, for lack of a better word. Yeah. And uh, and I initially, so I was a Reanimator fan, and then I learned about this movie. There was a uh, TV show. There's like no remnants of it on the internet that I can find now. It was on 
it was on Comedy Central, but it only ran for, I think, six episodes. And it was sort of, uh, I think it was called just called Cult Movies. It might, it might have been the Comedy Channel before they merged. So it might have been like 92, 93 or something. And basically, there were these two guys that were kind of Joe Bob Briggs type from Texas. And then they would review cult movies. Uh, and they showed like uh, Basket Case and Street Trash, and then that's this great. one. So that's clips from, and then they reviewed from Beyond. And this was like at midnight on Comedy Central. Um, and that's like you know this movie's crazy. And then eventually saw it, probably rented it from a video store later. Um, yeah, so there's a lot, and a lot of the H.P. Lovecraft adaptations are pretty loose. I think it's something that's. Pretty, yeah, hard, way too pretty, hard. pretty hard to adapt. I would say. Who do you like, think I say? Who do you think has been more molested, Stephen King or H.P. Lovecraft? Because those huh. films are. Love well, that. the H.P. Yeah. Lovecraft. He also he put all his or er, most of his stuff in the public domain intentionally. Yeah. So there's probably just because of that. Just because any any asshole can make an H.P. Lovecraft movie, yeah, I think we know our reason, the uh, purpose of this meeting here tonight. <laughs> We're gonna make our own yeah. Stuff. Um, I've always associated H.P. Lovecraft with uh, with with uh, Full Moon for some reason. It's, it's just uh, always been... <laughs> they did they did a bunch of his stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if any of it was good. Um, oh yeah, I guess uh, uh, what's it? Um, Castle Freak is okay. Um, yeah, I like Castle Creek. Yeah. Tom, yeah, so, do you have a favorite between those two? I know that's a tough uh, one. Well, definitely Reanimator. Yeah. Um, so but I, I like the weirdness of, of From Beyond, and I would say it there's more of a HP Lovecraft, more of a feeling of HP Lovecraft, yeah. the writer, in From Beyond than there is. Yeah, in I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Not that not to steal any thunder, but I was gonna I was gonna show that as well. <laughs> the story behind this is I got it on eBay and I the guy said it came with the slip case and the motherfucker sent it without. I was so oh. pissed because I you know you, you pay more, you pay a premium to get the slip case, and it was out of print for quite a while. But uh, it's the two disc version. I guess you probably have that too, right, Tom? Yeah, version. it's the same. A reversible cover too. I love yeah, that. reversible covers. Yep. But, but I got jacked on the fucking thing, and then I, I don't, I don't know what six, seven, five years ago maybe. Now, I forget now. COVID time, but probably six years, seven years ago, I grabbed uh, the steel book from uh, fuck. Who is this? Arrow. I think it's Arrow. Comes with a really nice book and. Um, really well done. I, I don't. I think this is 2K, not 4K. But great, yeah, this is this Arrow, but this is like the regular. Yeah, original. Yeah. original. The older one, yeah. Um. Okay, Eli, you are up, dude. All right. I grabbed Gra like Grandma uh, must be. He must be scratching Grandma's <laughs> back or something. <laughs> He's rubbing her feet. Don't He's rubbing don't, her feet. Don't be weird about it. Or something. I grabbed. Uh, not just uh movies i grabbed some like action figures and stuff too because i like monsters so i don't know maybe uh maybe someone will appreciate it i just bought this godzilla from the original the original oh, godzilla he's he's huge and, uh, there you go okay good <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is a piggy, piggy bank oh that's awesome i would have that so full of change well i i <laughs> I, I had this half filled with coins and i brought it down to the bank Poor, Did you bring poor, it like the whole thing? Yeah, I just brought it and then was dumping it in the machine. And this poor bastard was sitting behind me for an hour for an hour, and, and then it ended up being ended up being five hundred dollars worth of oh shit, coins. dude! How big is that? God it's damn. big. It was only wow. half full. Holy shit! So yeah, I, I I'm just a sucker for the Godzilla is one of my favorite monsters ever, and I saw this at Target oh like a month ago, and I'm like. I was so I, I I looked like such a dork because that's all I bought. So I'm like lugging it up to the counter, <laughs> at uh whatever. So, yeah, I'm a big uh, I just I just love movies with big monsters. Like uh, yeah, I have more monsters. I'll show after that. But are you a Mothra <laughs> man? Are you a Mothra man? Like, I love all the monsters from the Godzilla universe. I think they're all awesome. But 
I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a dork. Godzilla is my favorite, but uh, yeah, I love Mothra. No, you're you know. definitely a dork, not kind of. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You're a Jet Jaguar fan. <laughs> no, I I love them. I love that whole universe. I think they were all cool. Maybe not not all the movies were great, but I think all the monster designs are pretty cool. Some of them are pretty silly, but I just think it's such a cool imaginative universe. Um, yeah, uh, some of the some of the movies better than others. Dennis, right. before you say anything, I don't know if I mentioned <laughs> it last time, but that blood frenzy, I see it there. <laughs> yeah, I see it there. I have a bootleg of Blood Frenzy on oh, VHS. Blood Frenzy? I've seen it. Uh, when, uh, Wednesday, what's your face? In, in, uh, there, in the RV, getting slaughtered. I, yeah. I, I, I love Blood Frenzy. I haven't seen it since I was a kid because oh, we used to rent it all the time. Yeah, And then, and then there's there's Iced, which is like the companion movie. Yeah. Everybody on say the, hi to Jack the, the Rickard. Yeah. Well, look who we have look here, we have here. Mister Rubber Burner. I was actually looking for the blow up assisting auto for him. Turn your volume up a little, Rick. Turn your volume up. What is this? A silent? Should have got here before the stream. This is what happened. <laughs> he's in. He's in his. He's in a submarine, guys. Leave him alone. Rick, man, it's go good to see you, man. Are you going to get fucking wasted tonight? Because I am like, <laughs> I'm like not drinking tonight. So bullshit, lie. All right, can you hear me now? <laughs> Turn up yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, I had the, I had my Bluetooth mic turned on instead of my actual mic. There you now you're good. Now you're good. Not sure. Not too, What's, not up, too fun. What's up, dude? What's up? with you guys? Dude, Turn up the mayhem. So, I was yeah, guys, I was hesitating stupid. coming on because, well, you See, okay? You guys, you guys know your shit, right? Of course. But yeah. I'm I'm like Collector Scum Junior compared to you guys when it comes to this. That's all right. We just. We All just want you stuff. around. We need somebody to look pretty here. Uh, I pulled some things. I pulled some things, but you guys know your shit. All right, we'll get you. We'll come back around to you because I was going to Dennis there. And uh, like I said, we just needed somebody to look pretty here because Phil sure as fuck ain't it. It all depends on your <laughs> despite, planet, despite him telling us over and over and over that he is beautiful. <laughs> just saying. Just imagine <laughs> him with hair. He's still pretty. He's still okay. pretty. That's me right there. Oh, Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> wild rides. Yeah, wild rides. Ride. Ride roller coasters through the whole movie. Never, never saw that. I love cool. it. That's what he does. <laughs> That's what he does. All right. Matt Dylan. Matt Dylan does like, not age. With, He's looked the same for like forty price, years. I'm showing <laughs> weird shit tonight, and this is Do one it. that you guys again need to see: is Blood Harvest with Tiny. Uh, Tim. I love oh, that sorry, cover. Yeah. Tiny Tim. Tiny uh, I didn't know he was an actor. So uncomfortable. Wait, are you serious? Tiny Tim's in that? Yeah, he's the killer. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, dude. It's creepy. This is such a weird fucking uncomfortable movie. Um, <laughs> he just like gets... Uh, he So he dresses like a clown, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but I think he has his wife in this movie, too, and she gets naked, which is really uncomfortable scene, too. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, everything about this movie is really like super, like slightly off. Like people, it almost seems like people were forced to be in this movie. Like they were like, "Hey, you didn't pay your mortgage this month. You have to be in blood." <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome if your bank did that? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Blood harvest. It just says Tiny Tim. Like there's no like there's no there's no other thing on there. It's like just Tiny Tim. Like there's yeah. no and there's there's some good gore in this movie too. Lots of slow throat, um and uh uncomfortable nudity, uncomfortable sex scenes. It's it's really uh it's a it's a hard hard watch. Not for me, but maybe for you. <laughs> it's a cool I like the cover. Well, if, if Tiny Tim is the nudity, that's a pretty hard watch. Yeah, it's a hard it's a hard watch for Tiny Tim posers. He has a he has a powerful pubic mane. But uh, yeah, that's that's a good one. I can picture All right. that. Philip, sir. Well, like I said, I do have a lot of DVDs that I brought out tonight. Uh, but this one, I really think I really want to show you. For one thing, I want to show you this. The Woman Hunt. Ooh. 
Which, this is amazing. I love how back in the day they used to have these things, and you get like the uh, the ads for the newspapers and stuff, so you could like for, you know get the prints. This is when cinema was cinema. I do have the original one sheet for this because I'm a big fan of this, but this is hilarious. We have this hung up in our living room. Women are made for men to hunt. Set your sights on the tastiest game oh, of all. Jesus. Is that a Severin <laughs> film or what is that? Oh no 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 dude. This is this this is New World. This is Roger Corman, but this is if this was playing in any theater, this is the Anko. Yeah. This is a a real it's almost a roughy. And speaking of that, guys, why is there an echo here? This is Yeah, I am getting a pretty bad echo. Let me try something here. Hold on, Rick. Mute yourself for one minute, Rick. You might have gone too loud. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, it looks like Rick's kind of echoing a little bit. Pull yourself down just a wee tad there. Anybody else hearing an echo at all right now? Hold. Let me speak for a second. Second, 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 second. No, <laughs> Who has a truck driving by? Yeah, yeah, listen, Dennis, if that happens again, I'm fucking walking. I prom- You paid me $200 to be here tonight. I am hey, not. Hey. Oh, sorry. Oh, did, yeah. Did you guys I, not read I, Phil's writer? I mean, come on. Yeah, I've got a very specific needs. Yeah. I want nothing but brown hot mustard for my nuggets. All right, Rick, Rick, Rick turn yourself back on. Yeah. You're, you're the brown M&M's M- 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 guy. He is that guy. Getting a little bit of a little bit. Hello, hello. Hmm. No. Is we'll there anything something. there? I feel that we've like wrongfully accused Rick. He's like the hello, thief. hello. Yeah, it is Rick because I muted him on my side. But um, <sighs> Rick, just a wee bit, just a wee bit. Why are there so many M M&M and flavors now? What's that? Why is there so many M M&M and M flavors now? Oh, I know. There's like a thousand. It's bullshit. M M&M, and M like the Slim Shady or? <laughs> no, like candy. Guys, while you guys are figuring this out, I don't mind the echo of my own voice. I kind of like it. It's kind of cool. But besides the woman hunt and like the movies, because uh, I Rick, have that. Rick, it's definitely you. I don't know if. Yeah, I ex- just lowered the volume. Is, is it still happening? A little bit. Are you on an external or inter- internal mic? My same old sure mic I always use. You don't have a phone uh, sitting there, do you? A phone sitting there? I got my phone here. Why? So I have something to do with it? Uh, maybe move the phone away for it. I noticed that. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, it's better. Good. Sometimes you get, if you have a phone near it that's on, you get a weird uh, yeah. pickup on it. Yeah, it's better. All this right. is why I said I don't want to work with Rick. <laughs> Rick? <laughs> this is it. You're, it was in your contract. Right. I'm already notorious. <laughs> All right, so go ahead. What else you got? Uh, besides, like, I love that era. We were talking about, like, horror pornos pornos and stuff like that. that. Uh, These are two books that I really recommend. Besides The Woman Hunt, uh, Tales from Times Square, uh, which is a fantastic book, and I hope you guys have this. It's it's just absolutely amazing. And if you really want to experience 42nd Street, each theater right here, Sleazoid Express, he goes through every theater. Like So if you went to the Anko, the Liberty, you know what I mean? Like the, the, The Twin... Each one he documents, you know, what movies they showed. And, you know, like the Rialto was known for its slashers. Right? I mean, when your chapter is called Chopping Them Up at the Rialto. And the Real, uh, the Anko was my favorite, like, absolutely. But I think that this is a real book that I think if you are a fan of exploitation cinema and stuff like that, this is a book that I really recommend that you That's get. A great, That's a good one. No Pretty matter. Sure yeah, it is. Yeah. Pretty sure I walked by some of them in 1984. I, I, yeah, well, for sure. You know what I mean? But like, it talks about like there's a whole section at like a theater that had kung fu films and whatnot. But like, yeah, yeah, the Anko in in my bedroom over our bed, we have a giant blown up photo of the Anko to inspire my my wife and I our love making sessions. I I just have a giant poster of Hugo uh, Stiglitz. To be a fly on the wall. <laughs> to be a fly. On, but yeah, I really recommend that. So yeah, the woman hunt, which we have here somewhere. I'm almost to the point where I just, I, 
I've got so much trash CDs here. But yeah, I I, I really recommend this because this is like the, the most dangerous game remake. They they made this movie about seventy five times. You know what I mean? But the fact that it in the it's the woman hunt. It's just it's just hilarious. <laughs> It nice. sounds like the most misogynist thing ever. Like, yeah, but back in that. the 70s, it wasn't misogynist. That was just life. No, that's what's hilarious. It's like yeah, you take true. the context <laughs> right. of the time period. Yeah, it would never, it would never fly now, but that, that's for sure. No. Now, I feel that yeah. we're actually heading to the point where it might fly again because people are sick and tired of being told they can't say shit and can't do shit. I right. feel it's going to come back with a vengeance. It's oh, no. right around the corner. Well, probably we'll in yeah, in 2024 in our country, it scarily might go there. So we'll see. It sure is heading that way sometimes. But uh, Rick, what you got, man? You got something you want to share with the boys? Yeah, I'll put up something real quick. Uh, Lon Chaney, one of his last movies, Indestructible Man. Oh, my goodness. Uh, wow. Yeah, it looks like the Hulk, right? <laughs> so this thing, so I'm reading the back, right? It basically just explains the whole movie. And I start to realize... That was this was his generation when you could watch a three minute trailer and, and just basically just know the whole plot before you even see the movie. Yes, the movie. And yeah. people still they went used to go to see do it. that. Yeah. Yeah. You could pick up in the whole synopsis of the whole fucking film. It's on yeah. his <laughs> Including here. It's like, where the hell's the incentive to just go? But so, yeah. where like today, they don't tell you shit. It's just like, it's just a bunch of stuff that happens, but doesn't really tell you anything. Yeah, they tell you the um, end of this... the movie on the back of those sometimes. They... Yeah, <laughs> that was for distributors. That was for distributors back then, definitely. Oh, okay. So, uh, this this kind of reminds me of um, it's, it's called the Indestructible Man, and it's kind of like um, it, it reminds me of that Chuck Norris flick where he had to fight that invincible <laughs> dude. What the oh, hell was that uh, movie again? Fuck, dude. Um, shit. Silent it's Rage. The... You mean like yeah. that? Thank that, you. Silent That's Rage. Shit. I saw that. I was too young for that one. It was and like that a was mix like, between man, this... fucking Halloween and act, an action movie. Yeah. Let's have Chuck Norris kick, like... kick the shape. That was the idea. <laughs> that was Chuck Norris's horror movie. That was like that was like his horror movie, right? Like... <laughs> I don't. I don't think um... he did another movie. How many actual horror movies? He, yeah, yeah, he did another movie where he fights the devil. He's a cop. Oh, Hellbound. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A, it's amazing. Did it's he win? Good. He won, of course, right? I think so. But Chuck like, Norris has never lost anything in his life. You know that. The, the opening yeah. scene, he goes... No, yeah. dude, he lost his wife in 85. She died of cancer. That's well, what you think. What do they say? He's, like, he's, he's the guy that makes Legos cry when he steps on it, right? <laughs> so, like, so, like, this kind of has a similar kind of deal going on as far as like that whole indestructible man. And, God, what year know, was that, Rick? Like, uh, speaking of Spider Baby, man, that, that photo right there is taken from Spider Baby. I was gonna say it sure looks like was it. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Ron Chaney was in Spider Baby. Yeah, he was the main, oh, okay. uh, the main dude. Yeah, it oh, was that's right. A, yeah, the the younger guy. That's a yeah, weird yeah. fucking movie. A very strange movie, it's, man. It's weird. Love yeah. That movie. Yeah, it's yeah. cool, but it's just strange. Got Sid Haig and Lon Chaney together. Speak, then I guess. Speaking that's of right, like, speaking of a misogynist, like you look at that girl back there, right? Like that was like the standard of beauty back in the day. It's like today she'd be considered thick. You know, yeah. It's, oh, that it's was the. Like, uh, what's up, Glenn? Yeah, that was very much the. Um, those, uh, you know, Amicus movies. That that kind of girl. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I will. Like uh, girls. I'll wrap up the uh, the Vincent Price portion of tonight's show on my part, and uh, I think uh, Mario mentioned this, but. Uh, Vincent Price, House of Wax, 3D, but I don't have a 3D player, um, which is kind of weird. And uh, can you still I, play the movie? Seen this? Can you still play it, or does it just not play at all? No, it the... plays. It just looks like a normal movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, 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 if you had the 3D glasses, it would, would I guess it would work, but I, they don't even, they don't even come with them. But you have to have the 3D player to get the real. You oh. kind of. You kind of notice there's sections of the film that little bits of uh, things that look blurry. Oh, That's because yeah. they're actually like sticking out, but you can't really actually see. You know what I mean? You don't see it in 3D. And I don't, oh. I don't think I realized it was in 3D until I grabbed it. I'm like, oh fuck, I don't have a 3D player. But um, but yeah, this is a good one, man. I mean, uh, really, really one of, you know, it's that very Victorian era sort of thing, and it's got that Victorian vibe to it. And I, yeah. I just love the 
Vincent Price, great fucking actor. Um, yeah, he's great. Anyone else not see this one? Do you do you know it or? I like the Paris Hilton oh, version yeah, better. I like Paris, that one. Uh, yeah, Paris Hilton version. Okay, it's good. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> she gets Unless, killed in that one, right? Oh, oh, yeah. oh I thought with was in one. She gets oh, so killed. Yeah, one. had no idea she was in one. I went, through, then, a uh, I went we, through a Hilton phase. We talked about set two. Here is set three. Oh shit! And as I mentioned, set one is was unattainable, un, unattainable for a lot of years. This one has Master of the World. Anyone see that with um, uh, fuck Charles Bronson in it? Chuck Bronson's in it. No shit. Which is kind of weird. Um, trying to see who else is in that. I want to do a GoFundMe so you can get the first one. I think we should do that. I think we should definitely do that. <laughs> Tower of London. Not bad. Diary of a Madman. I like that one. That's a good one. Um. Cry of the Banshee, that's a good one. Yeah. And then he does the evening of Edgar Allan Poe stories on here where he does the the recitations. Um kind of weaker one of the three. I think number one and number two are the are the strong ones, but still, man, if you're a Vincent Price fan, that's definitely the way to go to grab those. And yes, Phil, a GoFundMe. Uh Venmo, you can Venmo me cash, uh PayPal, whatever you want, you know. I'll, I think they're they were going for like two hundred dollars. They may be a lot cheaper now, that's, but I want that's original. horse feathers. We can get it for you, guys. Horse come feathers. on now, let's horse let's just, feathers. Yeah, we're we're going to get it for you. I mean, I can't imagine you not having that. You're a beautiful. I'll man. give up two cups of coffee for you. Oh, man. I'm, I'm beautiful now. Am I? So you're a beautiful man now. Earlier. You are a beautiful man now. Figured, uh, two cups of coffee at Starbucks. That that would be like eight bucks going your way. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. I yeah. If you don't, all right, Tom. What you got for uh, your next? Yes treat um well since you were talking about books um i also have some other i'll talk about two of them in terms of the sleazoid express this is one of my favorite biographies oh andy milligan oh, um dude. so uh this is the horror sex the, the, the title is the ghastly one the sex gore netherworld of filmmaker andy milligan uh, um so basically oh. he did like uh no budget uh horror and sex movies um he's mostly known for his horror movies and he was generally considered like worse than ed wood at least oh, no. at least in the <laughs> uh, in the 90s and then eventually he sort of uh his reputation improved i guess or he he got fans along the way um um but basically this is his entire story and there's a the whole uh he spent the whole like later half of the 60s and the early 70s around 42nd street and making movies for 42nd to play on 42nd street wow so there's there's tons of stuff in terms of uh the beginnings of you know the the sexy theaters and the grand houses and all that but it's a really a really amazing story and well written, and the, but there is there is a couple of really fucked up things in this book. I'm sure uh, that I won't describe. Yeah, but, uh, I, I, as a if you're interested interested in like the that 42nd Street scene and those types of uh, movies, this is definitely a book to check out. Jesus then, Christ, I'm so excited that you show that because I want that book. Uh, the reason why I'm horrified here right now is because Dennis and I are probably going to have to get a California King bed because <laughs> you're invited to the marriage as well. Uh, listen, Jesus. Andy Milligan, uh, Lem Amaro, all those guys, it's Rebecca Finley and all of them. I love that era, man. I love that era. This is a great, if, great book, even if you don't care about his movies. It's just yeah. that interesting uh, uh, of a story because the writer was was basically hanging out with Andy Milligan in his later years, um, so he knew him personally. So he has a lot of stories and things that no one else would ever yeah. know about. Well, they had a lot Sorry. of access to a lot of like period costumes. It was all, it, and they were all based out of uh, Long Island. If if I'm you know, yeah, and and Len Am go ahead. He's based basically. He he was based in. He's the gay filmmaker that was like did off 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 Broadway uh, uh, period plays, 
and then right. he sort of segued into horror movies and you can tell if you ever watch one of his movies that they're not like normal movies no stretch a lot of animal cruelty as well like you know there's yeah. uh, some really like with rats and shit but uh i mean you look at that era and uh on top of the where was it with who was it? was it R- uh, rebecca finley's husband or wasn't michael Am- yeah michael Fee, he was decapitated on top helicopter of the- yeah yeah, yeah. Um, like like Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> That's really how he exactly gets like Dawn of the Dead. That was the uh, Pan Am on top of the Pan Am building, and the blade came off and decapitated him. He killed people down below as well. I, I find that fascinating, but I do love that era. And a lot of those movies, uh, their movies are under the I think it's the Gorgon. Uh, I have I have the whole yeah, set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. But that has a lot of like animal cruelty in there as yep. well. Like, and that's always turned me off. But I'm very much obsessed with that. Those guys, the, the New York Grindhouse era. And, and then the other. This is probably my most read. Fuck book. yeah, dude! I love that book. Um, this is my second copy. I should have went and got. I don't know if I still have my first copy. It's like hilariously destroyed. Yeah, dude. But this is the book. If you come in my bathroom, this is sitting on top of the toilet and has. <laughs> I've had a copy on top of my toilet for at least. I read that 15, shit like ten times. Fifteen years, and I've read every. But this is basically, maybe from ninety three or ninety four. This was an attempt to have little capsule reviews for every horror movie on VHS. It that, is perfection. It that is was perfection. Ever, that was ever out, and you know, there's a few missing, but it's pretty noble attempt. And there's so many movies that I've you know just write about in here that eventually went and and found and then a fun fact the um the movie without warning the Mm -hmm. the sci-fi movie that predator supposedly ripped off or alien um yeah well uh i don't have proof in front of me but that's it seems like that um jack talents told me yeah that was a (laughs) ripple okay there you go so the jack talents etc Jack Palance. Um, he has a review of the VHS in this book. And then there was always the rumor that the, but it never actually came out on VHS in the U S no. um, but everyone always thought it did because there was a review of it in this book. And that's sort of, there was a sort of a legend behind that VHS. That's impossible to find. I, I have a PAL version of it. Yeah. I have like a, like a, a converted pal bootleg of it that i had you know a long time ago um so that's how i originally saw it so anyways yeah but this is also it, it, the guys are really good writer and, and and funny too oh it's such a good book i i'm so glad you brought that up man like it almost brought a tear to my eye when i saw it. i fucking love that book man yep looks like uh <clears throat> heavy metallurgy rick i had to mute you dude hang on the the slapback was getting too much Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, before the internet, people were on, the, on these, like, fruitless pursuits trying to find movies that were not even in our country. You know, it just, how would you know, right? Yeah. Like, all the shit that was banned. I mean, we're, we're a bunch of softies here. Like, all that shit was coming out of Italy and everywhere else, and it's like, like we were probably more censored than anybody. Which, oh, you know, big time, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff overseas. Oh, yeah. Like, You'd have to like, be really in the wiser. City. I would think, you know what I mean? Yeah. You'd have to be really attuned to what was going on and know about some of that stuff. But, um, uh, Rick, in between not talking, when you want to talk, just unmute yourself. But I think you're going to have to mute a little bit because there is something going on there. I don't, unless you want to go out and try and come back in again. I'm going to lower the volume a little. See, Do you hear a difference? Yeah. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Yep. Seems better. Yeah, that seems better, actually. Might be picking up something there on your your desktop there. Um, where was I at? Who uh, Tom went? So Eli. Okay, we'll, we'll stick with the uh, stick with the monster theme. My favorite monster of all time. I know it's not a horror movie, but it's pretty scary when you're a little kid. The Rancor monster from Return of the Jedi. What? The- uh, I think is the coolest monster ever made, in my opinion. Um, I've had this for a long time, obviously. And uh, this was, we were talking about like what got us into horror and stuff. This this guy was actually a big, uh, 
uh, change for me when I saw Return of the Jedi when I was uh, like four or five years old. That was like an instant, even though I didn't really get into horror for a long time. That this this is what led me to like Godzilla and King Kong and stuff. And um, this guy goes with me everywhere I go. I'm, like I I never have him in a box or anything. Like he's always out somewhere and like just uh yeah, just the monster to end all monsters in my opinion. Even though he gets killed in like One of those thirty seconds. Monsters, it, it's not considered a monster like like a movie. I guess or what you call it, uh, series, but yeah. there are a lot of monsters in it, man. Like that was true the thing. And, uh, yeah, and the effects were pretty fucking good for what uh, nineteen. Uh, when did Jedi come out? Eighty one. 83, 83, yeah. yeah. 83, it, it, there was yeah. something extraordinarily cruel about the Rancor as well. I know, I know. Like, he was left to starve down there, and then when he ate Ula, and then, you know, I mean, just the scene with the Gamorrean guard where the, the little yeah. hand, like, that is <laughs> so, like, that is so Ray Harryhausen. Yeah. Right. Who 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 did the effects? Uh, Phil for... Tippett. Oh, yeah. it was Tippett. Yeah. That's right. Mm. That's right. You know, I, I love how the little the guy comes out crying after. Uh, he oh, I know. I, I love how I have his body type now. <laughs> oh I wish a high school was somebody who looked like a Gamorrean guard. Oh, shit. Hey, Eric, what are you Look who's saying, here, Mr. Father? B. Father? He kind of just snuck in there. He did. Yeah, I was like, whose voice was that? He oh. sneaked. He sneaked. I Good sneaked. to see you, man. Um, I think I'm going to go with as large a format with as many people because I'll just blow you up when you're when it's your turn. So um, Eli just went. So where are we at, Dennis? Oh. I don't even know what you're doing right now. So I'm just kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm here waiting. I didn't know where it's Oh, was. I'm sorry. Um, hold on. That are kind of. Hold on one sec, Dennis. Hold on. So we kind of went around the horn with everybody that was new and kind of went through our list of questions and whatnot and things like that and so now we're just showing whatever we feel like showing no topic you can just eli's showing i'm still getting fucking feedback god damn it um hello hello who cares let's just embrace it i kind of like it i'm i'm into it now it drives me out of my fucking mind anyway um so we're just showing things that we want to show whether it's you right. know whatever man slasher horror I figured I'd pop on for like an hour or so, and, and yeah, know, yeah. I just, I just kind of grab some random shit off the show. That's shelves. cool. That's cool. Are, are you done unpacking everything, Eric? Oh, dude! I, one I thing I don't hesitate in doing is unpacking. So, like, if I'm not fully unpacked within three days of moving, then something's wrong. I, are you feeling? Well, I figured baby? for the amount of stuff you have, it's pretty fast. <laughs> Yeah, How you it, feeling, I, mean, darling? I, mean, I, I didn't. I didn't sleep for like you know thirty hours or something like that after moving, but yeah, I remember that when we moved in here, it was crazy like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your boyfriend wants to know how you're doing there, high def. I'm doing. I'm doing all right, man. You know. Good. We haven't talked in a while. I haven't released a video in a while either, so I'm like. Well, hey, you know, I I didn't for a long time, and then I've done like six since I moved into this. Yeah, he's been a machine. All right, let me hit Dennis up, and we'll get to you in a minute here, Eric. We're, we're rounding that horn, so. Sick. Dennis, what you got? I just wanted to show a couple of cool books. Gore score and full cheese. Yes, team. nice. That is uh, fucking great, man. Yeah, man. This, I love the gore score, man, because it has, like, it has reviews of the movie, obviously, Balin. There's some fucking from beyond right there. Uh, oh, but, yeah. And they have, like, reviews, but then they have the gore score. Which gives you, if it's a dog, you're going to get a dog, or you're going to get a, a skull. But then if you get gore, like Hell Knight, you get two two skulls and a four for gore. So, always, this is, and, you, and there's a Fulci cover too. I mean, That's this is the most great. horrific Fulci scene where she's vomiting those guts. Ah. Oh, yeah. I wanted to show those, but I wanted to talk about another Japanese movie. Um, this is Battlefield Baseball. Yes. That movie <laughs> rules. Dude, no, that movie is fucking this, amazing. This comes with a little fucking figure, too. No, it's yeah, Japanese. That movie, it's that going movie, to be weird. That, that, uh, that whole uh, sushi typhoon fa uh, phenomenon out of Japan is fucking awesome. Tokyo yeah, Gore Police. I mean, is it a ball, it's a ball team? Baseball team? Uh, Kind of, yeah. It's a high school baseball team, but God. they have to play... Like kind of ghouls, and they can oh. kill you when they're playing against you in the tournament. 
Uh, and it's super fucking bizarre and just a fucking mind fuck of a movie. Um, you, they, there's a scene too where a guy like where the main like hero runs at a guy that has a bat as a ball, and he has to like strike out against him, and then people's like. Uh, get chainsawed and all sorts of stuff in this movie. It's a fucking weird, fucking bizarre movie. And at the best part of this whole fucking movie is the end of the movie. Spoiler alert: is there's a, a drunk dude that watches every game, and at the end of the movie he's dead, and it's like he died of alcoholism. And then they show his dog, and he's like, he died smiling. Can I die like this? <laughs> What's the name of the flick again? Battlefield Baseball. Dude, Battlefield so, Baseball. So wow. in that in that vein, Dennis, have you seen fucking Vampire Girl versus Frankenstein Girl? <laughs> I don't think so. This movie's insane. It's it's absolutely bonkers, and it's like the same. It's the same sort of style as, as Battlefield, Battlefield Baseball. And then you've got Dead Ball, which is almost. Uh, the same plot as Battlefield Baseball. What year is that? Eric? That's the same. That's the same font as Evil Dead. It's like the same exact letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is like these are all like early two thousands. Like this. Well, this one's two thousand eleven, right here. Um, and they're just like they're stupid, but they're like like really like just insanely gory. You've got uh, Psycho Gothic Lolita. Is another another one in that in that vein? Wow! These Japanese movies are bonkers. It's like Tokyo Gore Police, or all, like all Machine Japanese. Girl, yep. or a Meatball Machine. Meatball Machine. Sweet. Okay. Um. Fuck. I, oh, Phil. I think you're up, right? Yeah. I got a couple of movies that I really want to bring up, but uh, I have to get off soon because I'm camping out in the yard with the kids and. Uh, so, Wait, what? You can't what? I'm camping out in the yard with the kids, so I have to go out soon. I can't leave them out there too long because there's bears and shit. <laughs> wolves? Are there wolves? Oh, there's oh, there's wolves, but they have a 22. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, I am going to go a two for Tuesday because if I was going to do a double feature, this is probably where I would go. Uh, Psychomania, also known as... Uh, what it's also called. Oh, Jesus Christ, my brain's gotten numb. You guys know this film, right? Psychomania? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, great one. I, I, I love this film, and the soundtrack and the atmosphere on this is just fantastic. They're the, what is this also called? Death Wheelers. Death Wheelers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the VHS copy that I have because it's corrupted, and the voices sound like they're very like stereo, but like off stereo. So I love Psychomania, and I want everyone in the world to watch that, but that's not my choice. I'm cheating here. Anybody anybody order any Wings Hauser? <laughs> oh, dude, that movie, that, movie is, that movie is so fucked up, dude. I just watched that like two weeks ago or something like that. I found it Isn't Vice Squad one of those masterpieces? I... I love this movie so much, and I'm a huge Wings Hauser fan. But Wings Stephen Hauser is absolutely off the chain. In that yeah, movie. he yeah, is just... off the chain in this film as well. I feel Season Hubley really earned her paycheck on this film. Oh, yeah. uh, but just so good. And, like, I've seen a lot of these, like, hookers with bad pimps and shit, like street walking and stuff like that. But this one is just fantastic. And Dude. it's it's he's filthy he's filthy dude. Like, he's filthy just... and i feel that ramrod uh ramrod. yeah ramrod who wings hauser plays the fucking truck oh my god yeah yeah i feel that that's actually wings hauser <laughs> i don't feel he was acting <laughs> so good anyways those are my choices that's uh that's a good one ah, some good classic stuff anchor base shit right there yes sir um Rick, I got you muted. I'll bring you off. Wing sings that that song, the slime, that theme song, or whatever that is. Yeah, it's up there with the, uh, Vice Squad. Yeah. How many it, how many movies where Wings Hauser plays a good guy? Can you name? Uh, I, I know Mutant. 
he is uh, in Mutant. He is like kind of a good guy, and I know it was on Guiding Light. Yeah, I feel that he was a good guy on that. But it was, there I am on my soap opera knowledge. Nightmare at Noon with I feel Brian like James. you guys talk about Wings Hauser, but this is the movie that Wings Hauser goes fucking. <laughs> I don't own that film. Wow. Uh, you need to own this. This is the fucking <laughs> shit right here. The the Wings company Hauser. that made this. Well, hold on. But, what the hell is it called? Oh, Getaway. No, let's Getting let's it. not even. Let's, Okay, Speaking of burying the lead, that is the same company that released Pigs or Daddy's Deadly Darling. This is, yeah, I can tell. Uh, Wings Hauser just drinks Budweiser through the whole movie, like literally. <laughs> like you see him on the film drinking Budweiser and and then talking to the hero saying, "You slept with my fucking wife, did you?" And he's like, "I didn't, man, I didn't." He's like, you fucking piece of shit. And he tries to fight him, and then, like, they start drinking again. It's this movie, you gotta. Uh, it's also called, like, Champagne and Bullets or something like that. Do you feel that Wings Hauser had a handler on every set? It was just, like, because Dude. he started to believe uh, I'm it. I'm sure. Champagne, Champagne and Bullets just got released by uh, Vinegar Syndrome. That movie's, yep. that movie's terrible. Oh, my God. That's, but it's that's so the movie. Sick. It's so good. Like, the main actor in that's, like,. Yeah, like this the is, that's book. the same movie as that. It's yeah. just this was the original title. Yeah, the uh, the main guy in that, uh, he's like the fucking dude from the room. Like he's just terrible. He's so oh, bad. I just don't want any of our younger viewers out here tonight to like not want to watch any Wings Hauser films because that oh, is he, he was he he was really good in uh, he was in that movie with um uh, what's her face from uh, the Howling the Howling was it uh, two or three um, Triple Danning. Yeah, yeah, the uh, L.A. Bounty. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know what? I think I have that, and I don't think I've ever watched it. Oh, it's good. It's good. Sybil, Sybil Danning's wearing, like, uh, the mom from uh, Growing Pain style jeans. Oh, in the yeah. Movie. She's not known for mom jeans. I'll Joanna Kern's jeans. Joanna Kern's jeans. Yeah, that's... All right, we're going we're gonna to get Rick up here. i got to unmute him, I believe. He's got some echo slap back uh. on. I think for this one, I'm going to bring up a little bit of current events. Uh, one is this sort of renewed fear for bears. It's like, oh, um, cocaine bear. you know, that, that, bear. well, that cocaine bear came out, right? So, you know, and, and that was like a thing for a while. And then I, I went to the store and like, I saw Grizzly Adams in the horror section, <laughs> which is really weird. And I'm thinking, so I don't know if that was an accident or this is just, you know, and like lately I'll hop on my YouTube feeds or whatever. And it's just like, I think people like Joel Rogan are like single handedly, because all he talks about is fucking bears, just all this shit and all these facts, all these, you know, which is kind of messed up. Who's Joel Rogan? We had that Winnie the Pooh. He's some guy who does some podcast or something. (laughs) And he just talks about bears, you know. Winnie the Pooh, there was a horror movie. And I think they they talked about doing another one. Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah. Wait, there's a Winnie the Pooh horror movie? Fucking dumb. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Protect your copyright, man. <laughs> yeah. <Look it> up. <laughs> uh, and, and then there's this. There's renewed Blood interest in this movie because because of uh, th- that accident. I just watched that a couple weeks ago. That's a good movie. That's yeah, great. So uh, this is the full screen edition. Just so you know, you, you widescreen lovers out there. <laughs> uh, it is fuck you, widescreen guys. Bastard. <laughs> but, uh, you know, looking for a missing sub. Might have been operated by a game controller. For all have you know. ever seen the widescreen version uh, of Spermula? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Not don't. related. Yeah. I just watched Orca the Killer Whale. That's kind of cool. Ooh. Orca fucking rules. Is oh, Bo Derek in that? The, yeah, Bo Derek. I think she is, yeah. There was there was that Megalodon, right? Like that's like another one that you know people are Megalodon two comes out next month. I'm hella stoked. Can't yeah. Wait. Does it? What's the um? This is I gonna like, be a bad question to ask because I can't fucking think I of like the name cool of it right Jaws, now. Actually. What's what's oh, the name cool of the Jaws movie that great. Peter Weller's in with the uh, the drilling down? Leviathan. The Leviathan, dude. That Leviathan is amazing. Yeah. Can you believe, man? I'm 58, almost 58 years old. I just watched that like three months, two months ago for the first time. Didn't, didn't Motherfucker's got to get his Ernie uh, Hudson on. 
Uh, Did Screaming I Mad mean, George do the effects for Leviathan, or was that, uh, was that no Robo Team? Way. Man, I, it was a great, great flick until the final, like, two minutes. And I'm like, there's Boteen. Really? Seriously? But it was fucking killer. I'd never seen that movie, crazily enough. Ja- the Abyss seen- is Jacqueline Bissett, right? Right. No, that's... Uh, uh, or James Andy, Cameron. No, uh, James Cameron, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With, um, Cameron, yeah. Metal, no, not Metal and Stowe. Fucking... Uh, yeah, who was in that? Rick, who was in that? Ed, Ed Harris. Ed Harris, Michael Bean. Ed Harris. Bean. Ed Harris. In, in, in The Abyss, or in which one? The Abyss. One. Uh, what's your face yeah, from Scarface? Um, from Scarface. Oh, yeah, Ed Harris. Ma- Mastronano, how do you Ma- say Ma- it? Mary, Mary, Mary Elizabeth, 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 Elizabeth,
you guys will probably remember better than me. But uh, did I show this to William Castle? Uh, no. No, that's thing, cool, man. Thing I don't recollect. What's that? I don't recall. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I did. Um, I really like Indicator Powerhouse. They just do really, really good sets. And um, this one is the first. The first one. I think there's two William Castle sets. Um, William Castle, if you don't know, um, 50s alter director, you know, dude. Yeah. And this has 13 ghosts. Um, the Tingler with, again, Mr. Vincent Price in it. Uh, the Tingler yeah. is one of the fakest looking <laughs> creepy monster things ever. Uh, but it's it's kind of comical. Homicidal and Mr. Sardonicus. And they're all really good movies and really good, uh, really fantastic uh, packaging, man. I mean, just there's the Tingler, but individual. But, like, the books that come with them are, are you know, they're literally like small novels, man. I mean. Yeah, you know, Indicator. Indicator's who put out that Two Orphan Vampire set I just showed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that them? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I haven't kept up yeah. lately because I'm not in the buying mode. So I don't, I, I, I try not to tempt myself by looking at stuff, but. A lot of good uh, write-ups on all the films in here. And I don't know, is anybody familiar with most? I know you, you probably are, Eric, and maybe Phil and um, Dennis. But everybody aware of of who uh, William Castle was? Oh, yeah. A lot of gimmicks. A lot, a lot of, of gimmicks. gimmicks. Yeah, like in the Tingler. smell o vision <laughs> Yeah, exactly. In the Tingler, he put, like, these little buzzer things under the seats so that when you sat on them, it would buzz at a certain point in time and... Scared the living shit out of young girls and young dudes too, and homicidal. I believe somebody runs out with like a fake knife and chases somebody around in the theater and freaks them out. I don't remember what the gimmick for Thirteen Ghosts was, but it's uh, oh, it was three D, I believe, and the it ghost three D, yeah, yeah, three D. They, like, they did like they did like projections or something. Yeah, like that. Was yeah. it was it was it was ghost vision. So you had a ghost viewer, right? And then if you. So the ghosts were invisible unless you had the ghost viewer up, and you viewer. could actually see them. Yeah. They actually had a ghost come out into the audience as well. Right. Uh, the last one I, I remember to follow in Castle's uh, footsteps was John Waters with smell o vision and all that. <laughs> I, I have my polyester oh. smell, smell o vision card somewhere. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's and then awesome. along that line, I know I showed this one, but it's like literally one of my favorite fucking horror movies from the 50s. And this is another indicator, and it's like one of my prized possessions. And it would be the Night of the Demon. Oh, oh nice. I fucking Very love nice. this film, man. It's so Didn't cool. Uh, and, you know, everyone says the monster looks fake and everything. It does, but uh, I think it's fucking awesome. And Dana Andrews is great in it. Niall McGuinness, ah, oh, he is just wicked in this film. Uh, and I think it's a really good story. I think it's it's a little at the end. It's kind of like oh, you know, you kind of like left a little bit like oh that's it. But it's up until that moment, it's so fucking good. And even the end of it's really really good. And and it comes with fucking killer swag, uh, which I don't know if I would ever frame this, but it certainly would be worth framing. Um, that's Heck. awesome. Fucking killer, man. Look at that. Double sided. Um, and then you got the really, really like thick, nice fucking book. Um, yeah, man, just two disc. Just, uh, just love this film. And I'll probably, if, you know, I, I do fear this might be the last one we do of these, but if it isn't, I'll show it in the next one just because I want to. We're going to do another seven. Fuck you. All right, we'll do another seven if you say so. But there, there's a couple indicator powerhouses, which are, you know, one of my favorite. Uh, you know what? Just to move things along a little quicker, let me – I do think I showed this one too. You know this one, uh, Eric? Is that the collection? You guys the probably collector? know this. The collector? Yeah, the collector with uh, Terrence, Terrence Stamp? No. Yeah. Anthony – yeah, Terrence Stamp, right? Uh, Terrence Stamp and Samantha Eggers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very much a um, – I think we talked about this last time because I did show it, I'm pretty sure. Very much the uh, kind of the template for uh, Leonard Lake and Charles Ng and their uh, fucking horrific crime 
free. It's kind of based a little bit. Uh, the butterfly effect was something that uh, Leonard Lake wrote a, a story about abducting women and, you know, doing horrible things to them. That's not, it doesn't get into that kind of nastiness, but it's still an abduction story that's really creepy at times. And it's really, really, really well done. Another indicator powerhouse, really fantastic. So, have you seen the have you seen the remake of that? I have not. It's it's like not even remotely related to the. Not original. even remotely it's, good. It's, compared you mean to the that. collector? Well, it, no, I I still kind of like it. Like it's 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 lame, but it's pretty it's fun. Good. Like, it's you a mean there's a lot of R in it. There's a there's a shit ton of gore in it. You, you mean know? the yeah, collector in the collection? That that yeah yeah. I loved it. I yeah loved it. Yeah, yeah. slasher I heaven. Check it out. It's stupid, but it's it's fun. It's a fun. Yeah. It's, it's a fun. Yeah, thing. yeah. No, I think that's cool, man. Yeah, there's a lot of variations on that movie. There's a, there's a one that Robert Altman did that's a sex reverse. So it's Sandy Dennis is the the person doing the collecting. Abductor. The abductor. It's a woman doing it instead. Oh, so really? Like a lot. Yeah, it's a that cold day Wait, in the what? park. What Altman? Oh yeah, it? I've heard that. It's uh, the Robert Altman movie that cold day in the park is like. Huh. Is is like the collector, but sex reverse. It's the woman doing the abducting. So there's there's, there's a lot of mo- there's a lot of movies that basically. I've heard it. I just premise. haven't seen it. Yeah, that's it's pretty it's pretty obscure, I think. <clears throat> and then I just wanted to show, because you brought up Night of the Demon. This is the director yeah. Jacques Tourneur, and this is oh, a yeah. biography, really really good biography that I really dug. And he's sort of an underrated director because he did some of the Val Luton movies because he did what. Did he do Cat People or the second one? Shit, I can't remember which Cat People Two, the Pumpening. Yeah. Did he do <laughs> Cat People Two? Yeah, he did Cat People. I walked. I walked with the zombie, um, the Leopard Man, and some other. Ooh, the Leopard Man, yeah. Uh, some other really good uh, horror movies besides Night of the Demon. Yeah. All right, uh, Mario. Mario mentioned this. I had it pulled. Seven Seal, Max von Sydow, um, Ingmar awesome. Bergman. Fucking amazing, amazing, amazing film. I don't really call it a horror though. I mean, you know, the game between the, the, the chess game between death and the protagonist is very, very cool. I, it's more esoteric than that, but yeah, killer film. The I think so it's a. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Tom, go ahead. Uh, you must the sc- have yeah, the scariest movie that Ingmar Bergman ever directed was Hour of the Wolf. Never uh, saw with Max, Max von Sydow. He's like a painter that's going insane and is having all these visions. That, to me, is like the one movie of his that I think is really scary. So It's called Hour of the Wolf. Hour of the Wolf yeah. is really good. I gotta check don't that know out. that one. I got to see that then. Yeah, um, uh, Eli, where you at? Oh, there you are. There. Really great. Um, since uh, Eric brought up Takashi Nike, uh, I actually I've seen a lot of his stuff. I don't know if anyone's seen all of his movies, but this is uh, this is one of his more known movies that I've never seen. But it was on my want list for a while, so finally tracked it. This actually just came in the mail today. Uh, one missed call. I've been wanting to see this for like ten years at least. Um. I know it's dumb. I'm showing shit that I, I haven't seen, but uh, I just I was you're gonna, excited. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna want your time back after you watch that. Just just. Oh, you don't like it? It's not what. Well, okay. It's not I've always heard good bad, things but, about it. Yeah. Oh it's, shit. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. I've always heard that this is like one of his better movies, so I was like, oh, I better get that. But I guess it's, it depends on who you ask or who you. Um, I mean, I it's, wanted my time back after I saw Ichi the Killer. <laughs> I. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of liked it, but I mean, you know, that's you got to um, kind of hate. It's better. A it's bit. better than the MPD Psycho uh, series that he did, which is just like, not. I guess, yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess when you direct like 300 movies, some of them have to suck. Probably a lot of them do, but. It's no um, one crazy summer, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no. <laughs> nothing is, Phil. Nothing is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll watch it tonight. With the with the honeymoon suite, uh, yeah. it's been yeah. Eli. It, it has Represent. been a minute since I've watched that one, so. Um, but you hated it. I didn't hate it. I just you know it it didn't it didn't really it didn't resonate like. Uh, my favorite Mickey movie is uh, Deadly Outlaw Rekka. That's 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 there you go. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen that. 
Oh, I did. I did have a phase where I tried to watch every Takashi Miike movie that I could find, and I gave up at some point. <laughs> it's just too many. It's it's impossible. Yeah. It's I'm like working on Frank, it. It's like the Frank Zappa discography. Yeah. It's like just yeah. give up, man. Like <laughs> watching watching every Takashi Takashi Miike movie would be like trying to collect every Nun Slaughter or Unholy Grave. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. 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 Where, where like no one person has the whole nun slaughter discography. I, I need I need every agathically split. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Eli, yeah, that in or you have something else? That that's How do it you for think now. the nun slaughter guys have all the nun slaughters. Oh, they totally <laughs> yeah. don't. Yeah, I was gonna say they don't. I actually I, think I may I, have pretty much all the nun slaughters because Jim personally sent me an entire collection. Oh shit! Really? Oh yeah, like not to name drop, but <laughs> not I am name a big drop. friend with Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you all the well, splits sure. and stuff before he left this world? In fact, Chromium, the very first episode, if you watch it, is dedicated to Jim. I thought maybe you got lucky and Cro- uh, J Dog sent you their entire discography. <laughs> but that crowd got no candy for me, man. They don't like me at all. No, no, Jim is Jim is Jim was my man. And he used to come with his red pants, and we went to Razor gigs together in Canada. That's Jim, awesome. I, I, oh, yeah, listen, dude, I I don't want to name drop, but we've had some times. <laughs> <laughs> too late. It is too late. Okay, okay. Uh, where are we at here? We're at Dennis, I think, right? Sweet yeah. Denis. Come on, Denis, what do you have for me? Impress me. <laughs> Denis. Denis. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys still boyfriends well we're working on it i'm tr- he's <laughs> fucking resi- he's resi- you know he, he's resisting my terms but they broke up a couple times this episode but they keep <laughs> okay. getting back together <laughs> oh, yeah but bill keeps inviting other people into their bed oh we got dennis, about what five dudes now dennis you're uh you're muted i got you oh i can't you have to do it he did it himself yeah do it yourself do it yourself. <laughs> That's what my wife says all the time. All right. Um, it's fair. Uh, we're going to do some scary shit. Some, like, actual yeah. real horror movies. Um, this one, The Sentinel. Oh, man. Yeah, right on, man. Man, this movie. Uh, shit, especially the ending. Where they, uh, so someone has to keep the gates of hell from... Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, He sits at the window and then... Oh. And then there's a lot of stuff with someone that has to take over the watcher for the gates of hell. And and, uh, she has all these visions and stuff. But at the end of the movie, all these, like, actual real freaks come into the room. And, man, this is a... Yeah, it's a really slow burner, but it's really uh i remember seeing a trailer for that it was like the longest trailer i've ever seen shit was like five seven minutes long that was the was entire like really movie dude. For it. yep get <laughs> smith effects on that one but a scary movie that's just we'll the soundtrack go. to that just came out from uh is it uh waxworks just put it out we'll go incubus with william shatner uh, ah shatner yep you're welcome that's my country and uh, all in uh, Esperanto, a made-up language. But uh, this movie, man, it's kind of like a Night of the Demon remake, Jeff. Uh, man, this is a really good one. Uh, but not a lot of people know about this one. And, of course, it's in a different language. But Yeah, I've, I've seen that. It's actually surprisingly good because people just know it as the Esperanto movie. Yep. <laughs> Which was like then, a fad. Which was like a fad language at the time. But it's last actually but not least, we'll go Devil's Reign. I've never oh, seen God. that. Ernest Borgnine. Hell yeah. Yeah. John Travolta. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Another one. Mm-hmm. Melting faces. Oh man. The all Borgnine. Right. The Borgnine transformation in that movie is just fucking great, dude. Yeah. I mean, if you guys haven't seen this movie or any not. of the three movies, that's a. Uh, Satanic royalty, right there on those three movies. <laughs> the would, satanic royalty. I would yep. put that up with Race with the Devil. Like to watch the, these two back to back. Oh, yeah. the Peter Fonda. The All Peter Fonda. Is that Peter Fonda and Warren Oates? Warren Oates yeah, is probably yeah. my, my favorite. 
my favorite actor. Are ever. you serious? Did you yeah. like the cockfighter? Cock- I just, yeah. I, I, I just cockfighter, dude. I I rewatched cockfighter. I rewatched that. I watched. I just rewatched it like three days ago. It's so I, good. I've seen it. I've seen it like a dozen times. Yeah. So fucking good. Yeah. I prefer Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia as far as Born Outs films. Yeah, that, yeah, one of my favorite movies. That like, and uh, Two Lane Black Two Lane Blacktop, Black Bring Me the Head, Wild Bunch. Uh, Anything Outfighter. Monty Hellman, Monty Hellman or Peck and Paw related is going to be fucking good. Dude. I will yeah. tell you, not not to not, not to like talk out of out of order, but I re- oh wow, Eli just passed away. Oh, <laughs> Eli just died. <laughs> I think his Godzilla attacked him. Eli yeah. Vision. I that, was, that was the Blair as, Witch. Yeah, <laughs> the camera falls as, over. As much as people hated this movie, I really like Nicolas Cage and uh, what was that? Drive Angry. I love that movie. Dude, that movie's great, <laughs> hey, man. That is. It's, let me interrupt. That's a you fun know, movie. One second, uh, Dennis, check your phone real quick about something. All right. Here, check your text a minute. All right, go ahead. It's your turn there, Phil. Oh, is it? Oh shit. Uh, all right. Uh, I, I will tell you. The VHS that I have is much more impressive, but I'll bring this up because there was something so like sexually culty about the making of this film, which is Boarding House. Have you guys heard of this film? No. Of course. What? Of Come course. on, man. Yeah. No. And, Dennis, I'm sure. And if you wanted to like know what more about it, VHS, we... Nightmare get... USA. This is the best yep. book you could ever read. I mean. Yes, the other ones we showed were perfect, uh, but this one really gets into these independent films. But I, I, I really recommend this book. But Boarding House is, it's like weird. It's very sleazy. Very sleazy. And if you watch like the, I don't hear any sound. What's, am I still on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're good. There came that truck. <laughs> if I hear that one more fucking time, I'm gone. Might have been a motorcycle. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that this is a a really cool uh, like this is one of the earlier like shot on video films as well. So I it, this it's I don't have a lot to say. I'm starting to get drunk, and uh, I I'm, I have to leave soon because my children are out in the wild by themselves. <laughs> With bears. <laughs> yeah, so, so boarding house. It was shot on videos. I don't know, like beta cam or something. Yeah, it, it was. It, it, it actually screened they transferred to 35 millimeter and it's and it played in theaters and they they said it was like a gimmick i think it was called horror vision or something yeah yeah to explain that it was just shot in some fucking camcorder they said it like it's presented in horror vision yeah the vhs actually uh has a lot of that information on it's a very big box vhs um but they uh the the director and his wife made this and you can really tell they were kind of swingers like they're like very really? much oh yeah like they had a lot i wouldn't call them prostitutes or porn stars but they were like girls that were willing to uh you know i guess we would call them castle brides yeah <laughs> you know while they were making this movie yeah um let's see eric what you got well phil was just talking about some sov goodness so uh it's a couple of my favorites that's soul tingler here Soul, mm. Soul Tangler. Soul Tangler. Uh, Agfa release. Uh, this is a 1987 uh, reanimator ripoff, basically. Oh, okay. Um, but it's actually surprisingly well done. Um, the practical effects are bananas in this movie, uh, and the way that they did it, even though it's shot on video, is like it's really pretty impressive, actually. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's good. You got the special edition that's the uh art from putrid the metal artist yeah that fucking cover art is pretty insane that's uh cool. but yeah really good shit uh highly recommended and then um this is a company that's a pretty new uh movie company called visual vengeance they're doing a lot of uh 90s and early 2000s shot on video horror so this is a slaughter day oh yeah yeah oh, nice. and uh this is a hawaiian uh shot on video horror film about some construction workers who uh, find a copy of the Necronomicon. Oh, is that the uh, two brothers that filmed that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, I didn't know uh, that was not like on... not like the not like the um, you know the book, the Necronomicon. It's like the 
It's like the uh, art book. Fucking, <laughs> it's the art book, the H.R. Geiger art book of the Necronomicon. The color the coffee table book. book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's what they had, you know. It's fucking. It's so good though, and like, it's a really rough cut because uh, there's there wasn't a lot of original elements left that they could really sell. So like, you'll hear like the director telling them what to do in the yeah. background in some scenes. <laughs> um, what what really endears this movie to me though are like the Hawaiian accents that everybody has. It's just fucking stellar. Uh, I watch really this on good. Red like, Le- Supremely entertaining, like way more entertaining than it has any right to be. It's got a lot of heart, um, you know. Extremely stupid, but what, what uh, again, more that? practical effects that are really really good. Yeah, um, it's there's cool. like a there's one scene where a guy gets folded in half and then sucked into a wall, which is <laughs> yeah. I watched really this on Red Letter out. Media recently. They did a review oh, on this. Shit. I never heard of it. Uh, until then, but yeah, it's actually they, they gave up on, on the last of it, right? Kind of, yeah. Uh, guys, I gotta go. Uh, I can't hear anything, dude. We can hear you. Right. I gotta look at my my speakers are destroyed. Uh, yeah, I've gotta go, guys. Um, it's it's been a pleasure and an honor, uh, but I have to go. See you, Phil. Hey, listen, no. guys, and for people that are watching my channel, don't think I'm ghosting my channel. I, it, the channel will come back in bigger form very, very soon. Were you Please serious about what you texted me? Yeah, I can talk about I signed a... I, I don't mean to, like, hijack the show. I have to No, leave. no, go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, the show got bought and uh, by Sony, and uh, Chromium is is coming <laughs> fuck you rick i saw your face there that time you cocksucker <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but we, anyways yeah we, we got signed uh, for a development deal i'm on a two-year developmental i don't own the show anymore Your developmental i don't own the show anymore so, so it's actually going to be on like tv, on, like, TV, TV or, something, or something or what or what yeah, it's yeah, uh, was, uh it's from the people that uh, who's echoing here right now i will fucking rick. leave if this is not oh, a serious surround sound go ahead that works better for me. <laughs> no, no, it's a, so I, it's it, it'll either take off or die horribly. I don't know, but anyways, yeah. So the show got bought, and I got hired to help out with a certain project, and then I got an opportunity to develop a new show that's going to marry with Chromium. So I have not ghosted my show. The show will be back, and uh, we'll probably have about fifty dollars more budget for the new wow. one. Wow. That's so cool. guys, we're in the presence of like royalty, something yeah. royalty, I guess. Phil, I thought you were selling it to me. I thought I already maybe asked, I maybe asked this first. does it this mean a... Phil you can buy a toupee now? I no, <laughs> I've already talked about hair plugs with these people. And hair plugs for men, feathered, so Rogaine. feathered, Rogaine. 90s style hair plugs. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, guys, so I don't know. This might fall, fail horribly. But I was willing to take the, uh, I was willing to take the chance. Nice. Take the advance check for millions, right? Uh, for thousands. <laughs> for thousands. Wow. Cool, man. Good luck. That's awesome, dude. Hundreds. Threes of thousands. <laughs> Threes of thousands. All right, buddy. So the, you're, there's no chance you're going to get really wasted and cut yourself again tonight. No, not tonight. Uh, I really wish I could do that, uh, but uh, I can't right now because I, I'm I'm under ownership of the Orchard Group, and I was sworn not to. Ah, well, that's that's unfortunate. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, buddy. Oh. See you, man. Guys, it's been a pleasure, guys, and I can't wait to uh, to make love to Dennis. <laughs> ah. I can't. I can't wait to see that too. I'm not gonna watch, but thanks. Yeah, you better. Me. You better buy me dinner first, buddy. <laughs> oh, it's or at be... least buy him a couple of OG presses for fuck's sake. Right. No, we're we're gonna go to the Ponderosa Steakhouse. We're gonna oh, bring it back. <laughs> Phil Olive Garden. Olive Garden has unlimited breadsticks. Uh, ah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> that's that's unlimited. It's gotta go somewhere, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Peace out, man. All right. I love you guys. Later, man. Later. See you, Phil. Later, I'll try. Okay, I guess Eric, you went last, right? I think probably. So I guess I'm up. I shall show a few others here. Um, uh, Dennis mentioned this. Pretty sure I showed it. Uh, whenever they did these, these John Carpenter reissue steel books, seven, eight, six, five. I don't know. 
seven years ago, six years ago, something like that. Um, cool one. A really great flick. We already talk a lot about John Carpenter, although I just noticed it doesn't have the insert. And I think I bought this online for like 15 bucks. But, uh, yeah, definitely one of my favorites. I know that's one of your favorites too, right, Dennis? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Really cool uh, soundtrack to that one. Cool artwork. Love these. Love these uh, steel books. I'm a sucker for those bad boys. I uh, don't know if I showed this again. I could have. Maybe I don't remember. Carl Theodore Dreyer Vampire uh, Criterion Edition. Very, really. I'll tell you, this is a creepy fucking movie. A very weird movie. Yeah. Uh, what are we talking? Twenty two, I think it was, or was nineteen thirty two? Um, basically, it's it's. If I remember correctly, Tom, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but is it um, is it a um, talkie or not? It's like in between. Yeah, it's mostly silent, but there's weird sound effect shit that come in. Yeah, from time it's to like time. a silent movie with sound effects. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of and, and it's it's really like it's it's really cool. It's surrealistic. Like There's some surrealism yeah. to it and some really creepy sort of dark vision stuff. But then you get that weird ending sequence. I won't go into it, but it's just so weird. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Do you agree or, or not? Uh, I don't I don't remember the ending. Okay. Well, wow, it's just a strange ending sequence. Comes with the novel. Uh, the screenplay novel, rather, I should say. The screenplay. Yeah, well, yeah, because but based on Carmilla, right? Right, very loosely because I have I have that that book and I've read. And then read, um, it's very nice different. big write up on it that I don't remember any of. Um, I just remember there's some scenes in this that are very creepy. Uh, I watched this right around the same time that um, I kind of caught up with Haxon, which um, 1922, uh, which I waited and waited and waited for it to come out because they kept saying it was going to come out in Criterion finally came out on criterion and uh that's when my illness work situation started and i was like yeah i can't uh but i will say that every november i think is it july and november maybe it's twice a year barnes and noble usually does or actually i think criterion does the 50 percent off deal that's when i would always go grab criterions because they are fantastic i mean they, they just do amazing amazing reissues and this is a, a weird one that anybody else know this one just do you know this one dennis uh, I do know it, but I haven't seen it, honestly. Ah, worth watching. In here, yeah. Eli, you might like it, too. I, I think you'll like it. Rick, yeah, I'm sure you would. It sounds cool. It. I've always heard. I've only heard about it, yeah. I've always wanted yeah, to it's, see it. Yeah, it's very unique, and it has some of the coolest, like, shots involving yes. shadows. Like, yeah. the sh like, people's shadows leave their body, or yep. they see, you, you see a shadow. Like, in terms of, like, people's shadows, like how they do it and it just has really creepy cool. angles and and black and white photography in it um and it, cool. it's just a real really unique i'm trying to remember is dryer was he german or was he uh danish danish that's it yeah all right and another one you guys may or may not know the old dark house oh yeah that's a good one dude yeah it's the weird thing about this one is that it's it's creepy and comical at the same time which right. is strange um but Boris Karloff plays the monster, allegedly, but he's not really a monster. He's just yeah. this freaky, silent dude. And then there's times it's kind of like almost like a comedy at times. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but it's a really good, well-shot uh, flick. And I'm trying to remember. This is James Whale, who I love James Whale stuff. Yeah. Uh, did uh, James Whale did um, – oh, wait, was it Browning that did Freaks? That was Browning, right? Browning, yeah. Browning, yeah. What did Whale do? Did he do um, Frankenstein? The first Frankenstein. 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 And Bride. Which we've already showed. Uh, Glenn asked earlier, is anybody going to show like, um, you know, uh, Frankenstein or whatever? Um, so uh, uh, we lost. Looks like we lost. Eric said his headphones died. Um, but yeah, like, but yeah, I love these old, you know, the 20s through the 40s almost 50s i just love those the universal stuff although this one i don't know was this it i don't think this was universal was it i believe it was i don't think so i th i thought well i thought it was yeah it was no it was no it okay was. yeah it was originally yeah although cohen got the rights to it. i'm not sure why 
I don't know exactly why Universal wouldn't have reissued this, but they they didn't for some reason. But it's the only Combs film uh, collection I Blu-ray that I have. But this is a great one, man. Really, really one of those classics. Right up there with Black Cat for me, which I still got to get. Um, let's see. I'll show a couple more here. I don't think I showed this one last, last ever at all. You guys know the haunting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really classic ghost tale, right? Uh, you've got uh, this is Robert Wise, um, and this yeah. was uh, Julie Harris, Claire Bloom, Richard Johnson, uh, Russ Tamblin. This is just a good scary story, ghost story movie, and I always show. I always got to fucking show the changeling, but I didn't pull it this time, but I have that. It's, it's in that. The, the haunting, dude. That's, I watch that every Halloween. That's. Oh, one yeah. It's great. Like horror movies. And, you know, it's the old dark house sort of thing with a real spookiness to it, you know? Yeah, and yeah. Um, if I remember cor- correctly, it's been a while since I watched it, but isn't Julie Harris pretty unhinged in this for the most part? Yeah. And it's like, it's based on the true, true haunting. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One one reason I love that movie is just that it, it's just more. Oh, that, it's more realistic. Yeah. Yeah. It it feels like what would eventually be like movies about real haunting or shows about real like hauntings. Haunting. Yep. But then there's the thing, the the whole thing with Julie Harris, where you know, is she going insane because of the ghost? Or right. Is it, is it real or isn't is it? it right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So. Everybody say hi to Nicholas here. Nicholas, young Nicholas is here. Old Nicholas. Oh, I'm young now. Nick. That's weird. <laughs> old, as, old, as, old as dirt, Nicholas. Huh. Old Nick. Old Nick. Yeah. No, um, sorry. It took me a while to get some editing done. So, yeah. We know, Nick. We know. Editing is your life. We know. We got it. It's a good chunk yeah. of it now. <laughs> All right. I think, are we back to Tom, I believe, right? Yeah. Um. Since Eric mentioned Jean Roland, the French director, so I might as well show these because these are pretty cool. I have uh, there's these crazy special edition DVDs that this oh, Dutch wow. company released wow. over the course of like a year and then went out of business. Um, and so this is he's he's well, if people don't know he's a friend. He's French director. Um, he's very u- unique. Generally, the, he worked in like s- sex horror movies, but there were sort of like already goth movies. And a lot of times they revolved around ruins or castles, like people going to a creepy castle and there's, you know, yep. lesbian vampires and a whole bunch of weird shit going on. But like this is this is one of them reckoned for a vampire. So this is the three disc version um i'm trying to open this and it comes with the they all come with these books they're really really cool and it comes with the soundtrack as well as the third disc so these um really cool special editions that are hard to find and i'm a big fan uh of the director um so not normal. He has a couple of more normal horror movies. He did a zombie movie or two zombie movies, basically, that are more considered uh, um, regular horror movies. But if you're like looking for something weird and French and lesbian, goth, arty kind of thing, oh, and be something you might want to check out. I'm sold. And this is the three disc of movie or lips lips of blood so uh, i'm gonna drop these if i show any more but yeah really and just a really unique director that's kind of hard to describe hey tom yeah uh, grapes of death? huh grapes of death yeah so that's that's like the that sort of a more regular zombie movie yeah. where pe- uh, there's uh contaminated uh uh, uh, vineyard, wine vineyard, and then people turn into zombies in the French countryside. Yep. So that that would be one to check out in terms of like more of a normal horror movie that makes sense. You know, <laughs> about serial grapists, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> be, care, be careful. They're, they're out there. Okay. Um, so I'm just checking something here. Where are we at? We are at Eli. What's up? I think so, yeah. I'll do one more, then I, I, I got to go. I got to go pick up my son from his friend's house. Um, so another thing that I picked up today um, that I haven't read yet, I've read most of this author's stuff. Uh, this might be some of the only stuff I haven't read, so I'll bring back H.P. Lovecraft. Um, so I've been meaning to get this one for a while because I've always wanted to read August Durleth. Um, so for those that don't know, that was a buddy of H.P.'s. Can you imagine having a friend? Like <laughs> we all need a racist friend, let's be honest. Um, so That's what we named his cat. Do we really? I, well, we no, we, I'm, talk, I'm we talked about the cat thing earlier. I like to. Make, I have to make excuses for why I like his work, but I don't, you know, I don't know about this cat thing. What's the cat thing? Just look it up. Yeah. Yeah, look it up. We're get, no, not gonna say it. Yeah. Well, it's not, I assume he called it a foul <clears throat> name. Yeah. Something. Yeah. He, right. it's, it's, even for like nowadays standards, it's like why would you? Why would you do that? Uh, but, what, whatever. <laughs> um, so. August Derleth was an author, um, you know, they were buddies, but what, what was cool, uh, he did this with a lot of other writers back then they had like, kind of like a network, like most of these guys hadn't even ever met in person, but they're all writers, they'd write each other letters, um, you know, become friends, they would like contribute to each other's, you know, uh, short stories and stuff like that. So when Lovecraft died, uh, August Derleth got his hands on some of like his unfinished stories, and he basically just kind of finished them. Uh, he had he had permission, of course, but uh, yeah, I've always wanted to read him. Never read any of his writing, so thought it'd be cool to see what he adds to uh, you know Lovecraft's some of you know his unfinished ideas. So yeah, stoked stoked to read that. I'll probably start reading it tonight. Do you have the Necro Necronomicon? Yeah, I have I have a, a good chunk of his stuff. Maybe almost almost everything you can get that he's he's written. I have so. Um, the only stuff I didn't was this, and there might be a few other short stories that I don't I have. I have that big, like, fucking, I don't know, like, Borders like, put them out a bunch of years ago. It's a big, thick, I don't know if it's everything or not that's, everything. I think that might be almost everything I, he I ever wrote. I think it's pretty much everything. Yeah. I have to be honest with you. I got, like, really ambitious and started reading it, and I realized the older Dude, I am now, I'm a fucking terrible reader. I hate reading. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm I, the same way. I try to force myself to read, and I'm like, Fuck, it's worth it though, Jeff. You should do it. Yeah, it's um, the ADHD maybe, in me. You know what I mean. Maybe it's, skip the stuff that he did. Uh, like his his real early stuff is not as interesting, but right. like uh, his mid period stuff is fucking untouchable. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, I have I have a lot of it there. I just I, I get started in and then I get sidetracked. I'm like, fuck, man. I'll never what's get what's back great is they're short stories, so they don't take a whole lot of yeah, attention true, span. true. <laughs> At the mountains. All right, right, buddy. Well, thanks thanks for popping on, Eli. Good seeing yeah. you and. Uh, I'm glad you finally made it, and we'll uh, <laughs> try to we'll see what happens in the future. I don't know where this. I just don't I know just where my channel's going at the end of the month. So a couple things I got lined up. I'm going to try and get through, but a lot a lot could change in two days or so. I think it will. So we'll. Uh, I'm glad you made it out for this one, man. Yeah, take it easy, guys. All right, dude. Later, Later. dude. Peace. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. What you got, down? You guys got some more stuff. We'll go for more stuff. Half hour, forty-five minutes yet? Yeah, forty-five minutes, sure. All right. I want to talk about this movie, um, Blood Freak. Uh, so is this it? is a move. You guys know this movie? No. What's it called? I the, can't read it. The the hippies with the the turkey guy. Is that the turkey? <laughs> hippies Am I thinking with of the a turkey guy. Movie? It's almost like a PSA film. Oh, uh, Dennis okay. froze. There he is. There he is. About, about smoking too much marijuana and turns Ooh. you into a turkey monster. Nice. <laughs> and then you start killing people. I mean, it happens, right? It does happen. And this is the movie, <laughs> Blood Freak, man. That's just such a great movie, too. It's like super exploitation, super, uh, man. Like, the turkey monster looks pretty cool. He, like, Blood cut fresh. somebody up with a fucking saw blade. Uh, so there's really a turkey monster in it, though. Yes. Oh God, no way. Yes, he. The guy turns into part man, part turkey. <laughs> I'm legit looking that up right now. And that happens all the time. Oh my God. 
uh, I mean, this is like back in the, I think this probably 70s, early 70s, when marijuana, you didn't know what the effects were going to be. 72. Yep. So it it kind of has that feel. It's very, like, I don't know if you can, like, regenerate this movie to not be grainy, but VHS is the way to go on this one. Uh, and it's it's good. It's, it's actually a good movie. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ. Yep. Oh, my God. That's for real. Yeah, I'm not shitting you, man. Oh, With a dude, janitor of fucking insane. Chuck E. Cheese. I, I just looked it up on IMDb, and the first thing in trivia, it says there's a quote from the director, and and he refers to the movie as a sad chapter in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> that, that mask is hilarious. Yep. And then we have this one. Ah, there you go. Grave Great. Robbers Cemetery of Terror. Yeah, two Mexican horror films uh, that a lot of people don't know about. And uh, Cemetery of Terror, man. You got like a serial killer that gets killed in the beginning, but they steal his corpse and resurrect him with the Necronomicon. And everyone at a, at an old mansion on Halloween. Imagine that. There's yeah. always a there's always a resurrection with the Necron- Necronomicon. You're right. Good idea. idea. <laughs> he gets resurrected, kills everyone there. Then he brings the whole cemetery to life. Uh, man, this is a badass one. Grave robbers, they go and rob some graves. But they robbed the wrong grave because that dude was an old ancient killer. Um, he comes back, kills everyone with his axe, and then starts to like try to resurrect himself with a ceremony. Lots of stuff going on here, man. This is... These two movies are really good Mexican horror movies. Lots of gore, um, lots of atmosphere. Think uh, Fulci, like the Beyond mix with, uh, fuck, dude. I don't even know, Evil Dead or something like that. But both these movies are really good movies from the 80s. Oh, Definitely. 80s. Okay, 80s. How yep. do you even find out about something like that? You're looking in books or no? I, no. You just run across them. I don't know, dude. And then I was going to pull this one for um, Chromium, but he left. But my happy birthday to me. Ah, days are I remember out. that. Yep. The skewering. So, yep. That's the soundtrack. This is, I saw this. This movie was always on uh, the movie channel when I was like 12 or something like that. Yeah. But I love this movie, man. Lots of really great creative kills. Um, it had that chick from. Little House, House on the Prairie. Prairie. Yep. And, and that, that that bonkers ending is the best. Yeah, lots of like, lots of red herrings in this movie where you don't know I, what's going to go on. I know that one, but I've never actually seen it. So I'm going to have to see if I can find that online or something. you got to see that. you got to see, the, man, these so many good movies people don't know. I know, man. There's, you know, it's like it's trying to listen to every fucking metal album. It's impossible in some ways. Rick, what you got, dude? Oh, ah. Nothing? You had me on mute, man. You you were on mute. I didn't have you on mute. You put me no. You put me on mute, man. Uh, Did I? I felt, I, I felt a little like I felt a little neutered because I can't insert my witty banter. Because... I know that's the problem, but it was really, really. Now maybe it won't be. Can everybody hear him, or am I the only yeah, one? I can hear you. Hey, I got something for Rick here. Uh oh, he's got some. He's got something for you, Rick. Just you for you. I got this full moon box set. Oh shit! Oh, dude, this wow. from the I think this from the eighties, dude. But it's a like a promo box set that I picked up. Let me try to get this open, but uh, yeah, this is crazy. So, I think I have uh, them in storage, but I have a, a box of full moon trading cards. Oh, yeah. look at that! Oh, oh, that and one. then all the full moon, full moon trailers. On VHS, and then wait. There's more. <laughs> Arcade with what's her face from my so-called oh, life. Look at that! All these pro oh, the puppy master shit photos. There's a time warrior. Any transfer stuff in there? <laughs> I 
that has all like those movies. Nice. And That's awesome, man. Yep. Uh, is that a box of co- Is there any? Is there a bag of cocaine in there? Like a eight ball? Not anymore. Shit. <laughs> Vince Neil took it. Out of this world. Oh shit! Just, look at that. Look at the fucking cutout right here. Oh, that's look killer. That is wild. Don't forget about dark. This movie's cool. Dark Angel, The Ascent. Uh, yeah. Uh, she looks like it here. might be worth watching. And what's left? Just that puppet master. Nice. I gotta pull out my framed full moon posters, man. Like I, I, I didn't, but uh, you know, now that you show me that, I, I should. All right, what you got, Rick? Um, well, first of all, uh, Tom could talking about lesbian goth vampires or something, and then while well, he's wearing his forty-five grape shirt, knife shirt, by the way, which is awesome. <laughs> I was hoping um, Levi would have stuck around because the next thing we're gonna show, because he's wearing his you know Mogwai shirt the whole time. And like, well, you got to show. Well, someone's got to show a gremlin. <laughs> kind of well, counter. No, wasn't that, right? that a Furby on his shirt? No, it was a Mogwai. <laughs> was it uh, Furby? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a huge Gremlins fan. I don't know, look like a fucking Furby to me. I don't know. Um, so well, I, I think Furbies are ripoffs of Mogwais. I was going to say they have to be because they look the same. Yeah, actually, they smaller are. ears. Yeah, Furbies are more of a, I'm like a more demented form of it. They won't tell you that, but I think it is. Um, so these two things i pulled were like gifts actually so i got two dvds melissa if you're still watching so these were some gifts from her thank you very much but what's interesting is i got this other gift which is a a toy from somebody else and as i put them together like the color schemes like match exactly which is crazy uh so eli if you're watching so i got the uh so i don't know if he has this because he's got a lot of gremlin stuff um the ultimate stripes so basically, because like Dennis was talking about buzz saws and <laughs> some reefer madness thing or whatever, <laughs> mm-hmm. and this thing like opens up and like you get like the chainsaw. <laughs> I yeah, almost that. Those are the gremlins, right? Yeah, that's a gremlin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, you know, they would have been fine. They, they did not need the skateboard. Like this would have been cool, as it is. It would have been complete yeah. fucking awesome. But they threw that skateboard. Uh, in there. Tom's got. Tom has one there. Yeah, Tom, it's, I see it kind of It's like showing it's, something there. What do you got? <laughs> do you have it? No, oh, no, he's got, oh, you got the yeah, Bruce Campbell with the chainsaw. Oh, he's got, yeah, from, uh, from uh, Evil Dead. Yeah, it's the Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness, yeah. But it has a, also has a chainsaw. Now, Rick, is that a is that a doll or what is it? Is it a toy? <laughs> yeah, well, it's put up. Okay, so here's the, here's the crazy thing. So it's put up with this Nika, whatever. Yep, NECA. Yeah, great company. They're based out of Hillside, New Jersey, which was actually the first town I lived in when I was a kid, like long, long, long time ago. It's kind of insane to just see that that this company's there. Um, so it just kind of, uh, you know, just brings back memories. I'm like, fuck, man, if I was still living there, man, I'd probably want to be working for this toy company. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, so I got these gifts from Melissa. And if you look at the, 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 the color scheme, it's like it's like exact. <laughs> yeah. Look at that shit. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. um, when did when did the Wolfman come out? So this is a, the Universal uh, double features. Thirties or forties? Forties, forty four, I think. Was it forty four? Because Werewolf of London, this came out in the thirties, and I don't know what the worst, what the what the first Wolfman movie was, but this is this is a pretty early flick yeah, right here. I thought the first one was forty or forty one, but that that is like came out before. Because it's not yeah. like part of the series. It doesn't even have like a generic name. It's it's just you know like like Wolfman. It's just you know Werewolf of London. So it's pretty specific <laughs> to the to the region. Then you got the She Wolf of, of London, which came out a little later. Uh, and then another double feature, which has the, has the same color scheme. By the 41, way, forty one. You were right. Forty one. Yeah. Okay. On the nose. Amazing. I, don't know why I thought it was forty four. Uh, one of the sequels is forty. Yeah, I know the sequel. The one with Dracula, the the what's it called? Um, fuck. This is um. Where they're where they're all in it together. Well, yeah, when they're down underneath in the ice thing and they're frozen and yeah. I think that's forty four. That's forty four. Yeah. What's that? House of Frankenstein. House of Frankenstein. House of Frankenstein Frankenstein or House of Dracula. um, Frankenstein. Dracula's daughter and son of Dracula. 
Mm. You know, it's, Dracula's it's, daughter is good, man. I like that one a lot. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's another early one, man. Like, uh, so that came out first, and then later on, it did the, the son of Dracula, which is like, if you do these long enough, there's eventually going to be like the, the right, like the spouse or the sib or, the, or, the, or the Dracula's kid. third cousin. You know, it's like as we've learned, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So I actually haven't sat down to watch this, but uh, so uh, thank you, Melissa. So I still got to check them out, but you know. But it's it's quite cool. Nice. Um, Universal put these out. So there you go. And Eli, there's your gremlin. Uh, Nick, what you got to show? Uh, hey, I mean, hey, I have a stack hey, of weird quick, stuff. Nick we, Nick, we didn't get into you as far as how you got into horror. Hmm? I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah, how I got into know. horror? Yeah. Uh, God, let's see. Initially, I was terrified of it. Uh, one of my early memories was... Uh, my mom was watching Aliens, and I walked in the room right when Bishop got ripped in half, <laughs> and I ran fucking screaming, and my mom was like, ah, fuck. God damn it. <laughs> and it took me a while, and Maybe. honestly, the big jump into like actual horror, because I like like sci-fi stuff and all that shit, too, um, was probably Army of Darkness, because there was humor in it. And then from there, I just kind of jumped into it, and Man, I rented out like almost every fucking VHS in my uh, local video uh, video source horror section. Like I, I went fucking ham on that, and uh, yeah, I became a horror nut. And uh, yeah, I got <laughs> I don't know like well, I don't know what all you guys have shown so far, but I, I made some picks just based on um, well, I don't know the stuff I love, and I had to start with that. Yep. Two is the blind dead. Oh, the blind yeah, dead. we didn't show that. Oh, we didn't. Ah. Well, dude, this is this is where Hooded Menace gets all their uh, ah. ideas from. Did not yeah, know that. I believe. All right, it it feels like it's an Italian horror flick. I think it's actually Spanish. Yes. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Spanish. Yeah, uh, the Knights Templar. Uh, they're mm. like doomed to walk the earth, and they are blind, but they can hear you or maybe smell you, even though they don't have noses. Um, it's it's horribly campy. There's even like a lesbian scene kind of squeezed in there just because lesbians. Uh, <laughs> the, you know, cheesy, like bright red blood, like, you know, all, all that wonderful, like, oh, 70 yeah. horror stuff. Um, the zombies move very slow, but they're armed, which is kind of different because all of them carry swords, I believe. Nice. Zombies with swords. Yeah. I mean, they don't really swing them very fast. It's, it's, oh, you're quick moving. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I had to start with this one just because there's a nice Mel reference in it, and uh, yeah, uh, killer, killer flick. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you just like cheesy Italian horror, you'll fucking love that. Um, yeah, and then I, I had to bring up this one for Jeff because this is like one of the best haunted house movies ever. Yeah, it's killer, man. Honestly, I, I love the direction. I love the acting. George C. Scott fucking rules. I love pretty much everything that he's been in. But man, like, not a lot of like gore or any of that it's mostly about atmosphere and yeah atmosphere psychological horror dude, maybe a little bit a little bit ball. of a mystery a little bit of a mystery <laughs> mystery story tied in with like a history mystery oh, history sort of thing it's great dude. like i said the the ball the ball mm. that keeps bouncing oh. down the stairs Fuck yeah, he, dude. he goes and chucks it in the fucking river and comes home and it's immediately bouncing down the stairs yeah. so i was like oh fuck yeah. move Get the the house is nice, sure, but get the fuck out of there. Well, just the way the house moans and groans and the the noises and the, the beating, which was the the yeah, kid the in the beating, tub. and then you, you got the fucking uh, the the, the carrot, whatever it's called, the wheelchair carriage thing. Yeah, yep. Oh, it chased them down the fucking hallway and shit. Yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah that is, is without question probably my favorite ghost story of all times. Honestly, yeah, I, I, would, plus, I would. Plus, you got George C. Man, and he's yeah. so he's so killer in it. And this one, he's like a little bit more like he has a quiet intensity about him, like yes. this whole tragic story on it. Like generally, yeah. you know, he walks in the rooms like, oh, fuck, we're all about to get yelled at. But this one, he's a little bit more reserved. And honestly, like his mood and his story too really drive the movie. Like it's a well-written movie anyway. Like even if it wasn't a ghost story, yeah. I think they could probably find a way to just make this just a solid story anyway because yeah. they had... Solid writing, solid acting. Yeah, great. Good one. 
One more? And, uh, I mean, I got... <laughs> I'm just going to show these as a bundle. Oh. Now, if anyone remembers back in uh, the media play days, you get these four packs of nice. shitty horror movies. Sometimes good ones, but mostly shitty. For like five bucks. You got uh, Roots of Evil. Horror Rises from the Grave. Uh, what's this one? Hell in the Family. Uh, <laughs> Blood Hunt. That, that, that one looks good. And uh, Blood Bath. And oh, I that one. Dude, these, these were great. This was honestly like a big introduction to a lot of just cheesy horror movies that I'd never heard. And a lot of them have been rebranded. Like, let's see. Uh, this one in particular, I thought for years that the only uh, Fulci horror movie that I had not seen, at least you know at that point, was last. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, House by the Cemetery. I was like, oh man, I still need to see that. And then that's where I started finding out that <laughs> his movies had multiple titles. Yeah. Um, like you know, I mean, my personal favorite, uh, Gates of Hell. It's also known as City of the Living Dead. Yeah. I think I rented it as Gates as uh, Gates of Hell, but Turns out uh, House by the Cemetery had a different name, Zombie Hell House. Huh. And it's on here, and I, I love it. I like when she slashes open the zombie dude and, like, worms fucking pour out. Like, <laughs> just absolutely gross special effects in that movie. And Fulci in general. Like, I, he couldn't stitch a fucking story together. God damn it. There goes the alien. Anyway. Uh, yeah, he couldn't stitch together a story to really save his life, but man, just get to the gore, and it's amazing. But yeah, these these were fun. Some of these DVDs don't even play anymore either. Like I remember putting okay. one in a <laughs> DVD player, and it got to the opening, right to the credits, and then just boom, right to the end. Like it just quit. Like no, nah, this movie sucks that bad. Do something <laughs> else with uh, your life. I got a bit of a complaint about those bundles. Uh, it's like. Cause I see, I'm seeing that more and more. It's like those movies have made their money, right? Like especially those old ones. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and then you got those like remakes, so those crappy sequels. And a lot of those sequels are not really canon, or people don't really count them as part of the whatever a series. But they but they insist on bundling together. So you got the ones that made their money, the ones that didn't make any money. It's like win win for them. But then like you're troll and troll too. <laughs> it looks like a value buy, you know. But there's like there's just certain ones you won't watch in that bundle. I think I've watched every one of them, uh, mainly because I was drunk and with my friends, and we, we kind of do it like Mystery Science Theater 3000 style, where we just rag on it nonstop. He he was getting the uh, the the Kung Fu movies with Bruce Lee, L.I., uh, <laughs> like complete and total knock. They were so bad. They were so bad, like... The it's sound not as cool as Bruce use. Leroy, right? Is what you're saying? Oh no, no, nothing as cool as Bruce Leroy. But I mean, Shogun of Harlem, baddest mofo low down around this town. I mean, how can you argue with that? But yeah, like the they would make like little boop noises when they would hit someone. <laughs> like, like that's the sound effects. Like, oh, why don't you just throw in a fucking squeaky toy noise? Just commit to it, man. <laughs> hey, I'm just looking at. Right, yeah, so. and and Mike is asking about Alice Cooper horror movie. There is a, a oh, movie called Monster Dog. There Sp it is Spanish movie uh, horror movie starring Alice Cooper, Alice Cooper. and he's oh, I didn't know that. he's dubbed by somebody that absolutely did not sound like Alice well, Cooper. He whatsoever. is in Prince of Darkness. He oh, makes really? a cameo there. Yep. But this is a crappy movie about a monster dog, and Alice Cooper plays a rock star. That's probably of terrible. Course. Imagine that. But check out Monster Dog if you want to Monster see Alice, crappy Alice Cooper. Movie. I'll show a couple quickies here. We'll get another round or two in. And um, so Rick sent me this, I believe. Didn't you send me this, Rick? Uh, looks like it. Yeah, I think so. So it's the how uh, you oh, talk about the yeah, I remember that one. compilations. Yeah, I have the fog already. I also have uh, the Howling uh, Steel Book. Love that which, movie. Which that's a great fucking movie, man. I love that movie. Um, what's the guy? The guy, and it's the same guy. It's in Halloween three. I can never remember his name. Atkins. Tom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the reason I love this one, and I've yet to watch the burning. I don't. I've not seen that. Come on, got, man. I know. I gotta watch it. Wait a minute. That's not the one with um, Kath. Uh, it's got fucking George Costanza in it. Oh, yeah, yeah no, George Costanza 
his ass. You see his ass in the movie. Oh man! And you haven't well, seen. Maybe it. now Rick, I won't watch it. Rick, but, um... Rick, Rick, Rick Wakeman does the soundtrack, and Tom yeah, really? does the special effects. And so George, I gotta watch that. George then, yeah. Costanza does the nudity. Plus, but, it's got that guy from Fast Times in it. But this Pumpkin is the reason. Amazing. This is the reason I fucking love Pumpkinhead, man. I love Lance Hendrickson. Everything Lance Hendrickson in is in, I fucking love, even if it sucks. But I think this is a really good movie. And the Pumpkinhead Monster, even though it's kind of a ripoff of Alien, sort of kind of. Well, it's, it's Stan Winston that directed it. Yeah. Killer movie. Yeah. What I liked about that bundle, too, is it's got all the part ones. It's all the originals. Yeah. There's no weird yeah. sequel thrown in there or some. So I got to watch um, the burning and get that out of the way. But uh, I pulled some of my. I didn't pull all, but I pulled most of my Dracula, Christopher Lee. So there's the 57, the horror of Dracula. Just fucking insanely cool. That that image right there, man. Ah, love Christopher Lee as uh, Dracula. I still, Lugosi's still my dude, but he was a more menacing Dracula, obviously, right? Oh, yeah. infinitely. Lugosi, Lugosi was kind of the... He was classy. Classy, right? The classic, right? But... Then they did all these hammers, did all these 68 uh, through 73, I think. Of uh, You got the Dracula's Risen from the Grave. You've got Taste the Blood of Dracula, Dracula AD 72, and the Satanic Rites of Dracula. These are, are all good movies. They're not great movies, but they're all good movies. Um, I ha honestly have to tell you, it's been... Uh, six or seven years since I've watched them. Five years, anyways. So I need to do a a marathon on those at some point in time if I can get my my head in the right space, which is hard for me to do to focus. But these are all well worth grabbing. Um, kind of, if I recall correctly, when these were all put out by um, Warner Brothers, I pretty much grabbed them all at one time. And uh, great, 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 great stuff. Christopher Lee, the boss. Uh, dude lived to be what 999 years old or something, like yeah. Dracula. He and he <laughs> ended it right. Count, Count Dooku was great. Yeah, and he did a metal album too. Yep. Um, uh, just that. Now that was another gift I got from Melissa. Was no, oh, yeah, just right here, just right, right here. What is uh, what is that? I can't see. Count Dracula. Oh, the Jess Franco. You, you were just showing the Christopher. Is what, that what's the whole this one? Count the Candlebar. Candle what, what do you see? That's weird. He's got like his mouth closed, right? But his fa fangs are still hanging out, which is yeah, like, that's kind of, right. It's like this, it's like the saber tooth thing, you know. Wait, wait a minute, is that all of them, Rick, or what is it? A series or what? No, nah, it's just it's got it's just Cal Crown Dracula. Oh, okay. It's the sleazy Spanish Jess Franco. Oh, Jess Franco. Yeah, that's Dr yeah, yeah, okay. I thought it was Christopher Lee. <clears throat> I'm like, wow, look at that. No, no, it is well, it yeah. is Christopher Lee's in it, but directed Lee. by Jess Franco. Oh, okay. I've never seen that one. All know, right, uh, Tom, what you got? Um, well, since you were talking about Hammer Dracula, mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking about Japanese horror. So basically the um, Lake of Dracula and Evil oh, of Dracula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically these are the Japanese equivalent to the, nice. to the Hammer Dracula movies. And they're really cool. And this is called a trilogy, but it's not really. It's really the the two movies and then there's an earlier movie called the vampire doll which is my favorite it's sort of it reminds me of brides of dracula which is the movie the couple like goes to the creepy old house and they're, they're hearing noises um that type of vibe but but the sort of uh, uh there's a creepy girl ghost in that one that sort of re reminds me of like the j horror like the ring girl so it's like a combination of gothic horror vampire with uh, J-horror, but, but from the late 60s. And it's uh, that one in particular is is super creepy, like that that the girl in, in it. And then similarly, I think this is 1968. This is the, and this is a fairly obscure one, uh, Snake Girl and the Silver-Haired Witch. So this is ostensibly sort of a teen... Uh, horror movie. It's like the, this young girl is is ha having uh, like her family readopts her, and she's having a lot of issues at home. And then she's having these dreams about this evil witch that attacks her. And, and the movie's in black and white. And 
the, the actual the dreams in this movie are so fucking creepy. Like this witch comes and like throws snakes at the girl, and it's all this creepy shit goes on. So it's supposed to be like, uh, you know, a movie appropriate for teenagers at the time. But it's like the the horror scenes in this are, are just really creepy. The snake and there's a lot girl, of what's it say? The snake. The girl snake girl what? and the silver haired witch. Haired witch. Okay. I think 1968. Is that Arrow or Indicator? Yeah, right? so it's Arrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Arrow. Uh, but, yeah, I've uh, read about that, but that's one I definitely got to check out. Yeah, and this is one I've just heard about in the past year and, and picked up. And is that, that was new? Really, uh, I don't know when it when it came out on Blu-ray, but oh, okay. I just saw it and picked it up. Um, that looks wicked. But um, And then the, of course, House... Which oh, is not, which is, yeah. I'm sure somebody's shocked. I don't own that, but I, I never get tired of watching this movie. It's not, not a regular so horror good. movie. It's just, it's just, just throw everything at the wall. Yeah, killer <laughs> Japanese craziness. And then, uh, since you guys were talking about changeling and the haunting earlier, there's also the legend of Hell House. Mm. Yes. Which, yeah, I've always loved, which is Roddy McDowell, sort of, right? Yep. Yeah, and <clears throat> Pamela oh, Franklin. Cool. It's sort of like a really amped up the haunting so if, yes. if you maybe th thought the haunting was boring which i don't but this is like sort of a gothic over the top version of that movie where they're investigating this house um so it would definitely if anyone hasn't seen this i would definitely check it out so. yeah it's very bizarre i've had that in my cart eight thousand times and go ah i'll get it next time and it's never ended up in my collection it's one of my favorites that, that's great pick Tom. great pick uh what then dennis all right i got a couple cool slashers here that most people don't talk about this is a cool one too because it's like a weird dvd it's like a hanger thing uh moonstalker moonstalker i i have that 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 dvd it was like a it's like a it was originally like a dollar dvd is it was like a dollar when i bought it and i was probably a hundred bucks or something Probably, and this one's sealed <laughs> still. So, but uh, interesting yeah. packaging, yeah. Yeah, man, I love this movie. Um, kind of an underrated eighty slasher guy with like a, I think he has a bag on his face, kind of like a Jason type thing, if I remember correctly. But uh, kind of an underrated one coming out in the eighties that you should check out. And I have another one here. This one uh, got some Sam Raimi. Um, attachments oh, to it. Yeah. Uh, Intruder. That's a good one. With Bruce Campbell. Uh, lots of really good special effects, especially if the, you have the unrated version. VHS isn't unrated, but this one is. And I'm sure they have a Blu-ray of this, but this is the DVD version, um, especially the bandsaw scene where they cut someone's face in half. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> someone... Like they close the supermarket at night and there's a killer in the store killing everyone while they're having a party, I think, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, just really good special effects and pretty gruesome slasher, honestly. Pretty mean spirited. But yeah, that, that VHS version has like no gore in it. Exactly. You have to get the, the unrated because initially I didn't like the movie that much until I saw the the DVD version that has all right. the gore. And they, they're always promoting. This is a weird one too, but uh, uh, Attack the of the Beast Creatures. And <laughs> this is a really kind of cool movie about like these creatures on a island that are attacking these people that are there. And it's they're played by a bunch of like small people. And like <laughs> I, so, I, I, I have to point out the redundant title though, like Beast and Creature. Yeah. <laughs> but this is this is a cool movie. Pretty if you like uh what's that fucking movie with uh Karen Black? Trail Trilogy of Terror. It's basically yeah. like they took oh, the, the doll? They, they took the doll from the trilogy of terror and they made a giant tribe out of them. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. I need to watch that now. Yeah, this is a this is a good one, man. If you can check you check that one out. The the yeah. funniest the funniest scene in that movie is like someone fall there's like a pit of randomly a pit of acid that somebody trips into, <laughs> and then so the, all their all their skin immediately melts off and this their skeleton is like the the medical lab skeleton with the hinge, 
<laughs> it's crazy. It's another good one. Zombie 90. The Zombie 90. Man, this movie. Over the top gore. Um, and it's dubbed. I think it's a German movie, but uh, and it has like so much gore in it and like they talk, it's dubbed, but it sounds like Sanford and Son, the way they're talking. <laughs> this is that has movie. to be awesome. It is oh, awesome. Cameo by Red Fox. Boy, I'm coming, yeah. Elizabeth. I'm coming. Yep, yep. <laughs> Honestly, man. Zombie, cool dummy. And one last one before I... Debbie the Dawn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, this movie. If you like... Uh, it's like a total revenge flick. Like if you take a um, shit, what's a movie with uh, Death Wish? Yeah, who is that? Who's that actor? Jim Van Bieber. Okay, Van Bieber. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he directed uh, this. Yeah, but man, I remember it, that one. I've not seen it, but I remember it. It's super gritty. Um, lots of violence. Killer revenge flick. Not so much horror, but the gore in it. Right. constitutes this horror so um man shades of rambo it. shades of rambo there on the front <laughs> yeah but it's it's more like a mix between um death wish and the punisher it's more of a revenge flick but lots of gore lots of uh over the top like martial arts with like stars and, 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 and lots of this guy's like an anti-hero like the gang kills is his girlfriend, but he still sells drugs, so it's like <laughs> the, the motherfucker robs a bank with ninja stars in that movie. Yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> badass, dude. This is like if you talk about a movie that's badass, it's Dead Beat at Dawn. Yeah. Like, what are you one on, of my favorites. Are you leaving, yeah. Dennis, or what? No, I just oh, I just wanted I'm not leaving. You wanted to blow your load hard there. I get it. Right. I got like forty eight movies over. I know I dude, I was gonna say forty eight. That's like you're lying. Um, you got more like about 200. Got like another years. dozen episodes worth of material. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, I, think I think I'm at Nick. I think uh, Rick. About, like movies over the edge over here. Not I mention, Rick? I think edge, I'm at Rick. Great movie. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to go a little different with this one. So I'm going to show a record. Um, so if I were to ask you guys, what is like the bloodiest variant Maybe except Nick, he doesn't collect vinyl. Uh, but what is like the bloodiest vinyl that so, that you have in your collection? If you know off the top of your head, is that the is this the exhumed one with the blood in it? No. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna show you one here, but it's not the, not the one I'm referring to. But it is I know an outfit, allegedly. They oh put shit! Head. Oh yeah, yeah. So, this variant made with wow. real blood. Got some nice blood, blood. Well, I don't know if it's real blood. I haven't, I haven't I checked know, the I'm fine print, <laughs> right? So we, so we got this, which is crazy. So I might show it to somebody and be like, "This is some f- fucking bloody looking vinyl," right? But it's actually not the bloodiest vinyl in my collection. So I'm gonna pull something else out. It might actually shock you. So yeah, shock me. This sounds nothing shocking. Pretty typical. Return of the Living Dead. So it makes perfect sense. TV, catch those images. Is this the aborted one? It's no. a fucking total record. Ah! <laughs> no joke. I <laughs> passed the rain down in Africa. I, I don't know what they were thinking going with this variant, but let me pull it out. It's kind of similar to The Return of the Living Dead, but I kind of like this one a little better because it's got the... Oh, the red looks more bloody. Yeah. Yeah. Blood yeah. Red Toto. Blood Red Toto. So, Coming to a store yeah. near you. So, if any of you guys ever ask me, what is your bloodiest vinyl? I'm going to pull out Toto record. Just just so you know. <laughs> this is straight from Rosanna to they, your they, Yeah, I was just, yeah. just going to say, they blew, they, they, blew, they blew Rosanna's brains out. And yeah. I didn't yeah. notice yeah. it's like not that or long She was the right. killer the entire hey, time. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, but in all fairness here, I'm just going to say it. That fucking album rules, so... I yeah, love yeah. That fucking turtle. Love no, that fucking. No, uh, album. you know, nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with the record. I just, I thought I pointed. I didn't even know it was a bloody variant. I thought I was getting like black or something. The I didn't even bloody, know the bloody Toto like, variant. I pulled that out and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> wow. Is that it, Rick? Or you want to go? You want to go again? Um, 
I don't know if Melissa's still watching, but um, you're looking for stuff. You're you're scrounging. There you go. Remember this? Oh, so dude, I love crowd. that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually almost put it in my stack. Anybody who who buys like waxwork stuff uh, knows, you know, all the reimagined artwork is ah, just amazing, so man. good, so they good. Some of the some of the best people, man. And this is yes. one of those. This is one of those early movies, man. I really enjoyed and just made me not want to eat cotton candy for like a really long time. <laughs> Beware popcorn too. <laughs> uh, so this for this they went with um, I guess two different colors. Uh, oh wow! It's kind of like a cotton candy. It's cool. I think you know it kind of annoys me when they do like different colors for shit. But for this, it, I think it really works because it's already kind of a novelty anyway. You know, like just kind of the whole thing and the packaging. So I don't mind at all. So pretty cool. Good movie. It's nothing quite like it. Um, no. So again, alien clowns or whatever, but you know, it's just they made it work. On paper, it sounds stupid, but it, but they made it work. Oh, it is it is stupid, but that's why yeah. it works. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah. The the shadow puppet uh, killings with the the T Rex. My favorite oh, though, yeah. is, uh, they get John Vernon as the puppet. Yeah, that's oh, great. When, when look is dummy. Yep. When, when the guy's oh. like, you got to knock my block off, right? You're like, it's that Jason Voorhees shit. You're going to knock my block off. But when, when I originally rented that movie, when it was like, when I was like 10, that scared the shit out of me, actually. Well, it, my sister still refuses to watch that movie. She still has a phobia of clowns and yeah. keep telling her, like, listen, this might help you get over it because it's nothing but silliness. I wasn't going right, to pull Nick, it, but Somebody pulled that Tiny Tim movie earlier in the stream. So, they, you know what? I, well, I, all right. Yeah, Jeff was... brought up Alien Ripoff with, uh, you know, Pumpkinhead, Stan Winston. I'm going to one-up him with another Alien Ripoff, also involving Stan Winston. Yeah, we were uh, talking we talked about, about earlier, that. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, a little bit. I, I actually, believe it or not, sad to say, I just watched that movie like two months ago, three months ago. I, I yeah. knew it. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, why the fuck have I not seen this? But yeah, it's very alien like, but really good until the very final minute and a half. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about I think we talked about this. I'm like, wow, come on, man. Yeah, they, they, he fucking chucks a nade in the mouth and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, whatever. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, I, I think honestly, this is one of the best alien ripoffs oh, ever. So good. In terms of like all the underwater horror movies that were popping up, like The Abyss, Deep yeah. Star Six. Uh, there was that uh, the Rift movie, um, yeah. I think this was probably the best one. Like it was that like, nice claustrophobic sense and the the whole rig they had down there. Good ensemble cast. Yeah, uh, Sam. Yeah, Bill. everything about this and the monster itself. The fact that uh, it kind of had like the thing sort of vibes where it would yeah mutate inside mutate. of you. Yep. Yeah, and a really well designed creature by Stan Winston, which you know Stan Winston. Did a great job with that, but yeah, I guess the whole um, process of making this was nightmarish. Like the uh, was it George P. Cosmas that uh, directed this? Yeah, I guess he was a nightmare to work with. But uh, a lot of the underwater scenes were done with just gas and like floating around feathers, and very effectively just put like sort of a, a score of underwater stuff uh, as the backdrop, and they just floated that stuff around and weighted down the suits so they move really naturally but yeah really well done movie yep love that. And, uh once again i'm gonna play off uh jeff again because he brought up a werewolf movie i love anyone bring up this one yeah dog soldiers no i've not seen that one man Crazy. oh dude this I is know. this is legit one of the best i can't really call it modern yeah it came out in 2001 or 2002 and eh, one who's of the two it? who's in that who's in that um oh fuck uh pete oh what's his damn name uh Sean Pertwee. Oh, okay. uh, not, he's not the guy that's been playing well, in Gotham. He's uh, played Alfred. He was in uh, Event Horizon. Uh, really good English actor. Just kind of pops up everywhere. Really solid character actor. But he's kind of the main guy in here. But a lot of just uh, not really super well-known English actors. But the werewolves in this are some of the most impressive. They picked, yeah, like, I believe... Uh, contortionists and ballet dancers, and they were they wanted to make sure they were naturally tall, but they also put them in lifts. So the werewolves are lanky but imposing and right. great, right. great practical effects. Yeah, I, gotta, I gotta check that one out. I've oh, often, the, often heard it's great. 
Oh, dude. Uh, yeah, like uh, the transformations are awesome. The story itself, I think, is pretty damn cool too. Like it kind of starts off almost uh, kind of like the Predator, where you had like a team of soldiers and they kind of dropped off an area, and yeah, they, they start getting hunted down. But it turns into I don't know. It, it's just a really awesome movie, and. I know, super underrated, and I don't think it gets talked about very much. I've seen a couple of YouTubers do like some behind the scenes things on them, like shooting it and all that, and uh, it was really interesting in terms of the making of it. But it never really took off, other than just you know horror hounds. But yeah, fantastic movie. Mm, okay, I'll blast a few out here. Um, I know. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up. Wait. No, hang on. You were just talking werewolves, so I know I probably showed this last time. One of the few movies I bought when I first moved into the apartment here, which is fucking insanely. Uh, oh, 16 months ago. I can't fucking believe that, man. But um, I got the the, oh. the deluxe deluxe collector edition of Werewolf of London, man. I think the werewolf in this is one of the yeah. baddest ass looking werewolves of all time. Horrifying. Yeah, it's and the transformation scene is so fucking good. And um, you know, it's um of course I love these because these um this one is uh arrow uh arrow, which arrow along with uh also uh indicator powerhouse just does amazing shit. I think this is a Two disker? No, is it? No, it's only a single disc. Lots of you know, collectible swag that us nerdy collector scum have to have. You know the shit that the shit that we never do anything with, but we just look at and think, oh look, I have that. <laughs> look at me. But yeah, great fucking collector cards. Um, it's a single disc. I was thinking this was a double disc, but pretty sure this is four. Is this four K? No, it's probably not four K. Two K. Um, then again, just like the, um, the night of, uh, the demon, you got a, a really killer man. Oh, dude. If I was going to frame shit, I would probably frame these in the actual theatrical poster, of course. Uh, but I don't see myself ever doing that. So maybe my kids will, I don't know. Um, I love this movie. I don't know about anybody else on here, but I think it's fucking awesome. Oh, it's one of the best. And it, uh, David Naughton, did he do anything after this? Like, I never really paid attention. Uh, not really much. He, like he did a good big... job with that role. He's but honestly, guy. his friend, uh, the guy that's the, the corpse every time that keeps reappearing to him, like, his shit was fucking hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I think between oh, those, yeah, yeah, those, yeah, yeah, um, do, do you do you have those early howling movies? I mean, that's what scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Man, was What's that, that right? When you talk about werewolf movies and the, the, just the stuff that was scary, like that. Oh yeah, those early howling movies. Oh, I love the first howling, dude. That's um, I mean, Joe Dante, year, the same guy did Gremlins too. Do you guys remember what yeah. year was this? 80, oh, 81. One? Okay, Tom. I think. I yeah, I think you're right. I I'd have to. Let me see. I, I it, David Don was in Hot Dog the movie. Uh, with what's her face? <laughs> what? What was he in? Her her Hot Dog the movie. The the, Fuck the, yeah, the ski dude. movie with boobs. Oh, the skiing movie. Yeah. What's her face in the hot tub naked? It was. There was this resurgence of werewolves, man. Like fucking, and then, and then you then we got Teen Wolf, right? To to, to top off the decade. <laughs> like, but then we got Teen Wolf too, and then. Yeah. To spell T O O. Oh God. Like Wolf, there you go. To. Michael J. Fox. One of the worst movies ever made. I know. Oh man, that was quiet. Met with complete quiet there. I thought that movie sucked. Am I the only one? Ah, I mean, I was a kid when well, I watched well, it. Well, like okay, I... I'll give you I'll give you this. We were on a Michael J. Hyde. 81. Uh, 81. Right. And else, Tom, like, you're a fucking nope. genius. He wasn't even on a sequel, right? It was, who the hell was it? Uh, it was Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman. Jason. Pretty Bateman. sure I saw Werewolf in London as a freshman in high school in the movie theater. Um, okay, so and then I know I mentioned this one last time. But I'm gonna mention it again. Body Snatchers with uh, Boris Karloff oh, yeah. and um, uh, fucking my boy Bela Lagosi. This is a creepy fucking movie, man. 
Karloff is one evil son of a bitch in this movie. It's great. So I know I mentioned it before. It's well worth it if you haven't seen that one. I always got to show off my fucking Suspiria steelbook that came from... Uh... Oh, we put this out a couple years ago. Severin? Synapse? Synapse, I think. And, um, man, this thing is just loaded for bear. Three-disc version with the soundtrack, every everything you could ever want. I always have to show that off because I love that fucking thing. And, you know, the weird thing about uh, Suspiria is that the movie itself is not the greatest overall movie, but it's just got, I don't know, man, it's got this ambience, this fucking, this vibe, this feel, right? And this look, I think the more than the anything, color huh? The color scheme. I mean, the it's color very scheme's incredible. Fluorescent. And just the, the shooting of it, the way the angles are shot, the way the the, the, just the feel of the movie is other. It's like ethereal. It's like you're in a dream world, right? A horrorful, a horror-filled dream world. So that. Yeah, um, Argento said the main inspiration was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I think. Say again, man. I think Argento said the main inspiration for that movie was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, yeah, and you could see it, right? I mean, you could definitely see it. I was watching. Um, fuck, what's it called, man? I never got through it. It was very slow. The one, um, oh god, it's an Argento about the woman that lives in the apartment, and she she goes, she has to dive into the. She loses a trinket down in the basement of this. Oh, Inferno. Inferno. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get the whole way through it. That's that's sort of the sequel. Yeah, it's, it's a slow burn. It's almost too slow. It's kind of weird, but I got about halfway through, and then then my. Uh, my uh, um, uh, Prime ran out, but I just re up for Prime because my dad bought something that he doesn't realize he bought for me. But anyways, uh, moving on. <laughs> you know, that's what happens when you buy $500 worth of porn. You reward other people. Um, so uh, Hills Have Eyes, Steelbook, you know, Phil, Hills Have Eyes, man. Is this yeah. guy, did he just die? No, I think he's still alive. Is he? I, I didn't hear about it. I forget what his I name is. He died. Right? I don't know why I thought he died. Uh, Mike, Michael Berryman, right? Yeah, Michael, Michael Berryman. There it is. All right. My last batch then will be a big batch of sci fi, with the exception of this one, which I know I mentioned this one too, guys. You guys know this one, The Mummy with Christopher Lee? Yep. 59, huh? I believe. Yeah, 59. Man, I think that's one of the best mummy movies. Yes, I love the original Karloff movie. Uh, fantastic, but this one's great. And uh, Michael Skidmore just mentioned uh, Goblin soundtrack. Deep Red, Inferno, and Tenebrae. Yeah, but man, the Suspiria, the actual song to the soundtrack, my favorite, favorite Goblin yeah. stuff. Man. Um, all You're right, Tom, right. you got a few more you want to rip out? Yeah. Uh... Did good tonight, man. You pulled some good shit out, dude. I thought yeah, we were. I, I have, I have so many. Most longer. of my horror movies are DVD and VHS. I have, I have so many, and, and that's fine. Just pull so I'm not, I, I like. In terms of, I'm not really organized right now. I'm trying that's to fine. hold on a second. Um, you want someone else to go? That's no, okay. Okay. Have you, you guys know about this movie? No. This is the um is it Austrian or German? Shit. Um uh, this was always considered like the European if you you guys know Henry Portrait of a serial serial killer. Yeah. yeah. Um this is like considered like the you, I always heard about this movie. It was considered like the European Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Basically, it's this um, schizophrenic that murdered his mother. He he gets let out early from like the whatever the prison prison he was in, and then it's just a day of him going around killing people, killing people, yeah. and and then he 
um, and how it's filmed is really wild. Like it basically puts you in his perspective and it's really disorientating. And the last sort of, cause he, he, he breaks into a house and it keeps a family hostage oh, uh, to try right. to murder them. And it's oh. really fucked up. But if you look at it, it's like um, Henry portrait of a serial killer, except it's like um, over the course of one day, it puts you in the yeah. headspace of the killer kind yeah. of thing. So it's pretty intense. And that's um, Henry portrait of a serial killer, which is very disturbing. That's Michael Rooker. Um, yeah. Isn't that supposed to be basically the story of Otis Tool and Henry Lee Lucas kind of yeah. loosely, it's, right? It's it's very loosely based. Loosely, yeah, very loose. But that, yeah, that that movie is amazing. Like, oh, the, I fucking love it. It's, but it's, it's so twisted. It's it's so some of the some of the scenes are just beyond fucked up. But it's Sick. done. The acting is so good, and it's done yeah. really well. Yeah, Michael Rooker is one of my favorites. That dude was uh, he's just so good, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we could talk about the vanishing. This is the original. Nice. Um. Wait, is that the is one that um? Was the story for um, what's his name? Um, fuck, Kiefer Sutherland was in. Yeah, so that was remake? the American American remake. Yeah. So, so I originally saw the remake on TV as a kid, and it and it scared the shit out of me. Except for the the ending, I was like, "What's going on here?" And then I didn't. Uh, it was kind. Of, it's kind of a weird situation because this is was I think eighty eight maybe. This is a Dutch film. And then the director, he did his movie, and then he went and remade it in Hollywood with Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland. Wow. And the way they changed the ending is completely ridiculous uh, without giving it away. But this has one of the... Basically, it's just a, a guy's on a road trip with his girlfriend, and um, she goes into a gas station to grab, to grab something, and then she just disappears. Yeah. And, you know, five years goes by and he, there's no trace of her. And then the guy comes up to him and says, I know what happened to your girlfriend. Come with me. And that, that sort of goes from there. And it's known as one of the creepiest endings in the history of movies. And allegedly this was Stanley Kubrick's favorite horror movie. Because okay. um, he actually, the girl that plays the girlfriend... He was going to have her co-star in his um, Holocaust movie, The Aryan Papers, that he never ended up making. So mm. she was like going to, just because he liked the movie so much. So if anyone hasn't seen this, it's creepy as shit. Of, it, it, did, did you say that French? Or, I'm sorry. No, it's Dutch. Dutch, okay. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. What? What? Um, When did that one come out? When was that one made? I think 88. Maybe it was 89. When did the Keeper Southern one come come out was that in the early 90s i think 93 late maybe 90s okay maybe because i remember that was a pretty fucking disturbing movie but go ahead rick sorry well Kiefer Sutherland was doing lost boys but in 88 87 something like that <laughs> at the time hey man i still like that movie i like lost boys i think it's a good movie. No, oh so i like less i've yeah. seen that like hundreds of times wore out that vhs tape man <laughs> well as i was yeah, a get, comic book nerd at the time got a couple like, more time about comic well yeah i can so this the sender can't remember this is 82 so this is kind of this is maybe my favorite corner cronenberg ask movie not made by cronenberg oh, nice. so it's basically like this this guy who has uh telepathy um he's able to like manifest these visions in people so it's sort of like it kind of reminds me of scanners in a way, Ooh, but it's it's yeah. done like a psychological uh, horror yeah. movie. It looks like a scanner. It's like the cover yeah, has that, that scanner yeah. vibe. Yeah. So if you can imagine, it's not heads blowing up, but it's sort of like a psychological horror version of scanners in a way. And I think it's really, really good. Is that and a really U.S. movie it. or? A... Yeah, it's U U uh, okay. U.S. I believe. Yeah, I've never heard of that one. I'm gonna look that one up then. Um. I actually like this better than Scanners. And I'm a big Cronenberg fan. Mm -hmm. um, but this is definitely, like the, the to me, the best Cronenberg ripoff ever. Um, you like it better than Videodrome? No. Okay. But Different kind know. of movie, different kind of thing. Yeah. 
Love video drum. Um, What's the other big Cronenberg one? What was that? What was that one he did? The something Slaughterhouse Five, right? No. He. I mean, we talked about the Fly earlier. The, I there, thought he did Slaughterhouse Five. No. Really? Uh, I can't remember who directed the the adaptation. Um, but it, it wasn't him. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm just. Um. Again, I, I don't I don't know the year. I think this is early '80s. So now they're kind of this obscure one. Deadline. Uh, this is a Canadian movie. It's basically a horror. It deals with the idea of a horror author. Uh, like um, how how his writings make the world a worse place, or they 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 like lead to violence, kind of thing. So it deals with that issue. And uh, along with the the breakdown of this horror author, like the uh, you know the mental breakdown, and it, um, I think it's really oh, well I done. And it's not really well known. And, and the, the the last like act of it is so creepy. Yeah, I think I've seen that. What year is that one? I think nineteen eighty, maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen that. That's a good movie. Um, yeah, just so one that not a lot of people know about. It seems like. So yeah, that's, this. A, that's a that's a good one, Tom. All right, Tom, uh, Dennis, we got. Oh shit! I got. Well, we're talking about Henry, right? Henry. Uh, I think this one, maybe a little bit more low budget, but followed more of the story, the actual story, confessions of a, confessions serial, of a killer. serial killer. Yeah. Um, more like accurate on far as like what. Uh, Henry was. It's more accurate to the Henry Henry um, book, I guess, um, that came out kind of at the same time when this movie came out, where he obviously confessed to way more murders than he really did. But um, this one and uh, Otis Tool. Um, this this follows more of the timeline on the book, I guess, on the. Which was a nonfiction book, so yeah, I don't know, man. It's 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 kind of a hard thing to say because serial killers, they kind of like they'll tell you things that they did just to get more just for the notoriety, yep. right? Or yeah. to get more leniency in prison, get more right. things. Uh, so they'll confess to more things, which just kind of is based on, but obviously way more low budget than Henry. Not the best actors, but. This is really, it's kind of a dark movie too, um, but I always felt like this movie was more based on what he confessed to than mm -hmm. in the movie, but a great movie too. Uh, just a killer movie. Um, yeah, because I think they I think they confessed to like fucking like... Yeah. And I've Un seen a number of fucking murders that wouldn't even be physically possible. I was watching... Um, a cold case file episode on Netflix last night. And it was a, a girl that was murdered and left in a field. And uh, just, I, I'll come right back to you, Dennis, but it was a, a woman that was a young girl that was killed in Colorado in 1981. Yep. And they confessed to it. Honest tool. And they had, you know, those guys voices in the, you know, they were using the confessions in the, 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 the thing. And you're just listening to this shit and you're like, man, like what the fuck is wrong with these people like i just you know i mean gr granted we're all in interested in this stuff we all in enjoy it in some weird way i don't think we have to quantify it but and it turns out they weren't anywhere near this and they said they shot her in the head and she was stabbed and all that shit and then of course they found the guy that did it through dna and you know i keep thinking about this there are a motherfucking shit ton of serial killers and murderers out there, even if it was one or two, who are shitting their fucking pants knowing what DNA, particularly familial DNA, can do now. Because you don't necessarily have to have their DNA. You just have somebody that threw something up on Ancestry.com or something, yep. and you're fucked. And that's how they're catching a lot of these people like Golden State Killer and a bunch of these people yeah. in the in the 17 18 19 20 last few 5 years these motherfuckers are like 
they had this guy on. They had him and they're they're talking to him and they're 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 interrogating him. He's like, No, I've never seen her before. And they're like, Well, we have your DNA and we blah 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 blah. And we know that you were here and there, blah blah blah. On the plane ride to Colorado from Florida where he was living, he's like, Yeah, I'll tell you what whatever you want to know. He knew he was done, you know. Right. And it's just fucking amazing that sadly, man. We didn't know about this shit because we're all relatively in the same age, but we didn't know what was going on in the 70s and 80s with these fucking clowns just abducting women and raping them and killing them. And yet it was going on way, way, way more than we ever really would have thought, right? Oh, dude, uh, just yesterday, you may already know about this case. So there was some cop who shot some dude. There was a witness who saw him do it. So he was here, you know, in the interrogation room. And he completely pled the fifth. Like, he's completely just stayed quiet, did not want to answer any questions. So it made the whole interrogation very hard. So uh, they eventually got the dude, because let me use Nick's terminology. He graped some person 20 years prior, and right. they, got through, they got through the DNA. And they were able to nail him uh, through that, because which it was a cold case. Yeah. And, um, you know, his name came up and through this other crime. And that's how this, you know. Don't well, be a lot bad. of these guys... Too, Rick, a lot of these guys, and you guys all know this. I was a cop, you know. A lot of these dudes, well, no, I was just going to say a lot of these these sexual battery crimes where they're raping someone or they're killing, you know, and then killing them. Yeah. Sadly, usually it's rarely a one and done deal. It's rarely ever a one and done deal. And a lot of times they do catch them then when they've been caught again after their second, third, or fourth. And then they're in prison, and then CODIS kicks in. It's like, oh, oh, that's, yeah, that's the guy from 16 years ago. It's like, you know, I don't get, there's two things that I don't get in life, man. I don't get fucking pieces of shit that rape women and do that. And, man, I'm saying that word, and I'm probably going to get, this is probably going to get flagged. But I don't get the sexual battery crimes, and I fucking damn well don't get crimes against children. And... My thing with those guys is generally they do not ever, ever, ever change. And you might as well just zap them. I, I kind of got mixed feelings about the repeat offender thing because that's usually how they get caught. Because you know these guys are going to do it again. It yeah. sucks that they did it again, but at the same time, that's the mechanism that sets the yeah. investigation going. Sorry, we got way off track there, Dennis. Go ahead. <laughs> Where, where's my fucking Crimson Glory, man? <laughs> you mother- <laughs> Let's do some funner movies. All, All right. right. Okay. All right. Uh, Death Metal Zombies. <laughs> no. Yeah, man. This movie rules. Uh, is that like Airheads with wait, a lot of death? Is that still in the shrink? Yeah. <laughs> uh, who, who did this? Todd Cook. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, killer fucking movie with zombies and death metal. I think uh, Relapse did the soundtrack on this one. Hmm. Uh, uh, fucking me. early 90s but great shot on video a lot it's a actually cool movie it's a really good movie um definitely check that one out let's do some let's do some creature shit we yeah. got the nest oh dude that's a good oh, movie yeah, i remember that one <clears throat> yeah man giant oh, giant roaches that's horrible that's a horrible fucking thing. Oh, when, when the dad turns into the, the roach man. Yeah, man. The roach yeah. cat's pretty fucked up, too. That's like the, that's like the precursor to centipede, right? Oh, man. What's so worse, that or the fly? <laughs> this, is, this is a classic 80s. And let's not forget about Slug. Oh, yes. dude, when the dude explodes in the restaurant. Yeah. Fucking amazing. That's a fucking banger of a movie. Ever since Night of the Creeps, man, the, the slugs have just not been my my, my friend, man. I, oh, I yeah. love the Night of the Creeps too. I, yeah. I, I was with my brother over the weekend, oh, and he told shit. he, he told me he shit? he read the Slugs novel. It was actually based on a novel. It is Sean Houston. Violent yeah, shit. and he's he, he's telling me about it because he just read it. Somebody it's wrote like, a novel about slugs. No, <laughs> that was movie? the movie. Was based the on. movie, yeah. Uh, violent, violent shit. shit. <laughs> Uh, to avoid fainting, keep repeating. <laughs> it's not a snuff movie. <laughs> it's not. It's not German, right? I don't just. Just you know what? I'm starting to think it's a snuff movie. Like you don't come out and say that right away. Like it's not a snuff movie. It's like now I think it's a snuff movie. Low budget, 
massive gore. Uh, Andreas Schnage, I think, is is how he pronounces his name. And then you have Violet Shit too. <laughs> Does Quiet Riot make the music for that? I'm just yep. Asking. And then <laughs> Violent Shit Three Infantry. Oh my God. Bangers. Bangers. Shot, on, shot on video classics, man. That's awesome. Wow. Man. All right, let me see. What uh, Nick? You up? All right. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow suit with uh, the more lighthearted and the more cheesy. Uh, Terra Firmer. Nice. We get. I don't know if anyone's brought up Terrible. some trauma, but trauma needs to be brought up because never seen that. Oh, dude, this is this is sort of Inception. It's a horror movie about people directing a horror movie, and there's a ah. fucking killer on it, and it's it's ridiculous. It's I mean, look, look, there's a dude with a bandage head and his butt cheeks out, it, and yeah, of course it's trauma because it's trauma. So there's all sorts of weird gore. There are some interesting cameo appearances on mm-hmm. here. Uh, the Luna Chicks. Entombed does a cover on no here way. of I believe it's a wonderful life. <laughs> or uh yeah, it's it's fucking awesome. There's a little PSA <laughs> with uh Trey Parker and Matt Stone and Lemmy. Isn't there uh, a um isn't one of the um Freddy movies like a, a movie about them making a movie? No, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, new, new, nightmare. new nightmare. It was all right. <clears throat> Wes Craven's A New Nightmare. Yeah, that wasn't very good, was it? Uh, it was it was okay. Like they really tried pretty hard there with the fourth wall sort of break thing. Yeah, I this remember one, getting about I remember getting it, about halfway in and going, eh. I mean, uh, Lloyd Kaufman is in it as the director of the movie too, so of course it's fucking perfect there. But yeah, absolutely silly. The gore is unbelievably cheesy and fake. The humor is weird. They take pot shots at all sorts of different pop culture tropes. And honestly, it's one of my favorite trauma flicks. It's it's just uh, ridiculous. L- L- Lloyd Kaufman, man, he, he looks like a guy who really enjoys his job, man. He's just so he, jolly and just fucking such a cool dude. I mean, he, he, he did a couple of uh, Sengo Sengobog music videos, too. You know, he, he, he's clearly having fun with it. Um, <laughs> this one I haven't watched in a while. Uh, Evil Spawn. Yeah, uh, this is essentially just, you know, blood, breasts, beasts, uh, even has a John Carradine appearance, which that guy had an insane amount of uh, <laughs> appearances in bad movies. Yes, he did. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty much, I think it's like some washed up actress makes a deal to be younger with some sort of experiment, and then she turns into a big bug creature and starts gnawing on all the other hot chicks that are trying to steal her job, and... Uh, it's it's titties and gore and a monster uh, and not a not a great right. monster. You know, it looks way cooler on the cover. I mean, I got it in a dollar bin, God, fucking forever ago, and it's been a while since I watched it. But yeah, it's memorable mostly for the boobs, and probably my favorite non Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson film, uh, film Dead Alive. This this movie's fucking great. Uh, over the top humor, over the top gore. Oh man! What was dude. the other title? It had the other. It had the other title. Oh yeah, what was the other title? Uh, Brain Dead. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, this DVD is kind of hard to find too. I've had this fucking forever. I think I bought it at Media Play. The fucking kung fu scene with the fucking priest. Um, yeah, everything about this is outlandish. The the lawnmower fucking. Uh, Chopathon, the dude's entrails coming to life and attacking people. It, it, there's like weird puppetry in it. Uh, everything about this is just outlandish. And I've seen all three of uh, the God, what did he call it? The Gore trilogy for uh, Peter Jackson because I have bad taste, but it's buried someplace and it's on VHS. And uh, Meet the Feebles, which was his really fucked up Muppets movie. And I want to say he popped up in uh, got the, the the fucking mayhem, the Electric Mayhem show that's on uh, Disney Plus, and they even reference Meet the Feebles and that, which I thought was fucking funny. That's I was like, funny, Dude. Nick. You might know that that band Nighthag. They ripped off one of the the scenes. They used the mother. I saw that right away. I was like, fuck, I know what that's from. Yep. 
Actually, I want to say like the cover on that last Night Hag album looked a lot like the the witch in the bog in um, Pumpkinhead. Like that was the first thing I thought of when I saw that. But yeah, uh, fantastic movie. The mom, ugh, the mom's the the whole part where she shoots fucking pus in the dude's custard. Uh, oh, dude, and he just spoons it up and eats it. It's like, mmm, it's uh, good. Like, bleh. and how the fuck did he not turn into a zombie? I don't, I don't get that. Like, I feel like ask you the Lord. Just, That's for sure. If you ingest zombie pus, Wait, you should was be. It, was it real pus? I mean, <laughs> it was probably custard with a little bit of strawberry syrup in it. Oh boy, uh, I think I skipped <laughs> Rick, didn't I? I don't. Know. I think I skipped you. He's uh, got to follow zombie pus. I'm, I'm, I'm curious what he brings out now. <laughs> I guess I'm just kind of lighthearted. It's kind of a, kind of a comedy. Came out in '43. Blind by. And the ghost and the guest. Anybody ever heard of this? Oh yeah. No. Really old flick. Oh no, uh, I was thinking of um who's in that? Uh James Dunn. Who? James Dunn. <laughs> Florence Rice. Um uh, Sam McDaniel. Robert what Bice. The fuck? What year is that? Forty three. Oh, 43. Okay. Yeah. Really old flick. Uh so I pulled this blind, but I don't know. I guess I said, you know, maybe somebody here might know, but the panel has gotten smaller. So then there was that. Um, so I got some more universal stuff. So this is a recent buy because it's kind of has a little bit of everything. There's actually a box set that has all of them. Uh, but so I picked up, the, picked up the originals here. So all the Frankenstein shit, 31 to 48, uh, which is cool. Um, came in this. So I know they had, um, uh, what do you call it? I think there's like seven of these in total. And then there's the, the Dracula version. 31 to 48. And it's got all the, all the other Dracula movies in there too. Hmm. Including Dracula's Daughter, which I showed earlier. It's in Son of Dracula. So, yeah, there's some, there's some repeats here. But somebody mentioned Frankenstein. I don't know if we showed any Frankenstein anything. But there you go. There's your Frankenstein. There it is. Um, got the Bride, Son of Frankenstein. The Ghost of Frankenstein, which I've... Have no idea. I've never seen. Yeah, it. it's okay. All right. Okay. So right. is that a bride? That doesn't have bride art, right? That's on the separate. It, yeah. Oh no, it's the second one right here. So it's first and then bride's the second. Oh, shit, one. I didn't know that was in that that package. Because I think yeah. I have a separate. It's even got the Al Abbott and Costello. Oh, oh my yeah. god! The Abbott, I do like uh, that movie. The Abbott and Costello one is across all of the movies. Yep. Every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. All right, I got a couple more here. I'll show. Uh, you guys know the Lodger? Yeah. Oops, let me blow this. I mean, up. I've eaten a lot of cheese and I couldn't poop before, so is that? That's not exactly what this is about. The Hitchcock <laughs> one. There's a there's a couple of them because there's the Hitchcock. Well, one. the very first one uh, I believe is the Lodger, the the silent movie, right, Tom? Yeah. That was the French one. Is it French or English? UK? No, that's the yeah the Hitchcock. Yeah, uh, I have that one. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's UK. I have one. that one. I didn't pull that one. I like that one, but I really like this one. Have you seen this one, Tom? Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. It's darker. It's forty-four. It's uh, the remake of the Hitchcock Silent. It's um, uh, the dude Laird Crager from I Wake Up Screaming. I don't know if you know that one with uh, yeah. Bugs, uh Who's in that? Uh, uh, the noir. No, the, I, I, I have it. Uh, what's it's not Barbara name? Stanwyck, right? It's um, no. Lana, Lana Turner, maybe? No. Maybe. You can look it up. But anyway. Oh, uh, Betty Grable. Betty Grable, that's it, yeah. yeah Which yeah. is another good one. Yeah, uh, yeah, this yeah. one is essentially kind of a retelling of the Hitchcock tale, which is a retelling of uh, an adaptation of the uh, Jack the Ripper thing, so... Uh, it's a this is a really good dark one, man. It's just very atmospheric, very dreary, very the guy that the protagonist, the bad guy, is kind of a you know, he's kind of evil, man. You know, it's it's really good. That's a good one. Uh, I love those 40s movies, man. Nick, we were talking about this the other night, I think, right? Oh, uh, without a face, yeah, that's, oh. that's when I that's when I pulled. As 1960, a, yeah, I fucking love this movie, dude. You like this one, Tom? Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's so good. It's um, 
creepy as fuck, man. It, it's just uh, it's a French movie. Uh, I want to say who did this one here? Do you remember any relation to a Mister Idol? I'm just <laughs> people are going to ask. Uh, that's, that's no, it's not. Go first. It's not, but it's the impetus for that song in a way, I believe. Yeah, um, George Franju or whatever. We did Judas. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that was yeah, Fr- Franju. That's it, right? I mumbled those lyrics so many times. Um, <laughs> Pierre Brasseur and Alida Valley. It's um, you know, this guy. He's got a. a a young daughter whose was, face was mangled, in, I believe, in a car accident, right? Mm-hmm. And so he keeps her sort of locked away in his French countryside mansion. And then he and his assistant go on the hunt for a women, young women, to bring them back and, and to graft faces onto her damaged face. She wears like a, a mask, you know, like a sort of a sort of a crimson glorious glory like mask, actually. And um, yeah, actually, here's a um, pic of it. But it was, man, I'm telling you, this fucking movie is just creepy as fuck, man. It's just when the dot when the dogs attack him and rip him apart. I I shouldn't give too much detail, but anyone that wants to watch a great uh, French impressionist sort of kind of that's the uh, the mask she wears. It's creepy, man. It's creepy as fuck. Great film. Um, yeah, one of my favorites, and it, and it was if you, re- it's mentioned. In, I forget which which I think one of the books I have here, Immoral Tales, but it was like kind of scandalous in France at the time because there's like a gore scene in it when she gets her yes. face ripped, that get the the face is getting ripped off, like in. It's the woman, right? I think his assistant, right? Yeah, well, there's a couple of them where, where uh, or she's getting it. Oh yeah, when he's thrown on or cut off. Yeah, they're cutting. They, they well, now the funny thing about that is, I believe they use, I believe they use chocolate syrup to like make the outline of where he was going to cut the face to make it look like blood because it's black and white. Yeah, but it's creepy because of the way they start to. I mean, it's just, and then it reminds me a lot too of that, um, of that. Uh, uh, Twilight Zone, where the the woman goes under anesthetic and she wakes up and she's got the oh, pig eye face. of the beholder. Yeah, eye of the beholder. Yep. Yeah. yeah, which I think was kind of an impetus for Metallica's one sort of kind of like in terms of the way they did that. Anyways, but uh, yeah, that's killer. And then um, I'll throw a bunch of uh, oh, did I do this one? I'll do one more round here. Frankenstein must be destroyed. Peter Cushing, I love Peter Cushing. Uh, this is Cushing and uh, uh, Christopher Lee, I believe, right? Yes. Right? No? Am I wrong? I mean, they did a lot together. No, it's not. It's um, Freddie Jones, Simon Ward. And um, this is uh, Cushing playing Baron von Frankenstein. Uh, the ch- the kid, right? I think he's like the son of Baron von Frankenstein, like second iteration. I think it's been a while since I've watched it, but the monster in this is really good. It's just a great. Um, and this is probably Hammer, right? Isn't it, or is it Warner Brothers? That's ah, Hammer, yeah. Yeah, um, it might be both. But what's that? It's a Hammer production. It might have been distributed by Warner Brothers in the U.S. Yeah, and you know what? Like a co-production. I'll do- I'll do a, a few more here and then we'll, I'm going to jump into a little bit of sci-fi. One of the fucking classics, man. I don't think we've touched on Dennis. Have we done much sci-fi? I don't think we did in the last yeah, week. Did we? Aliens. We talked about alien and aliens. Oh, yeah. it made you a great movie, man. Kevin McCarthy, one of my faves. Dude lived to be like 104,000 years old, but um, wow. no joke. I think he lived to be 100. He's fucking awesome in this. I love the remake with Donald Sutherland. It's my favorite of the two, but this is really, really well done for 1940, 1956. It's just, it's creepy and, and it's really cool at the same time. The way they, you know, when they're looking outside and they've got the big pods and they're loading them on the truck and, you know, everybody's overtaken by the town. Love that flick. Um, another one of my absolute faves, man. Quatermass in the Pit. Fucking love this movie. Andrew Keir. What a fucking actor, man. I just love that guy. Um, everybody familiar with this one? It, nope. is, that, is that the 
that's the one where they there's something in the earth. It's like from they find the ship. They find the ship down in the uh, subway system, and they're and the, trying to dig it out, and they can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. good, man. So good. Um, that is a really well done sci-fi flick. Of course, we, none of us mentioned the thing tonight because we've talked about it eight thousand times. Other than we talked about the creature, but the original, uh, the 1950, what was it? One, and uh, at, with James Arness from Gunsmoke as the monster. Um, and it also has what's his name, the dude, the, the doctor in this thing. Oh, shit. oh, fuck! I used to know. It's not Kenneth Toby, is it? No, I don't think it is. Here, I'll look it up. I can't remember his name because he was in. Um, isn't he the same guy as in? Um, uh, Fuck, what's it called? Damn it. The the planet. Which, the doctor. The doctor? Uh Robert Corthwaite? Cornthwaite? Uh it's not the same guy then. Never mind. I'm, I was thinking he was the same guy in um Oh motherfucker. Forbidden Planet. But I don't think it is now that I think of it. it might I might be confusing. Um I did not pull that. Um here's a classic from the seventies, Westworld, Yul Brenner. About aliens oh. taking over. Fucking love that movie. And we'll do the actual first Quater Mass, the Quater Mass experiment. There's three in the Quater Mass trilogy, I believe. They don't really have any symmetry, though. They're kind of, they just use Quater Mass, and they don't really, have, the, the movies have nothing to do with one another. This is a good one, though, man. I mean, it's, I think this is, what, was, what year was this? 55. So good stuff there. I got one more round then. Uh, everybody else got one more round in them quick? Uh, I can go grab some real quick. All right. All right, give me a bit. Tom, you got a few? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to mention, have you ever seen the, the Hammer version of The Blob called X the Unknown from the um, late, late 50s, I think? Boy, that X the Unknown sure sounds... Steve McQueen wasn't in that one, huh? No. <laughs> I... I, I think it's way better than the Steve McQueen. It's actually kind of creepy. The Steve McQueen version's right. not that great. It's okay. It's you know. It was the it was the three D gimmick that I think that drew people in the theaters, right? I think that was the whole the, thing about the, the remake movie. in eighty eight. Way way better. Way way. Yeah, better. but the the hammer. It's kind of the hammer version of it. Was I know what you're talking about? I don't X, think I've X honestly the unknown. Seen it. Yeah. That that's actually surprisingly really good. It's not campy. It's actually really creepy. You're right. Yeah. Um, I gotta check that one out. That's one I gotta grab. Yeah. And then my favorite Hammer Frankenstein movie is Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. I think it is, where the Don't Frankenstein is locked in the basement and it's done like sort of like a play, and he the the mon or the monster eats broken glass. Yeah, he looks yeah, really weird in that one. He doesn't have, have the flat. He doesn't have the flat head, right? Like the like yeah. Like, he he looks he looks totally it's totally different. But I like the, how they do the character because to me, it's closer to the book in in that movie than than the uh, other Hammer ones. Yeah, Mary um, she Mary Shelley didn't describe it like the way Universal portrayed it. Closer right? in terms of the character, not in terms of what it looks like, or just in terms of uh, their relationship. But anyways, I guess um, Black Rose. I have a couple of VHS tapes I brought. Black Roses, That's where the, the guitar pops up. Nice. I'm sure this has been discussed before. This is like... I don't think it has. Or or I've seen it on some stream. But it's well, like I don't the, think we talked about it. The, the anti-heavy metal movie where... Uh, and um, Lizzie Borden does the soundtrack. And um, what's it called again, Tom? Uh, Black Roses. I've not seen that, man. I've never even heard of it. And then, like, the, the this is cool because of the guitar, like, pops out of the oh, yeah, and ball. Case. That's pretty cool. Uh, Only problem with that is if you got to put on a shelf tight with other VHS tapes, it's gonna kind of mess it <laughs> yeah. up, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's just really silly because it's kind of like an anti heavy metal, like, they there's just a band comes to town and plays the high local high school, and they're just like an AOR band. And then, oh. and then, as they get heavier, they look turn more into monster guys. Okay. And what um, year is this? 
um, maybe 86 or something. Nice. That's around the time like Trick or Treat came out. It's kind of it's yeah. not the same, but it you know, but you know what I mean. It's it's kind of got that. But it's just it's just really funny because it's like, uh, um, it's like they started. It's it's like they're saying like AOR. It sounds fine like Journey, but it's a gateway drug to to, to heavy music. You know, <laughs> too so, much and, and that's, that's the message message too, of the movie. Too basically. much too much triumph and <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, Rocktober Blood, classic. Uh, Dennis has that mask behind him. Uh, and I really I really love the soundtrack. I just have a rip of it. I don't have that physically have the soundtrack. Uh, but this is basically a, sla a heavy metal slasher movie. Um, and there's like uh, Alice Cooper type stage antics, which is always cool. And then I'll show another fun one. I, I love this cover. This is the Italian Giallo 1975 Eyeball, a.k.a. Secret Killer, uh, directed by Umberto Lenzi. It's about just a bunch of uh, tourists in Italy getting their eyes gouged out by a killer. And I always love, love this cover. And this is limited out of 666 copies. So <laughs> Awesome. There you go. Nice. Good stuff. All right. Wow. Where are we at? Dennis. What's up? Yeah. I'll keep it rolling. We'll keep go it rolling. Another heavy metal banger. Hack a lantern. Hack a lantern. <laughs> uh, God. Yeah. As grandpa gives him a medallion on a <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this Boy, dude like, gets super possessed and starts killing people. Um, listen to DC LaCroix. Is that DC LaCroix? Uh, yeah, but there's a metal video in the middle of this that's badass. That's for sure, man. Um, there was another name for this movie. I think it was Halloween Night, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, man. Killer, like heavy metal, satanic panic movie going along with the other movies. Yeah, I was going uh, to say when Tom pulled that one, that first one. Yep. There was a lot of that satanic panic shit going on from 85 to 88, right? And then we'll go with hard rock yeah. zombies. Hard rock zombies. This is a weird, weird click, man. There's all sorts of weird shit going on. <laughs> um, is that American? Where's yeah. That oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's a weird movie. I think there's some weird like Nazi stuff going on here, too. I don't know, man. I can't remember this movie, but I remember watching it going, this shit's weird as fuck. Um, and, uh, yeah. That's yeah the a picture cool in the back looked like someone they're, had a Hitler they're basically playing. They're basically pl yeah. playing more AOR in that movie. Yeah. And I have I have the album of that band that's in Hackle Lantern, DC LaCroix. DC LaCroix. That shit rules. Yeah, and, and I, I have the Hack Hackle Lantern. I have it. I have that on VHS too, but it's called Halloween Night and it just has yeah. a pumpkin on it. It's oh, a different yeah. thing. Yeah, that's, I thought that was the name. And then uh, here's a here's a cool one too. Uh, Stage Fright. Stage Fright. That rings the bell. That's the Owlhead Mask guy. Yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. One of the a, best. One of the best slashers, in my opinion. Yep, uh, it's kind of a giallo, uh, but mm -hmm. my, uh, Michelle Sovai, I think. Um, he was in Gates of Hell, and then he went on to direct this movie. Uh, really good movie. I got really a tribute. Hard. I got a tribute shirt off that. Like, so why, uh, Wise Blood Records like made a tribute to that. So they, they really? kind of made their yeah based yeah. off that movie. It's yeah, cool. really good uh, Giallo type of movie. Obviously, very Argento inspired, but uh, it holds its own. Obviously, man, uh, killer, killer. Uh, I want to say it's a slasher, but it has like the Giallo type of. Alien stuff too kind of reminds me of like a mix between um like uh lumberto baba when he did delirium and um and then argento jargento's films as well but uh really good movie the owl mask is super fucking creepy too so yeah really good good gore too in this movie yeah so Avi was i think he was argento's like second unit director for a while like he worked with underneath argento and you can tell yeah Definitely inspired for sure. Sweet, sweet. 
Yeah, you pulled some deep cuts, dude. Uh, always, man. You went for some fucking <laughs> wild ones, man. How about you, Rick? Got anything more? Oh, uh, I guess I pulled the last of my stuff. As a matter of fact, I pulled something kind of special. Um, how many of you can pull something that you made? <laughs> Wait, you're pulling something big out? What'd you say? Something that <laughs> I made. Uh, <laughs> And the funny thing is, this is my first I'm a time seeing drunk this. Off my two beers, so what? Um, this is my first time seeing it in like twenty years. So I, I pulled it out of the closet. Oh man, now I'm getting real scared. <laughs> and uh, that's why he hasn't seen it in twenty years. He's forty-two years old. Come on, well, man. The, the forensics hasn't caught up with me, so I think I think I'll be I think I'm good. Uh, now, well, this was um. A graduating project for for uh, my it's a, like a last minute art school project to put together uh, uh, that I needed to graduate, and uh, so the thing about art school projects is you're not doing a lot of live real work, so a lot of your shit you do is conceptual and just um, spec work. So I pulled together a poster, wall poster, and I did like a billboard on a kind of a concept. So I did like a fake Wes Craven movie thing. Uh, just to give you a bit of context before I pull it out. So yeah. So here's my fake Wes Craven movie. Uh, some 20 something years ago. What's it called? Surrealities? Surrealities, yeah. Ah. It's pretty yeah. cool looking though. It's, it's In hell everyone You know, I do the Photoshop shit. So yeah. this is my humble beginnings. There you go. In hell, everyone will hear you scream. There you go. October 31st. Yeah, they, they, were, they were rather amused by this. So so this is the wall uh, poster version of this. So, yeah, doing the compositing, all that shit was a gigantic. Now, mind you, 20-something years ago, computers were not as powerful back then. So you're, you're talking about 11 by 17 file. This thing was a few gigabytes uh, in size. So that crashed my so computer hard. You did, that, you did that for art school? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, cool, man. Um, so, yeah, man, I cut my teeth on Photoshop doing shit like this. So, the next one is the uh, the billboard. So, I made a billboard version of it. Oh, yeah. That's pretty That's wicked looking, looking man. Yeah, like, we, we... And it wasn't, like, anything regarding stock photography, nothing. I had to, I had to do all this shit from scratch. So... Well, what is it? Max, what is except, it, though? Except, except the Miramax logo. I didn't do that from scratch. <laughs> what is that thing, though? Is it is it, like, a... Creature or what? Some creature or whatever. It's supposed okay. to seem like a like a car wreck or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, man, good old times. Nice. That, uh, that, that's how I graduated school. <laughs> the that's shit. why you're the king of the thumbnail. Yeah, king of Photoshop, right? Yep, all Photoshop, man. All right. Um, I'll show a couple since Nick has disappeared. Again, keeping with the uh, the uh, sci-fi routine, because I got a lot more horrors that I didn't pull. But um, here's a good one. But I didn't realize the artwork wasn't. Let me see something. Is this? Huh? It's the original, but it doesn't have the cool cover on. The day the earth stood still. 1951, I think. 51, yeah. That's the, uh, you know, one where the spaceship comes down and the big giant, you know, robot-like thing comes out. Fucking, I love this movie. I think it's really cool. Not so much science fiction, but Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. You guys remember that? Yep. Uh, 68? No. 50. 61. And I'm trying to remember who was in this that Erwin Allen, but Walter Pigeon, that's the guy I was trying to remember the name of. Walter Pigeon was in Forbidden Planet. He was the professor or whatever. Uh, Joan Fontaine, Barbara, Barbara Eden. <laughs> Barbara Eden. Fuck. Uh, you guys remember si Bruce Dern, Silent Running? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a good one there. Like that one, kind of uh, reminds me a little bit, somewhat of uh, uh, 2001, sort of in a way. And then, um, this one, which was one of the last ones I got before I moved, I had never seen it, never even heard of, but this is a trippy one. This Island Earth, yeah, 
from 55. Man, this has some killer fucking uh, special effects. As does Forbidden Plant, which I have, but I didn't pull, which you know has uh, Leslie Nielsen in it there. Naked Gun fame. And um, anybody else see this? Yeah. Ah. It's a really good fucking movie, man. I think it's, you know, it's it's kind of eco-aware and sort of like, you know, like what's going to happen to the earth. And that was made in 55. And here we are 50. I don't know. what Where are we at? Almost 60 years later. And some of the things they talk about in here, although they're science, they're more science fiction and alien based um, kind of coming true. But uh, yeah, that's. And the I have. What's that? I was going to say, I have the Mystery Science Theater 3000 movie, which that was the movie that they uh, lambasted. That, what? They said it was shitty? Well, no, they, they just made fun of it. I don't know if they oh. actually said it. was probably one of the better movies that they actually blasted. Yeah, this has got, I mean, some of the the reversible artwork's fucking cool on this, man. The mutant uh, design. Love a, love a, I'd love an actual poster of this. That would be cool. Which actually reminds me of something I'm going to pull out here while Nick goes. Um, hang on, Nick. Give me one second. I'm going to pull one poster out quick that I forgot I even had. That I really need to go up on the wall somewhere. Sometimes those movies are off, though. Like especially the 50s are like in the year 1999, people will be inhabiting the in movie. the year 2000. In the year 2000. We'll have floating cars and our toasters will be sentient. <laughs> well, the AI, maybe it's true soon. Maybe. All right, Nick, what you got, man? All right. Uh, well, someone brought up. This movie in the chat, Primotus, uh, Primotus, Primotus, whatever, oh, yeah. Lord of the Living Dead. It's just a ridiculous zombie gore flick. I mean, <laughs> it looks with the pictures on the back. Like, yeah, it's absolutely over the top, gnarly gore. I forget if this, God, I can't remember what country this was. Um, it's German. been a while. What was it? A German. Yeah, um, it's, it's, the same, it's, a, it's the same guy that uh, uh, Dennis was talking about, uh, the Andreas yeah. Schnauz oh. movies. It's the same guy. Yeah. It's, Vi viol violent shit. Yes. Uh, all of that. <laughs> violent shit is definitely in this one's wheelhouse. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty good gross out flick. Um, well, since we brought up like sci-fi and uh, you know, I had a chance to bring up 20 million miles to Earth, and it came from beneath the sea. I may mm, Ray Harryhausen, no Harryhausen. Yeah, we talked a little oh, bit yeah. about him. Ha I love it came from beneath the sea. Oh, dude, uh, 20 million miles. I like you know, what do they call him? Oh, fuck. I forget what he had a weird name, like uh, it was like something, it might have been Loki or something like that. Was the name of the oh, wait, uh, this guy, the creature in this, yeah, but the whole fight with the elephant and everything, and you know, uh, just. I, I love stop motion. I own all the Sinbad movies too. And these were just fun sci fi flicks, monster flicks, whatever. Like, I know I, I love all things Harry Housen, so I had to bring that one up. Just just to be a nerd about this, the distance between the sun and the earth is 93 million miles. So that's wow. 20 million miles. By well, he was from Venus. So that hmm. might have been right. I think it was a probe that went to Venus where they, they picked up the monster. Okay. If I remember right, I don't know. Like, it's been again. I know that movie, but more, I'm I skip to the monster scenes often because you know sometimes the story in between is just kind of eh. But uh, yeah, they're just fucking fun. Yeah, but, those movies are a lot more slower moving back in the day. That's what definitely thing to note. Uh, before the uh, Christopher Walken prophecy movie came out, does anyone remember this one? Hell yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Gory mutated fucking bears and shit, and uh, uh, Richard Dysart's in here uh, from the thing. Um, oh, Amanda Sante, uh, just really weird gore and about mutating animals because it was the uh, the lumber plant was putting mercury in the water. Yeah, was like yeah, I remember that when I watched that. That I thought it was eh, okay. Oh, did I like it, dude? Yeah, uh, man. Yeah. Like, the whole, like, uh, they think they got away from the grizzly and it literally walks across the fucking lake to come get them. 
Yeah, That's like it, it, it goes completely underwater. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah, it, yeah. it is. Yeah, Michael uh, Skidmore has got it right. It's man, bear, pig. Man, bear, movie. pig. Man, yep. bear, pig. All right. Yeah, I it's it. awesome. I I, I, I love that. that movie, and just because well, Treat Williams died, and this is just Rising, a great yeah. monster movie. Yep. Super underrated. His one liners are fucking priceless in here, but yeah. Really good gory effects too, like the dude that's like partially digested that comes like you know shooting out of one of the tentacles after they shoot it. Um, yeah, gross effects. Uh, it's, you know, CGI. The CGI definitely looks a little bit dated, but the monster itself is really cool, and the action sequences are great. The, stuck on the fucking ship and everything, and all the tentacles can kind of like sniff you out and shit. Awesome movie. I think it ended up being like a box office fucking dud. And, you know, not many people went to see it, but it got a little bit of love in terms of like cult cinema. But uh, yeah, it's it's pure fun. I remember seeing the trailers for this, and I was like, dude, I'm gonna love that. Like, yeah, I, you know, that, I, I that like... explosion in the back is very '90s stock. Oh, very, <laughs> very, dude. I mean, like, yeah, we escaped on a fucking sea do. <laughs> yeah. And I think at the end of the movie, they escape to an island, and all of a sudden, there's like this growling fucking monster stampeding through the forest that you don't see. And I think the last word you hear is Tree Williams going, Ah, oh, now what? So, I mean, it was almost like they landed on Skull Island, and maybe there yeah. was supposed to be a sequel. But yeah, th this, this movie's fucking awesome. I, I love it to death. I almost kind of just want to watch it again right now just because it's, it's fucking great. Yeah, I, you know, self-aware cheese like that when it's you know um, just kind of making fun of itself. Just, just so people know, like man bear, man bear pig the movie. Like, he's fifty percent man, fifty fifty percent bear, fifty percent pig. You know, it, you got to get those numbers down. Wait, and there's really a movie that was made lethal. off of that. <laughs> there was a movie made off of the the um, skid from. Well, it might have. They might have pulled that design slightly from that movie. Like if okay. you look at the if you look at the creatures from Prophecy, the the giant mutated fucking grizzlies and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of close, but I mean, dude, there's some graphic fucking like when the uh, was it the bear like doesn't it kick a kid in a fucking uh, and it was in a, it was a kid in a sleeping bag. It kicks a kid in the, in the sleeping bag, just explodes. <laughs> well, wasn't that kid? But wait a minute, wait, just hang on one sec. Wasn't Man Bear Pig the thing that was in um, tra South. the Trey? Yeah, South Park. Yeah, South Park. Yeah. South Park. Yeah, and it was like Al Gore was hunting for Man Bear Pig. <laughs> Al Gore, the guy that invented the internet, was yeah. searching for Man oh, Bear. Oh, that of the internet. <laughs> I didn't know. Wait, I, 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 I hate to sound stupid. They made a movie. Well, no, no. This this movie oh. came out. God, what was this? Early eighties or late? No, seventy nine. Okay. Oh, okay. And, and they were modeling their thing after that. I, okay. I think possibly. Like you just look uh, at the designs of both, but it's got it's got some good creature effects. Too. Like, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, the, I'm the, like, the grizzlies kind of look all lumpy and cancerous and kind of like a melted candle with fur and teeth. All right. Let's see if I can show this thing effectively here. I got. I don't think get I already know what this rain, is. Man. Yep. Wait, God damn it! Oh, you fucker! What the fuck? What? No, you see it, man? Is that a killer poster or what? That's awesome. I gotta get that frame, man. That's been that I got like literally about a week after we moved in here, and I it's still been sitting in a tube, mainly because framing posters ain't fucking cheap, man. Nope. Yeah, not if you want to get a room. decent, a decent frame. I should come out to Dennis's house and break into his house and steal a few frames. He's probably got like eight thousand of them. <laughs> I'm I'm weird. I actually like the remake too, the one with the uh, Keanu Reeves. I don't think I saw. I never saw that. It's one, no. it's not bad. It really isn't. Like you know, I mean, remake some really fucking dicey on. Like if you're gonna remake it, you better do it with some. Yeah. Uh, special care to the source material. You talking about the day the earth stood still? Yeah, I showed the original fifty one one, and I love that movie, man. Yeah, love it's it. a good movie. Love it. Um, 
Dennis, you have anything you want? Anybody want to wrap up with anything? We can hang and and shut down and restart or something. But I don't want to. It's up to you guys. But I, I I don't know. Tom, are you still awake enough to hang a little bit, or do you want to get rolling? Can't hear you. But hey, you're muted. Okay. Yeah, I can hang a little bit. All right. Probably what I tend to like to do is I tend to. Uh, kill the stream at this point and then just fire up another quick one afterwards because I got three I got, more please. You got three more? Let's do it, yep. man. Let's do it. All right. I want to start with kind of a serious one, but uh, uh <laughs> Death Dream by Bob <laughs> Clark. Uh really what the f I don't what's going on with dudes is he Yeah, what is that? He got he shot did. in the head. Shot in the head. It's oh, uh, okay. This is a Bob yeah, Clark that'd movie. That would probably be my reaction too. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, man. A monkey's paw. He goes to Vietnam, gets killed, and then comes back to life. Uh, is Tom uh, Bob Clark who did Black Christmas and uh, shit Christmas Story and Tom Savini effects on this one? But, oh, uh, all right. okay. Well, then it's got to be something. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I think it's a little bit underrated. Honestly, uh, but I, I like this movie. It has really good atmosphere. I like the, the story on this one. Um, yeah, it's. He doesn't look too thrilled about coming back from the dead. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's got pretty bad art, but this is a really good movie. And it then, looks like he's like, I got shot in the head, and this day is just going to get worse from here. Yeah, right. Yeah. I got a splitting headache. Couple oh. of really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, man. Uh, Chester Turner movie about a a lady that buys a uh, voodoo doll in a like a kind of like a thrift store, an antique store, and it yeah, comes yeah. to life and uh, starts basically having sex with her and stuff like that. Oh but, man. I mean, I gotta yeah, say, I the doll is a little bit on the swole side, like yeah. Haynes, bro. Like, and he looks yeah, like he's dressed yoked. for a job interview. Yoked. <laughs> Black Devil doll <laughs> shooting that creatine out of her eyes, right there. It was like I, I, classic, uh, classic fucking like underground shot on video stuff, and then not to be uh tales from the quad dead zone his next movie that he did that's more of an anthology uh again kind of like a i want to say it's almost like a african-american exploitation both those movies but in the horror vein kind of like tales from the hood this would be the first version of that oh, I love nice that um if you want to say that i think this came out in like I want to say 80 something, but I'm, I don't know the date, honestly. But this is actually a pretty good movie. It's really, really bad, but it, it actually is very entertaining, along with Black Devil Doll. Um, really good underground movies that I don't know, man. People should check out if you like that kind of stuff. I know a lot of people on here want to like get like some recommendations. So I, I recommend those two for sure. Nice. Yeah, the, Dennis, the I got to ask, like, where, because you got so much shit, dude, and I'm sure you've been accumulating for a long time, but do you, um, you go to, like, flea markets and just fucking start digging through the VHS and just snagging shit for 99 cents or whatever, or? I mean, I used to. There's no VHS at the flea markets anymore. But oh, is there anymore? Nah, not really. I mean, they're all picked out. out. Like, the best time to get that stuff was, like, probably, like, 2000. 2005 right, right when they consider a format like, dead that's when you gotta yeah. as launch. soon as the as soon as the video stores were closing you can go to the flea market and yeah. you just they're everywhere yeah you yeah, yeah. The video stores were closing um so you could buy like everything at that time but and even before that but it was more expensive honestly because you go to a video store it's like five to fifteen dollars for a tape but yeah and when VHS went out of business. Like you can, I went to video stores. All, I looked, I looked up. Like in, uh, wasn't even the internet then. You just like look up in the newspaper or wherever, and you can see like video store closing. Like people are like just shutting their doors. Get all the VHS out for like a dollar. Yeah, 
so I'd go there and just buy like, you know, a hundred VHS tapes at a time. Yeah, you're like, well, my VCR still works, you know. But you got to think these stores were still open. They're still selling or renting DVDs. They're just getting rid of VHS. So I can go there over and over again, and like, oh, I, you know what, I got another, I got another paycheck. I'm going back to the video store. Let me get all these other tapes. So that's how I got Man. a lot of my tapes. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. Like, well, here's like, the thing. Um, if you guys want to hang a little bit, I'll fire up a different stream. But I do want to kind of end this so that we don't like, you know, like because it just gets gets convoluted because people think they're talking about horror and we might start talking music or something else. Anybody? Is everybody in or no? Um, <clears throat> I can hang for a little bit. I'm in. Yeah. I'm gonna go grab some food, but I'll be back in like ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll hang for a little bit. All right, I'll um I'll fire a stream up. Tom, you want me to send you a link? Yeah, it's cool. It, uh, we can talk. Not, we not, just, not for too long, but yeah, we can just I'm talk so bullshit late. or whatever. Let, give me uh three minutes to make something up. All right, All everybody right. that was in the chat, uh, Mario Michael Skidmore. That's it. Is that your real name, Michael Skidmore? Um, who else? We got. Uh, no solution. Don't recognize that name. Um, yeah, Scott. Bean Scott. Metal Mike. Up, Who Scott. is it? Who? Scott. From? Scott Wilcox. Oh, okay. He's got a metal channel. Well, people oh, think he's guy. Canadian. Yeah, yeah. He's not Canadian. He, he, he tried to make that clear in a recent video. Yeah, I know he is. I know he is. Uh, <laughs> who else do we have in here? We had Frederick was here for a while. We had Wade. We had Mean Metal Mike. We had, uh, I think, Damage Incorporated. Uh, Ryan was in here for a little bit. Glenn Diesel. Yeah, so we had a lot of lot of uh, people in. I think I don't know. I didn't catch. I think we got up to like twenty six, twenty seven, which all, is always cool. Whether we're gonna do another one of these or not, I cannot say. Um, does anybody have anything they want to announce? Anybody have anything they want to announce? Um, I'm, I'm, Tom, you got I'm anything good. going on coming up, Rick? Nah, just making more videos and doing all my YouTube shit. Nothing specific? Nah. Dennis? Uh, you have yeah. something, right, Dennis? Yeah, I think I have a, like a top 20 to 50 heavy metal songs stream coming on. Yeah, how many top how many? <laughs> it's supposed <laughs> to be a top 20, but some people want to do a top 50. That some other really asshole hard. got involved and said, let's do top 50. Yeah, so uh, next Tuesday. Come check it out on my channel. Uh, it's going to be me, Jeff, and my uh, son, Damien. We're going to do a top. It's going to be a top 20 heavy metal songs, but there might be some honorable mentions. Might like, be 30 honorable mentions in my yeah. case. How are you going to narrow that down, man? That's that's a hard job. It is. but I couldn't do it. I just was like, Dennis, come on, man. This is not fucking fair, dude. That's <laughs> the rules. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm changing the rules. <laughs> yeah, what but, else? Uh, it'll else? be a fun time. Anything else? What? Nope. 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 All right. Uh, Nick, you always are doing something. I mean, well, uh, pretty much just reviews right now. Uh, towards, like, <laughs> the end of this month all the way through September, it seems like we're just going to get a fuck ton of releases. So, yeah, plenty of that. And still, I mean, I made it through Florida, finally. Only took me fucking months. Well, uh, here's the good news. I'll probably be winding down and not doing as much stuff because I just don't think I'm going to be well enough. And that means I won't be asking you to do every other fucking live stream. So lucky you. I mean, you know, I can pretty much jump in uh, ill prepared for most of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, for, for me. Slaughter deep dive. All right, let's do it. For tomorrow. <laughs> what's that, Rick? Then Nick was ready to prepare for the non slaughter deep dive. Oh god. Yeah, the nun slaughter deep dad. That's next. Not three right. years later. Yeah, three years <laughs> later. Uh quick things. Tomorrow at five o'clock. Uh, I have Ed Archer coming on for a solo uh interview. Uh Ed is the rhythm guitarist and founding one of the founding members of one of my favorite bands. Dennis, who is that? Fifth Angel. Fucking right, Fifth Angel. Four banger fucking albums. The new one is great. The third one is great. The first one's a classic. Second one's really good. Um, we're gonna talk guitars, guitar nerdery, 
all kind of cool shit like that. Ed's a super cool guy, stoked. He even sent me some old promo photos that have never surfaced before. We're going to show that. Uh, talking to Kelly and Paul, Kelly Schaefer, Paul Masvidal, going to have a tour wrap-up uh, interview, probably interview Paul for 60 to 90 minutes and have, have Kelly come on for oh, you gotta be on hour. Shrooms? You're going to be on shrooms on that one, right? Sorry? You're going to be on shrooms on that one, right? Absolutely going to be on shrooms. I could be on shrooms for that one, too. I'm just saying. Higher than a kite. I'm going to be like, woo, cosmic, baby. Um, the thing with Dennis Tuesday. Uh, the only other big thing I got planned, I because I put the kibosh on some other deep dives because I just couldn't focus. But I have one big deep dive that is set in stone. That is the 29th of July. Assuming I get there, that is going to be on Thin Lizzy, the entire Thin Lizzy catalog. Right now, as it stands, it's myself, Tom Draper from Spirit of Drift, Craig Beerhorst from the Ruffians, and the Butlers. He's a Bay Area, uh, one of the Bay Area dudes, you know, like everybody knows him. Super cool guy, really knows Thin Lizzy. I'm not sure if I'm going to add anybody else there, but I am going to ask one other Bay Area legend to join us, and I'm not sure. I don't want to say who it is yet until I know for sure. I still would like to touch on De Anathema with a big closing sort of thing, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that'll happen. And then I, if I ever get to talk Hawk, Hawkwind and Jethro Tall, we'll we'll see. David Bowie's another one in there with Eric Berg. So I just don't know, man. Just we'll see. But those are the things that I sort of have earmarked. And um, I'll let everybody know when the Paul Mazaval, Kelly Schaefer things happen. Because that probably is maybe the closing thing I'll plan on doing. Um, all right, everybody. We're going to jump and we're going to start a new uh, stream in like five minutes. We'll probably hang for about an hour somewhere in that range. So if you want to pop on, we'll see you over there. Guys, hang on a minute. All right.